Hey kids, today we're going to learn about the world. The world that's around us is pretty amazing. But how does it work? It must be complicated. The secret is the world can only work when everything works together. A bee drinks from a flower and leaves with its pollen. A squirrel in a tree spreads the seeds that have fallen. Everything works together. The biggest elephant, the littlest fly. The gophers underground, the birds in the sky. And every single cricket, every fish in the sea gives what they can and gets what they need. That is how the world works. That is how the world works. From A to zebra to the worms in the dirt. That's how. Works. Hey everyone, look who stopped by to say hello. It's Socko. Hey! Where you been, Socko? I've been where I always am when you're not wearing me on your hand. In a frightening liminal space between states of being. Not quite dead, not quite alive. It's similar to a constant state of sleep paralysis. Socko, we were just talking about the world and how it works. Boy, that sounds complicated. Do you have anything you'd want to teach us about the world? I wouldn't say anything that you probably haven't already said yourself. I don't know about that, Socko. How about you give it a try? All right. The simple narrative taught in every history class is demonstrably false and pedagogically classist. Don't you know the world is built with blood and genocide and exploitation? The global network of cat but all essentially functions to separate the worker from the means of production and the FBI killed Martin Luther King. Private properties inherently theft and neoliberal Liberal fascists are destroying the left And every politician, every cop on the street Protects the interests of the pedophilic corporate elite That is how the world works That is how the world works Genocide the natives say you got to it first That's how it works That's pretty intense What's going on everybody? Shit. What can I do to help? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening. I don't know. Fantastic Just afternoon. Fantastic pre noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Ever Podcast himself. coming to you live. I'm sorry, Sako. From sunny California, Los Angeles. We're live and alive, folks. We're back. We're back. I'm live. I'm alive. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one. Lens of your own self actualization. This isn't about you. So either get with it or get out of the fucking way. Watch your mouth, buddy. Remember who's on whose hand here. But that's what I've. Have you not been fucking listening? We are. All right. I know. I. I. Like now, please. How do I go back? Oh, I can't go. I can't go back. Please. Please. I'm sorry. Are you going to behave yourself? Yes. Yes. What? Yes. See, look at me. Yes, sir. That's better. That is how the world works. That is how the world works. I hope you learned your lesson. I did and it hurt. That's how it works. It worked. All right, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs, we are live and alive from uh, sunny California, Los Angeles. Finally, holy moly, it's been a tumultuous journey to Las Vegas, and I'm back. I'm finally in my safe space. I'm finally back to doing what I know. The only thing that I want to do, ay ay ay, this was a this was a, a, a major major weekend to be away from everything, and I I uh, I feel. Horrible, I, I, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yo, what's the average age? I just turned 32 on Saturday and figure I'm a senior chatter. Curious. I think it's a little bit older than you would suspect. It's like around your age probably. All right, so 
Folks, uh, it is uh, Monday, October 23rd, uh, 2023, 11.25 a.m., and we are alive, and we're alive at 69 degrees and partly sunny, partly cloudy here in California, Los Angeles, and um, yeah, this is, we're back. We're, we're so back. We're so freaking back. Uh, back then, back like we've never been back before, and there's so much to talk about, so Obviously, I'm going to get uh, right into it, but before I do that, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in my life in between the time period that I press the stop streaming button and press the start streaming button. And let me tell you, a lot has happened. First, let's go down and let's sit down. God damn, that feels comfy. I don't think people understand. I have taken it for granted. You know what I mean? I've taken it for fucking granted that the um, the the situation that I have here and how, how I've perfectly designed it and tailored it to max out on endless amounts of coverage, no matter how brutal, no matter how awful. Oh, okay, we're back. News maxing, yeah. Um so I'll I'll get started on I mean I'm not gonna go uh, too far into like all the stuff that I did over the weekend. You guys saw some of it, you guys saw maybe not all of it. Um going on uh going on Piers Morgan has been very interesting. Obviously, because uh I get stopped way more. Um, than I did even before. Like, I get stopped a lot, obviously, but since the Piers Morgan appearance, it's, like, become even more uh, than before. Uh, you know, a lot of... A lot of people are... You know, a lot of people seemingly are pleasantly surprised by it. Um, even people who I would suspect are, are conservative or have a different position. Uh, one experience that I had on the flight back... So, I'll just get started with this. Yesterday, I was supposed to stream, but I couldn't because I felt like absolute fucking shit. And I feel really, really, really guilty about not being able to stream. Um, we also, of course, had the the uh, the podcast. So that was the other reason as to why I couldn't stream yesterday. Um, and so uh, we shot the podcast, which is available already. I think that uh, you guys will like it. I think that it was a, it was a banger episode, once again, as always. Okay. So that was cool. Um, and uh, immediately afterwards, like I was supposed to go back with Will. We were supposed to drive. But then Will was like talking about potentially staying behind and, and gambling more. And I was like, dude, that's crazy. Should have told me that. Uh, you know, I, I would have gotten a, a ticket. So Will was kind enough to at least have my uh, take my bag and drive that back. And then I could just like rush into, um, I could just rush into the airport, um, and take a Southwest flight. Now I've never taken a Southwest flight before, and it was a very unique experience for those of you who don't know on Southwest. Um, they don't have like, you can pay to get, uh, for, uh access to choose your seat first. They have like a almost communist structure on, on the seating arrangement. It's, it's basically no assigned seats, right? Which seemingly you would expect would be chaotic. Like you would expect that to be chaotic. You'd expect people duking it out. But it was actually quite... I don't know how to describe it. It, was, it, it actually started... Uh, I mean, it was, it was relatively well organized, I think. I, I don't know. I, I was shocked, to say the least. It's surprisingly much chiller than you think. So, um, I'll say, like, EasyJet and Ryanair in the UK? Okay, maybe. So, Southwest, uh, I, I took the, you know, I, I did the, the prio access thing because I was like, I have very long legs. I have to make sure that I at least get, like, an emergency seat or something 
or the first row, which I did not know was actually pretty, uh, uh, which actually had like decent length uh, seats. We get into the fucking, first of all, everything is closed at the Harry Reid Airport. God damn it. Everything is fucking closed. Um, I'm really frustrated. I'm sweating. I ran so much to like make it on time to the fucking airport because like I usually fly JSX, which you have to be there uh, 30 minutes prior and, and then that's it. Like there's no, there's no lines. There's nothing, right? Uh, it's a puddle jumper, but like the, and it's usually on the same price that you would pay for, for like a regular commercial uh, flight as well. But the, the amenities in that situation would be that it's easy. Like there's no lines, right? Um, you fly private, don't lie. Yeah, exactly. Um, all the time. Uh, I'm actually secretly a, a, a private jet flyer, a private jet setter. Ah, JSX, I wish I could fly them. It's not, it's literally the same price as a regular commercial airliner it's not a private jet it is a fucking 60 person jet it's just a puddle jumper it's a smaller it's a smaller commercial aircraft the only difference is that no it's not 250 dollars it's 250 dollars if you buy it last second guess how much my ticket for southwest cost 300 dollars. so suck my dick okay no it's literally 70 dollars if you buy it ahead of time you guys are so fucking stupid Stop arguing with me on this, okay? You do not know what the fuck you're talking about. Anyway. It's a smaller commercial aircraft that Europeans know as puddle jumpers. I've flown on that exact same aircraft uh, in, in Europe. Which is just literally a a commercial, uh, is a commercial airliner. It just depends on. The only difference is it flies out of the private jet terminal. Anyway, um, I'm glad you had like a break from the awful news cycle for a while. It wasn't healthy for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I flew back on Air Force One. So, where was I? Where was I? Um, so I rushed to the fucking airport. And I'm scared because, like, I've heard bad things about Southwest. Like, you know, I, I think I had a Southwest flight one time from Oklahoma, and it just canceled on me. Okay? So I was, like, legitimately... I was, le um, I was legitimately uh, uh, worried that I wasn't going to be able to fucking come back home. So, anyway... Luckily, I got there an hour early, except everything was fucking closed, except for the goddamn slot machines, okay? Except for the fucking the slot machines, everything was closed. I had to go to one of those, like, self-checkout places and get two sandwiches, the only remaining last two sandwiches in the airport because I was starving, and also eggs, like the boiled eggs, and ate that like a fucking animal, okay? Like, literally, I just downed it. And, and I know that there's people that are fans around that are just like looking at me and going, oh, that's a sign. And they're going, oh my God. Oh my God. What's wrong with him? Okay. Oh God. He's disgusting. Anyway, um, who cares? I don't give a shit. I just fucking ate it like a goddamn medieval peasant. Okay. Uh, who's, who is, um, eating the bounties of a harvest after a long winter for the first time. So, yeah, and hard-boiled eggs, too. I don't give a shit. No Bev. I fucking dry... I dry heaved it. So, get on the plane. The guy in front of me takes the first seat, okay? He picks the first seat. I picked the third seat, basically. I was third in line. Um, and I had to sit in between two people, okay? Because there's no other place that, like, I uh, can sit at where, you know, my legs are going to be comfy. But because I sat in the middle seat... I'm too fucking big. So the guy sits, the guy who chose the first seat, the guy who chose the first seat on the plane is just like kind of looking at me, looking at his own situation, looking at our arms um, and, and realizing that like he's made a big mistake or that I like kind of fucked him. You know what I mean? I kind of fucked him up. So he basically got up and, and, you know, threw away his priority uh, uh, seat selection, which is pretty significant for Southwest, to go sit behind somewhere else. 
He literally got up. So I got up and I sat in his seat immediately. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, I just, I can't make myself smaller. I'm so sorry. Uh, and then the dude sitting next to me uh, had a uh, brother, a younger brother who had like a cheaper uh, ticket, cheaper selection ticket. He got to be able to sit in between us. So it worked out well for them. But why am I telling you this story? So I'm very jo uh, uh, cordial, you know, having a conversation with them. People are like passing by going, Hassan, uh, love you, yada, yada. And they're like, what the fuck's this guy's deal? What's he do? So I explained to them, I'm a Twitch streamer, right? And then um, I was privy to their conversation, the two people sitting next to me. And they start, the, one, the, one, the brother starts talking about how to his brother, turns around, not to me. And he's like, yeah, you know, I guess like they do do a lot of different stuff on Twitch because like there was a Twitch streamer that was on Piers Morgan, I think. And he starts talking to him about it unprompted, has no fucking clue that's me. Okay. And I was like, oh yeah. I turned around and it was like, oh yeah, dude, a Twitch streamer that talked to Piers Morgan. That's really interesting. <laughs> and he's like, doesn't realize it for a moment. I'm like, yeah, man, that's me. Like you're, you're talking about me. I'm the, I'm the guy you're talking about. <laughs> and he fucking loses it. Okay. Um, apparently, I mean, they're more conservative. Uh, he was like, listen, like he was like, listen, we're Jewish. Uh, you know, we, uh, we have a difference in opinion, but he still said that I, I did a decent job on Piers Morgan. And and as a matter of fact, like a lot of people have been watching the Piers Morgan clips and literally so many people, like with Bassam Yusuf, for example, um, so many people have been watching that and going like, damn, I didn't know it was like that, basically. it was. It, it's very interesting to see that. It's very interesting to see like, most of the time, because you don't ever hear from the Palestinian perspective, that like Piers Morgan, one of the few outlets that allows that to happen, um, uh, people are watching it. It's different. It's it's unique. People are watching it because they're interested in uh, finding out about it. And of course, the video has a uh, the the video has three point five million views in a matter of like three days, four days. So. It's um interesting, and I think there there's a reason why a lot of normies are watching it. Um, there's also a new host of women who have now begun to thirst over Bassem and his smart comments. Yeah, but it was um it was cool. It was uh it was interesting. Uh, so many fucking people, so many fucking people came up to me. Uh, and and have been uh you know saying like you know you did a good job. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm glad of, uh, I see the work you're doing. It, it's, it's cool to see. It's, it's unlike any other, uh, it's unlike any other moment, uh, in my career, I would say. Um, so to me, it's not the recognition, um, uh, but to me, I think, to me, I think it's important because like, it changes the dynamic. It changes the way that people analyze the situation as well. I think I like that. Uh, I, I feel like it spells a difference in the broader public opinion. People are more informed about it. People are more informed about the dynamic. People are more informed about the, the other side and their existence and I think that's really important. As much as Piers a piece of shit, holy fuck, you let you run your mouth. As well as I said, I calculated. He spoke 60% of the time and he spoke 40% of the time. Yeah. The first half was worse, I think. But yeah. Um, thank you, Tay 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 Tay, for the five get the subs. I have seen an incredible amount of pro-Palestinian rallies all around the world, and it gives me confidence. It makes me feel like things are changing a little bit, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So, um, 
Yeah. Other than that, the one aspect I will say uh, over that weekend was this. When I was driving the Ferrari 488... God damn. Your shoulders were too tight, I think. Did you notice? Yeah, of course. I was clinching, dude. Look at that. Look at my... Sorry about that. You're good. Keep on rolling. It's so funny. Our faces are so funny. We're like... <laughs> But yeah, the car was too small, to be honest. Were you on the elevator that fell uh, with Will? No, I was on the elevator going up with Will, where we noticed. Uh, I was on the elevator going up with Will, where we noticed that it was uh, broken. And then they got back on that elevator going down, and it fell. Are they not manual? They are. This is a manual car. Look, do you see those? Uh, it has the capacity to drive automatic as well. That's crazy. She see she let she let her hands go, but I guess that's necessary because I lost. I'm sorry that I lost control at the end there. If you're not pushing the limits, you're not pushing. So well done. Good was I good? That's it. Oh, that was great. It's an automatic with a with a paddle shifter. Yeah. It's not manual. Yes, it has a it has a paddle shifter. Um and you can you can drive with a you can it's still it's not manual manual in the sense that like you have a stick shift and a crank on, uh, or like a clutch, sorry. English is my second language. There's no clutch. So the trans uh, the the it's semi-automatic uh transmission. It's not manual. Full, it's not full blown manual because there is no. Yeah, it's still it's still auto. It has the capacity to be full auto, or you can use paddle shifters. Uh, it's sequential, which is still manual. These chatters don't know. I think it's still considered. Um, I think it's still considered uh, manual, though, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know what the what the proper term is. I literally call the clutch a crank. Okay, I don't care. Um, it's a semi-manual gearbox with an automatic mode chat is being pretentious for no reason yeah if it can shift on its own it's an automatic okay I don't care I, I, I don't care guys I literally don't care you guys are the same as gun perverts stop being a car pedophile okay I don't give a shit I, you're being so stupid right now. You're being so pedantic. You're being so stupid. I literally do not care. Okay? I don't. I, I just, I will say the wrong things deliberately to piss you off going forward. Okay? Oh my God. I, I just, whenever, whenever we hit the, we hit a certain pocket, Half a chatters in their 20s and can't drive yet. Whenever we hit a certain pocket, like a certain level of interest in a community, they get riled the fuck up. They get riled up like crazy. Pedal file, exactly, exactly. Pedal files. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I will say this: it was a fun experience overall because I felt really alive. I understood why Murat, who drives uh, a motorcycle, for those of you who don't know, my brother, uh, he why he says he loves driving the the bike because he's like you have to pay attention all the time or you'll die, right? And that's what it felt like cranking that fucking ferrari 488 around and it made me feel awesome like it, it was it was sick i had to be like hyper aware of everything that was going on i had to focus and it felt great 
He does not have an electric motorcycle. There's a Triumph and a dual sport. He used to drive a dual sport and now he drives a Triumph. So someone that dailies a stick and works on race cars is actually called a crank and you act and you accurate it. What? Actuate it by serving the top of the hour ab brake? Little known fact. Dude, it's fucking 15 minutes early. You can't do that. I haven't even blasted off yet. <coughs> no, that doesn't count. We're not doing that. I'm I'm I fucking am not considering that that's we're i'm cranking you out of here okay that's insane 15 minutes early we haven't even fucking blasted off you're trying to fucking get me to serve a top of the hour i break it the hell out of here <coughs> <coughs> anyway um let's do it let's uh let's get started let's um let's blast off the news Updates from the ground. Released American hostages speak out. Welcome back home. It's been miserable without your commentary. Hope you at least had an okay time. No, I did not. I did not have an okay time in Vegas because I feel like I wasn't able to give my 100% to the fans that were out there, which fr frustrated me. Okay. Okay. And I feel like I wasn't able to give any percentage uh, to my stream, which made me even more frustrated. So, very fresh. It's, it's just annoying overall. Um, speaker drama and more. And also downloaded spider-man 2 oh um one other thing i'll say is on the flight i watched a uh, spider verse into the multiverse or whatever the fuck it's called okay and oh my god it's a fucking banger dude into the spider verse like the the last one that came out with the trans girl gwen she's trans right or or is that like a headcanon thing? I feel like they kind of uh, they they kind of like uh Anyway, whatever. The flight is long enough to watch a whole movie. No, I watched 30 minutes of it and it was fucking awesome. It was awesome. It's so goddamn good. Holy moly. What let me tell you something. When I was growing up, we didn't have movies like that, dude. What the fuck? It's so goddamn good. And yeah, there's like a lot of, uh, you know, diversity, DEI. It's such a DEI movie in so many different ways. But like, it's so beautifully crafted. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's such a, it's such a perfect, like, comic book turned into, not live action, but, uh, you know, animated uh, movie. DEI movie is a crazy way to put it. I mean, it is. It's like one of the spider, one of the spider women is pregnant. Um, there's kids at like Vision Academy that are uh, playing uh, wheelchair basketball. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of that kind of stuff, which I feel like would be really frustrating to to the fucking annoying little goober nerds that watch but because it's so good overall it's like they can't say shit you know what i mean it's all in the comics no i i know that but comic books are also comic books have always been dei as fuck what are we talking about Comic books have literally always been DEI initiative out the wazoo. What do you mean? Comic books have always been woke. It's the fucking nerds that don't realize that. Anyway. Haas and I discovered Spider-Man circa 2023. I, dude, I grew up with Spider-Man. Fuck you mean? Um, what are you talking about? It's just that like new Spider-Man stuff I do not know about. I haven't like kept up. I haven't read any of the comic books. I think like the last time I was paying super close attention to the comic books was I, I guess like the the Civil War saga, and since then I haven't really 
Um, I haven't really kept up with whatever the fuck's going on in the Spider-Verse at all. But back then, I was like, when those comic books were coming out, I was literally reading it. Like, I was reading it as they came out. Which was literally, like, 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago. So... Um, I don't know enough about it. What's it like to be on stage with the Green Goblin, Jerma? I love him. I love him so much. He's so brilliant. He's so creative. He's so funny. He's so good. He's just great. <clears throat> anyway, um... But yeah, it got me very uh, hyped. It got me very hyped on like playing the Spider-Man game as well. So did you do anything outside fun outside of the con? Um, I gambled. Uh, I lost a bunch of money. I, I ate a really good veal Parmesan. But that's it. That's pretty much it. I, I didn't really do too much other than that. We went to the Clearb. Uh, I went to the Clearb. Uh, the, the, for the Dolce and Gabbana razor, uh, offline TV party. And, uh, you know, I drank a bunch, saw a bunch of nerds get fucking twisted and hammered, which was fun. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Was XC there? I don't know. I, I, I saw XC like three minutes the entire time. Was the veal parm at Carbone? No, but I will say this. I think it was a better veal parm than the one I've had at Carbone. The Sinatra veal parm was out of control. But we explained how he was off the Benjamin. Yeah, he probably was off the gummy. You know what I mean? He was probably off the gummy. Um, so, yeah, do anything embarrassing? Not really. I did see Rob CD, which is great. Um... I did not get faded than a hoe, and I definitely did. I mean, I did get drunk, but not that much. We were able to meet up with Sea Dog a little bit. I worked out with Lud one time. That was cool. Um, I told T1 I want to play ball with him. I told him, like, I want to ball up with him. I want to ball up. Ball my fucking face off. But that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, hung out with Nick a little bit. That was great. Yeah. Lily dropped 10K on drinks at the club. Uh, oh, for Lily's uh, birthday. I like that people are just like asking questions like, is Lolo coming on stream? Is Jank going on Pierce tonight? And then someone goes, have you seen the beheaded Palestinian child? Dude, what the fuck? No, I haven't. And I, no, I don't want What are you doing? Time and place, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, fuck. Okay, well, let's get into it. Did anyone get hostile about with you about supporting Palestine? Fuck no. No, they did not. Um, I miss Kaya a lot. I, I was like literally sitting by myself waiting for a breakfast sandwich at 5 a.m. I was fucking sitting waiting for a breakfast sandwich at 5 a.m. looking at TikToks of Kaya with tears in my eyes. 10k at the club a song please can i have 100 first of all i didn't spend that go ask ludwig and no the answer is no listen i balled the fuck out okay you know where i balled the fuck out fundraisers that's where i balled the fuck out every time there's a fundraiser and i'm attending i'm dropping 30 uh, 30 bills 50 bills you you already know that's where i fucking ball out anyway So, 
The war on liberals are coming after you and everyone on the left. Yeah, I don't care, dude. I'm like, dude, people, people who look at like an ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign and turn around and say, you know who's really at fault here? Crank leftist podcasters. Like, how unserious are you? Like, what a what a betrayal. What a what a classic definition. Uh, of of just like an unserious person who just does not give a shit about anything other than whatever the fuck is in their immediate trajectory. These are like children, okay? You can just like dangle a key in front of them and they'll go, oh my God, that's it. That's my, that's what I'm interested in. It is so frustrating, okay? It's so silly. And it's so frustrating to be like, yeah, wow. Um, while there is an ongoing active ethnic cleansing campaign happening in Gaza, 5,000 dead, 2,000 children have been ruthlessly slaughtered by the IDF. But you know who we should talk about? Chapo Trap House. Or the DSA. I am a real liberal and I hate the DSA. It's like, dude, what are you saying? What the fuck are you saying? This is what I mean. It's like, there are so many people like this. There are so many people like this that basically would be more focused on getting an own on like their, their uh, you know, least favorite Twitter users if there were like, if there was like a nuclear holocaust happening at the eve of, uh, of, of ICBMs being launched from both America and Russia potentially, I could see these dumb motherfuckers literally getting up a couple last tweets being like, I told you guys, I told you guys that the crank political leftists were the real villains all along. And it's very, very stupid. I don't care. I try not to cover any of that stuff. I think it's like really, really silly and really unproductive um, because who cares? Anyway, <sighs> if you want to go crazy, read Obama's blog post. Oh, man. So. Richie Torres is the main boss. He hates the DSA so much. It's too funny. Yeah, I mean, he's so unhinged. I think no normal person looks at that and goes, that's my guy. Okay? One of Chapo's earliest outspoken critics, who is also one of my favorite communist cosplayers, was making all those tweets while living in a $2 million home and married to the former editor of Maxim Magazine. It's almost beyond parody. Damn, bro, why are you calling me out like that? That's me. I'm the one. I'm the one who's uh, Chapo's uh, uh, favorite communist cosplayer critic living in a two million. Oh, mine is a $3 million home. Uh, and also married to the former editor of Maxim Magazine. You know what I'm saying? Hating the DSA is like hating a disabled Chihuahua. <laughs> That's such a funny fucking take, man. Thank you. It's just, it's ridiculous because, like, the DSA, for the most part, is comprised of well-intentioned individuals who want to, like, fix people's uh, uh, taillights and shit. You know what I mean? Who, like, take the time out of their day to organize, to go and, like, fix black people's taillights so that cops won't fucking uh, stop them and harass them and shit. Like, that's what the DSA does. That That's... That's usually what they do. They do, like, food drives and shit like that so that, like, cops don't fucking pull uh, black people over and, and shoot them, okay? It's, it's mostly, in, in most uh, neighborhoods, very white, okay? It's, it's relatively diverse, but certainly, uh, you know, very fucking white. They get in their own way all the time. They're constantly fucking infighting. Um, but, you know, they're well-intentioned people. It's so fucking ridiculous to just, like, act like they are uh, an organized militia or a vanguard but these people are are insane. Like, Richie Torres is just absolutely insane, dude. 
Speaking of people that have lost their fucking minds, Richie Torres is always like this, but he's become even more like this in this past in this past incursion, okay? He is so fucking unhinged. He only tweets about Israel. I'm like, bro, if, if I was living in his district, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what what are you doing? Are you are you out of your fucking mind? Like, dog. You are not the congressperson of Tel Aviv. Like, what what the fuck? You have tweeted more about you've tweeted more about Israel and like murdering Israel's enemies in America than you have about your own fucking district. What are you doing? What are you doing? What is happening here? I, I just don't even understand what is going on. Anyway. Why am I quitting the DSA, an organization that believes that slaughtered Jewish civilians, including children and infants, are military assets who deserve their fate forfeited? Yeah, it, it's just, it's so funny that these guys are trying to do Red Scare shit, and you can't really do Red Scare shit in America right now, because like, Anne? Anne? Jesus Christ. Anyway. You can't do red scare shit in America right now because there's no red to be scared of. You know what I mean? There is no red to be scared of. So what the fuck are you doing? You're like, you're, you're yelling at like someone entirely in the fucking margins. And it's, it's so unimaginably stupid. Well, there was that guy who made fun of Hibs being murdered at the festival. Yeah, I don't even think... Was that guy even affiliated with the DSA? That wasn't even a fucking DSA rally. And also, this is a classic fucking move to be like, look at this entire rally of people that are asking for Palestinian emancipation. Uh, and then here's this one fucking guy at the rally who says some unhinged ass shit. Um, let's not... Let's not fucking focus on, on um, you know, the main point of contention here, and let's try to make it seem like every single person... Oh, what the hell? My ear is ringing like crazy. I'm getting hit by the, the heart attack gun, I think. Anyway. Um... The worst thing is liberals still saying vote Biden because uh, Trump will be worse while Biden is supporting a genocide. They're literally so stupid. Yeah, I mean, there's no... There is no way to, to, uh, to look at the situation and not recognize that there is literally no difference between Joe Biden and Donald Trump in this regard. Joe Biden is following through on the Abraham Accords, which Donald Trump set uh, forth, Okay. He is literally doing that. Him and Trump have identical opinions on, on Israel. It, it's, there's no difference between what Donald Trump would do and what Joe Biden would do on, on behalf of Israel. One, 100,000%. Trump would just basically only say, like, Muslims are dogs. They're dogs that deserve to be fucking ruthlessly uh, cleansed. But ultimately, the Palestinians are being ethnically cleansed. Regardless, Biden is championing it as well. If anything, because Trump would say that, you would probably see more fucking backlash from the goddamn liberals who are also ultimately reactionary and cannot arrive at a position on their own moral compass, but instead as a response to what the right-wingers are saying. It's the identical situation of BLM under Obama, which started under Obama, Black Lives Matter, was a protest movement on the ground that started under Barack Obama, which was deeply unpopular, and, and then it became popular... And, and became a mass movement under Trump because liberals were like, okay, yeah, Trump hates BLM, so we like BLM now. So the reality is that uh, if Donald Trump was the one who was also uh, saying the exact same thing that Biden is saying, you'd probably see more people on the ground, even more than right now, getting mad. You'd probably see the media at least covered a little bit differently. Oh... You want to watch the Piers versus Jank thing live? Uh, potentially, we can we can go to it. But the problem is, 
Um, the video won't be available in my country, so I don't know how I'll be able to see it. So, yeah, there's a lot going on on that front as well, but there's this guy is out of his mind, okay? Richie Torres is, is just fucking out of his mind. I don't have a VPN chat. I don't have a VPN. I do not have a VPN. I, I'm not going to download it. one of those like shitty-ass browser VPNs right now. Oh my God, everyone is collectively saying VPN. How about you use a VPN to avoid the top of the hour ad break, which I did not say, okay, because that's not allowed for me to say, but at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub, okay? I will wait. Uh, I will wait, or, or if there's some other way to stream it, um, by, by someone restreaming it, maybe I can watch it that way, but I'm not going to fucking, uh, I, I'm not going to, to get a VPN right now. <sighs> Here's a three minute ad break now. What is this? Israel's intensifying war on Gaza. Um, I think one of the most one of the most insane parts about like the the historical references to what is going on in Gaza in Palestine and the in the plight of Palestinians is that like there is a a almost universal acknowledgement from actual experts, you know what I mean? Jewish experts, Arab experts, Christian American white experts, like anyone who has read about this issue recognizes what is going on. And for some reason, their perspective, their consensus almost, is not shared in mainstream news. The only time you hear from experts, like Holocaust experts, for example, you know, Israeli scholars, for example, the only time you hear from them is when I cover it here, I show you what they have to say, or Democracy Now!, or Majority Report. It's, it's quite odd that... Um, it's quite odd that, uh, you know, mainstream media just simply completely avoids these people. They, 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 like, they don't exist, okay? You could have apartheid experts who have dealt with the South African apartheid. You could talk to uh, people who have studied the Holocaust and what their current perspective is. You could talk to genocide experts and talk to, uh, you know, what they have to say, hear what they have to say. And it's very odd that they never do that. Instead, we just only hear from uh, former and, and current IDF officials, former and current members of the Knesset who are, uh, or, or uh, you know, PR flax for uh, the, the Israeli government, activist organizations that work specifically at the behest of, like, combating anti-Semitism by conflating it to anti-Zionism. It's very odd. Very, very odd that uh, there is a, a, a wholesale refusal to talk to serious people that have made it their lives fucking work to show exactly what is going on. Has having a shaky status ever affected your political opinions like being ethnically Turkish by using a changeable right to stay as a U.S. citizen? Trump could change it, you know? <laughs> this is funny. This is a funny drill post. <laughs> he said, the Middle East is complicated because it's bad to support smothering orphans in hellfire, but I also really want to graduate Harvard. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Really, really complicated political. YouTube used to autoplay Democracy Now! sometimes, but now every next political is from MSNBC. So, just, you mean Gideon Levy, not Daniel Levy, I think, uh, Levi, is a really good expert who has been on a number of news channels, but not often enough. It, it's just, all I'm saying is, if someone were to, and I don't think it's going to be fucking uh, Media Matters for America, even though I love that operation, there are certainly a lot of uh, Media Matters people that are, are uh, you know, you know they, they don't have... Uh, great takes on the matter in general, but um, I would say that it, I wish, I hope that they can uh, do some some analysis on like 
how many uh, pro-Israel commentators have have spoken and how much time they have spent speaking to them rather than, uh, uh, you know, people in Gaza or uh, people who are Palestinian or, uh, you know, uh, pro-Palestinian activists or, or academics uh, who, who have a unbiased and yet very nuanced opinion on the matter that, of course, goes entirely against the, the perspective that you hear from mainstream media. It is crazy. It is very, very frustrating to see this, okay? Very, very frustrating to see this reality play itself out. Yes, I saw the Argentina election results. Massa came in first after Mile, Mile, however you say it, had led in the polls by a lot, but his lead dropped in the last week or two, going to a runoff, which is still uncertain, but results from yesterday look heartening. Yes. Um, he is too much of a crank, it seems. Like, the, the, the normal voter theory uh, ends up winning even in Argentina, which you would not expect. In places where, like, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, crank thoughts. Like, I mean, think about it this way. Obviously, it's a very different country, but Brazil, crank thoughts won, right? Crank thoughts won uh, with, with Jair Bolsonaro, and, and uh, there was an expectation that, like, crank thoughts would win in Argentina as well. And it seems like, um, you know, regardless of the dire economic circumstances uh, in Argentina in general, um, the, the, he was too much of a fucking crank. What does crank cranked mean in this context? Cranks are, uh, the, the fucking psychotic single issue voters that do not reflect like the broader majority or, or uh, actually hurt coalition building in general when you're trying to win elections. Like in America, um, cranks are, uh, like gold standard cranks, for example, people that say we got to go back to the gold standard. Um, you know, the, the Ron Paul voters. You know, people that have, like, uh, really crazy uh, uh, points of view. No, gun rights cranks are not cranks. Gun right cranks are, 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 are actually broadly represented in uh, the Republican Party. They have a broad majority. Their, their perspective might be insane if you're, like, European. But in America, they are normal. They're normal voters. So, did you know that Javier Millet, sponsored by the Atlas Foundation, which is sponsored by the Koch brothers, these people are discussing characters who are in Argentina just to protect foreign interests and spark culture wars? Yes. Do you want to call when Jenkins on peers? I can screen share the stream through Discord and you can just show that on your stream. Potentially. Um, so, Let's move, uh, let's talk about what's going on. Uh, a second convoy of eight trucks are now crossing the Rafa border. Uh, we're going to be covering that. We're, we're, we're going to get trucks started with that. Loaded with humanitarian aids crossed into Gaza from Egypt as the leaders of Israel and the United States promise a continued flow of desperately needed supplies. 14 aid trucks crossed the Rafah border from Egypt into Gaza on Sunday night, according to the United Nations. The day before, a convoy carrying medicines and food were allowed in for the first time since Israel tightened its blockade of the territory more than two weeks ago. The Rafah crossing is on the Egyptian border and it's the only route into Gaza that does not border pee, with Israel. Back. That means it's currently the only entry point for aid. Now, Israel's warning its military campaign against Hamas could last several months. The IDF says the next stage, a widely anticipated ground offensive, would happen soon. With more, here's our correspondent, Wira Davis, in Jerusalem, and a warning you may find parts of his report distressing. The human toll in Gaza is mounting. These casualties brought to the Al-Aqsa Hospital in central Gaza are outside the zone from which Israel had told civilians to flee. It's not known from where the victims came, but many of the dead and injured are children. Some images too distressing to broadcast show the bodies of at least a dozen children. We have been here since the crack of doom, and the bodies have completely filled the hospital yard. This is in addition to the bodies in refrigerators, which are full. We don't have enough shrouds for the dead, because the numbers are huge. 
Israeli airstrikes in response to the massacres of October the 7th are against what it calls strategic Hamas targets. Wait, presidential candidate Chris Christie. Governor Christie, great to have you back on the programme. Uh, I wonder if you could just start by giving me your reaction to the fact that 100 journalists were taken into a room and played unedited raw footage of these terror attacks on October the 7th because so many people fueled by social media are simply refusing to accept what is chris christie gonna say about this dude look pierce i think it's a testimony as to what i've been talking about for the past few weeks the rise of anti-semitism both here in the united states and around the world is palpable it's been palpable for some time and it's increasing and we need i hate to that they got jank on this like i hate that they got jank on this i'm not gonna lie his uh, it, like Chris Christie's opinion on this matter is so fucking stupid. Okay, like f what the fuck? Fuck Chris Christie. What do you know? Shut up, dumbass. But also, Jank on the other hand also has like incredibly reductive analysis on the situation. He always reduces it to it being a fucking religious war. To which I have spoken to him in private and told him that it is absolutely wrong to say that because in America the religious fundamentalist extremists, what do they do? What do they do when their material conditions are are better? Than, uh, than, than, you know, the material conditions on the ground in a place like fucking uh, Gaza. What do they do? They go to fucking McDonald's, okay? They do weekend excursions. And then the three percenters in our country, the religious fundamentalist extremists, they go to fucking McDonald's. Every now and then, there's stochastic terror that occurs. But overall, it's ridiculous to just like reduce this to uh, some kind of religious war. It is not a religious war at all. Is this proportionate, do you think? Look, Pierce, I think the Israeli Defense Forces and their government should have three priorities here. Priority number one is a, a retaliatory response against um, Hamas that severely degrades, if not eliminates, their capability um, of, of striking against Israel again. Number two should be getting the hostages out, as many of you as, them, as you can, um, both American and Israeli hostages that are being held now by Hamas, Hamas. And then third is to try to have the response be seen as something by the rest of the world as setting the stage for conversations with the rest of the Arab world about how this type of conduct doesn't create a peaceful situation in fact oh in fact causes great, great oh the rest of the arab world why why what about the rest of the arab world bitch what the fuck do you mean he's like it's not enough that we've already said all palestinians are hamas but turns out all of the arab world is hamas man it's is everyone is hamas notice how the terror designation in that regard that conflation is deliberate it's by design and it helps with america's foreign policy in that region have you guys noticed that that is the whole point Everyone, dude, the rest of the Arab countries, they also need to fucking get their shit in order. We might start thinking they're Hamas too. States with, with the British and others uh, to the terror attacks on 9-11 who believe that if we don't learn the lessons from what happened there, 20 years of mayhem pretty much coming out of our response, that if Israel does go in with a full-blown ground invasion, uh, then it could lead to a far more serious situation than even the one we have in front of us now. Well, Pierce, look, Israel has an absolute right to protect both its safety and its territorial integrity. And oh. the only way to protect that safety and territorial integrity is to degrade the capability of Hamas to do what they did on October 7th again. And the Israeli Defense Forces are going to have to make the judgment. Yeah, about to degrade Hamas's capabilities of doing October 7th again requires the elimination of the apartheid. That's it. Not continuing to to squeeze the Palestinians further More and nonetheless. radicalizing them. You're running for president. Uh, Donald Trump is still the front Fucking runner. Fucking so dumb. Uh, many people think extraordinarily. Given Every single person yeah. running for president right now in the United States of America that's like a serious candidate uh, every single person unconditionally on the Republican primaries and Joe Brandon uh, and, and I guess like RFK Jr. as well. Like, these are all people who have the exact same perspective on, on Israel and Palestine and how Israelis are currently, the Israeli government is currently dealing with uh, Palestinians. Every single one. There is a overarching bipartisan consensus on it. Why? Because it's a 
byproduct of American foreign policy because America's foreign policy is the area, especially because it makes a lot of money for the military industrial complex, is an area where there is always bipartisan support. You can always find money in the banana stand for uh, America's weapons. You can always find money in the banana stand for America's incursions in the Middle East uh, and its war on terror and its, in, and its uh, impact on destabilizing entire regions of the fucking planet. There's always bipartisan consensus there, even under Donald Trump. If you remember, Chris Murphy would talk about how, who is a Connecticut senator, he is a Democrat, he would talk about how, like, Donald Trump is weakening our efforts to do coups in Venezuela. That's a fucking Democrat. Where are the peaceful doves? It, it, they would literally criticize Trump and claim that he was an isolationist and how bad that was. As far as China's concerned, his quote-unquote trade war... This is a guy who said he got the greatest trade agreement. Yeah, well, with he's China like meantime, talking shit about Donald so Trump, but he agrees 100%. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, uh, done 25% um, of what they said they would do and committed to in those trade wars. So the idea that when he calls President Xi brilliant and straight out of central casting, that that somehow deterred the Chinese, I think it's, it's so dumb. He also called Hezbollah. By the way, uh, talking about China in this regard as it pertains to Israel Palestine is almost as dumb as thinking that, oh, there's Chinese carriers that were pushed into towards American positions because China is going to come and defend Palestine. Let me tell you something, okay? If you are completely oblivious to the, the, geopolitical, uh, uh, the, the geopolitical conflict and also the history of other nations, not just the United States of America, but other nations and how they view Israel and Palestine, yeah, you're probably going to look at that and go, oh my God, China is going to defend Palestine. You are out of your fucking mind, okay? China has been the number one, the number one two-state pushers out there. You want to know why? Because they, they're they their number one weapons uh, purchasers. It's crazy. It's crazy to think that, like, the number one weapons purchasers, a, a, a the second most important trade partner to Israel after America, is going to turn around and... And fucking go, yeah, we're actually going to defend Gazans. We're going to defend the Palestinians. You are delusional. You are out of your fucking mind if you think that that's going to happen. And you are so unserious. Okay? Same with India. If you think India, which is even more laughable, to consider that India is going to protect Palestinians, you're fucking out of your mind. It's the highest rate of deaths in two decades. Many are saying that a lot of this is down to incentive. He loves he loves pushing this to show how uh, impartial he is. Like, oh, look at me criticizing Bibi. Particularly uh, cite uh, Bezalel Smotrich. I, in any case, uh, they're part of my government, but they're part of my government, and I uh, I decide policy. That but do you could, distance could, yourself from comments like that? Uh, there are more, many comments. When he called for the Palestinian town of Awara to be wiped of course, out. Of course not. Uh, of course I. That's totally unacceptable. We don't believe in collective punishment. I go after the terrorists. I go after those who support the terrorists, but I don't believe in collective punishment. And many people think what we're seeing now, Governor Christie, is uh, collective punishment, that thousands of completely innocent Palestinians are getting killed as Israel tries to go after Hamas, who, of course, embed themselves amongst the civilian population. Like I said earlier, that number's only going to increase exponentially if there's a ground invasion. It's hard to see this as anything other than an attack on Palestinians in general because you can't be selective, can you, in the way that is being currently implemented by Israel? Well, the people who, who say that, Piers, um, I think believe that Hamas should be rewarded for being sneaky. <laughs> Hamas should be rewarded for doing a sneak attack on Israel killing 1,400 civilians and then going back and hiding themselves among civilians and thinking that by using them as human shields, they're going to prevent Israel from taking any retaliation. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. Um, I think Israel has to take the retaliation. And if Hamas decides to embed themselves with civilians, then those civilians' complaint is against the government they elected, not against the state of Israel. Should Benjamin Netanyahu stay as prime minister, notwithstanding there's a war now, the vast majority of Israelis in the polls I've seen think he is responsible for what happened. He always said that protecting Israel and defending Israel was his number one priority. This has been the biggest failure 
of Israeli defence that uh, we've seen in modern times, should he remain in office? Uh, look, that's up to the Israeli parliament um, and, and what they do in terms of a vote of confidence or no confidence in. Yeah, um, the, the irony of, of uh, people talking about Hamas or people talking about Palestinians and, and uh, Israelis, the irony, of course, is that Israel has uh, mandatory conscription, so everyone has to serve. So, you know, like everyone, literally everyone over a certain age has like served at a certain point, except for uh, the, the um, Orthodox Jewish uh, members of Israel that uh, get a religious exception and, and some people that, you know, literally go to jail instead of serving in the military. Uh, on top of that, the IDF has literal like headquarters inside of a goddamn mall. But of course, if, if, uh, uh, if, Hamas had turned around and fucking blew up that that headquarters and it killed a shit ton of civilians as a consequence of that, absolutely zero people would say, wow, well, Israel's using human shields. No, they would say this is completely unacceptable. These mass atrocities are completely unacceptable. They're war crimes. Israel should level fucking Gaza. That's what they would say, okay? Because it's not a, it's, it, it, it's not an issue where you see the humanity of one side. That's it, okay? That's it. That's it. If you don't see the humanity of the Palestinians, it's very easy for you to say, you know, that, that holy fucking straw man, this is not a straw man at all. This is not a straw man at all. And by the way, I'm not saying it would be adequate or apt or reasonable or justifiable or morally permissible to do that, okay? I'm not saying that at all. I'm showing you, however, the double standard. As a matter of fact, this is at the heart of my criticism of what Israel has done in Gaza this time around and time and time again, okay? It is the untold amount of civilians that they murder that they claim are just simply human shields. This is a ridiculous thing to, to uh, keep pushing, a ridiculous line to keep pushing. And it doesn't work in the opposite direction, okay? It doesn't. Why? Because... Israelis are our neighbors. Israelis are uh, people that we know. Israelis are, are uh, uh, closer to us in their existence than the Palestinians are. Palestinians, on the other hand, are Arab, Muslim. They, we have only seen Palestinians as, as enemy combatants, not necessarily just Palestinians, but just Arabs and Muslims in general. We have only been trained and conditioned into seeing as enemy combatants for the past 20 fucking years. So automatically, when you see an Arab child, you think, yeah, that's a terrorist. That's a terror baby. That's a terrorist child that uh, is, is slated to be killed. Uh, of course, that's going to happen because that's what we're used to watching on television, okay? You had to manufacture consent for uh, Iraq. You had to manufacture consent for, uh, for our, our meddling of affairs in Afghanistan and our occupation in Afghanistan and Iraq in general. And the way to do that is through dehumanization. And it works in the direction of Palestinians as well. So most people don't fucking think about Arabs, especially Muslims, and they're killing Christians too, right? Uh, the IDF is killing Christians as well. It doesn't matter. We, we don't see them as like real human beings. We see them as terrorists. So no amount of untold cruelty that we subject them to is going to meet the same standard that we would apply to Israeli civilians and Israeli citizens in general. This is 100%. This is 100% happening in front of your eyes every single day. And anyone that actually, you know, knows Palestinian people or, or uh, knows Arab people, are Arab themselves or have friends that are Arab, have family members that are Arab or Muslim, they recognize it because they're like, well, this is my neighbor. This is my friend. This is a human being. And, and human beings that look like him, that talk like him, that, that have you know, the, the same dreams that, that we all share that want to live a life of dignity and respect are being slaughtered ruthlessly. They're being slaughtered mercilessly and that's completely fucked up. You can't hand wave all of that away by saying Hamas, 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 Hamas. You can try to keep dehumanizing the, the Arab world, but ultimately people recognize that this is completely unacceptable. Anyway, having said that, let's see what uh, fucking Jank has to say on Piers Morgan today. 
Welcome back to Uncensored Live from New York City. Pro-Palestinian protests since the Hamas terror attacks of October the 7th have highlighted a chasm between progressives and the Jewish community. Marches this weekend face criticism and police inquiries for pro-Hamas chants and <laughs> banners. <laughs> oh, you got it. They wrote Robert his last name wrong. Harvard were accused of anti-Semitism for a public letter claiming Israel was entirely responsible. Climate activist Greta Thunberg posted then deleted a picture pledging unequivocal support for Gaza. It's all led some commentators to ask why progressives and the left seem to stand by all minorities, except it appears Jewish people. Oh, God. Oh, that's so fucked up. Oh, God. Oh, this is so bad. Online channel, The Young Turks, a Democratic presidential hopeful. And uh, that's Cenk Ugo. Uh, Cenk, great to have you on the programme. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, I'll be following your tweets with interest uh, this week. You've been getting increasingly uh, angry, I think it'd be fair to say. You said, I'm now enormously frustrated by US and Israeli government's barbaric acts in Gaza. I will not be shy in sharing that opinion on Piers Morgan's show today. Um, why are you so frustrated? Yeah. Well, honestly, I, I didn't expect the framing that you put on this segment, and it's a uh, framing like that that's disgusting. So I don't see what this has anything to do with anti-Semitism. I, I formed Young Turks and TYT with two Jewish friends who are some of my... up. We've known each other and been brothers for over 40 years now. So I think what Hamas did is disgusting. I cry uh, for those Israeli innocent civilians. Uh, but do I see you guys crying for Palestinians? I mean, Chris Christie was just on here treating it like it's no big deal because, what, Palestinian lives don't matter? I think the real bigotry here is saying that Palestinians, we can kill three times as many of them already, and this is the appetizer. Netanyahu and his barbaric government have not even started the entree of murder and death and mayhem they're about to do, and that's somehow okay Damn, killing cooking. three times as many Palestinian civilians let alone the occupation, which is bigotry by definition. We say that everyone in the world can uh, defend themselves, can have their own state, can have sovereignty, except the Palestinians. And the reasoning behind that is the Palestinians are what? Uh, they're what? The idea is that they are savages and that Muslims are too violent and cannot control themselves. So they must be occupied for 56 brutal, disgusting years. So I've had enough of the bigotry against Muslims and Palestinians, and I need you to speak out against that instead of covering every outrageous, atrocious action of the right-wing government of Israel and going, oh, it's anti-Semitism. No, when, and there is global anti-Semitism. There's anti-Semitism here in this country. Two synagogues were shot up, Pittsburgh and in Southern California. We fight against that all the time, but then, Whenever Israel is criticized, you people go, oh, no, it's anti-Semitism. No, there's real anti-Semitism. Well, okay. let, let and me, instead let of me that, respond. instead of attacking that, all you guys mm. ever do is hide behind the veil of anti-Semitism. Do you know why well, Palestinians well, might not like Israelis? Because they've been oppressed jump, for respond. 56 straight years. I, I hear you. I hear you. And let me respond. Uh, a, I'm not you guys. I don't think I fit into... Any need oh God! He's, on this he issue always at all. he always has um, to fucking go back B, to that. I've actually covered this story. I think more fairly than most people. I've had many pro-Palestinian voices. I've given a huge platform for. They've been getting enormous. Every time, dude. Every time, my man's got a sidestep. Every time, and I've done that quite okay, deliberately because I think these voices. I think these voices are important to be heard, including yours. Uh, I certainly wasn't accusing you, by the way, or your organisation of anti-Semitism. I just think I have found it as somebody who's always identified as liberal. Myself, Myself, uh, I found it very disturbing <laughs> to see people who call themselves liberals. Big time lib, dude. Whose instant response, it seemed to me, to one of the worst terror attacks we've ever seen was to immediately side with the place where these attacks have been launched from. Now, I don't tar all Palestinians with the brush of being Hamas at all. Uh, and in fact, the sooner Hamas are out of there, the better for the Palestinian people and the world. Um, but I just think the only human response you can have is, as you did, by the way, to your credit, is it was disgusting what happened on October the 7th. Now, the question then becomes, what is a proportionate response by Israel? Uh, not just the terror attacks of October the 7th, but obviously there is now a huge ongoing escalation in what has been, as you rightly say, a 56-year uh, war, effectively, in varying degrees over that period. And that's where I think I, I, I'm struggling. He just, he's a coward who hides behind disproportionate response to be like, but they should keep doing ethnic cleansing. Mass 
deaths of Palestinian Get in there, Jane. civilians. Rip him. Rip his ass. Rip his, rip his fucking ass. Any peaceful Call him a baboon in a I suit. Think it will have the opposite effect. Yes. So let's say you one at a time. First of all, as you rightly point out, on Young Turks, uh, we covered uh, the atrocious actions of Hamas right from the get-go, and we condemned it as fully as anyone can possibly condemn it. Because not only are they killing those poor, innocent Israelis that didn't do anything, those little babies and the grandmothers, it's disgusting what they did. But on top of that, they've, they're ruining the Palestinian cause. They've burned the moral high ground to cinders. Oh, God, and then I hate this. on top of that, they smear it's just all like... people of Muslim background like myself. And, mm. and, and then it leashes this unleashes this bigotry of anti-Muslim bigotry throughout the world that I'm sick of. So screw Hamas and their barbarism, okay? Now, in terms of a proper reaction, Ugh. yes, you need to get those hostages out. So now let's look at what, it, I'm gonna suggest what to actually do. I'm going to be constructive. Mm. But first, let's look at the unconstructive solution that Israel had. Dropping bombs on residential buildings. 50 ambulance, ambulances have been hit. 10 out of 25 hospitals don't operate anymore. The incubators are about to run out of energy. There's 45 babies that might die today. The p parents I just read on CNN are writing the names of the kids on their calves, on their legs, so that if they are killed in a bombing and they're mutilated, they could find their bodies. Imagine writing the name of your child on their legs so that you could find them in the rubble after Israel or any government drops a bomb on them. And I need the West to understand something. Bombs kill people. And do you know how they kill people? They incinerate them alive. Or their heads explode. So what happened in Israel was a, was a disaster and disgusting. But you have to be equally honest and, it, and equally outraged at the immorality of incinerating babies and grandmothers and aunts and uncles, which is what we're doing right now. America let me cannot ask you, Cenk, keep let me ask sending you. aid for death and destruction. Enough of let the occupation. End it today. End it today. It's monstrous. Okay, I'm going to get Let me ask you this. Solution. Let me. Hey, I, I completely understand your passion and okay. your anger. Okay, but, but you don't agree with them. But you don't agree with them. I, like you, want to see some resolution at the end of this horror that we're witnessing. Come on, man. Don't uh when he condemns Hamas. How do you Hamas? get rid no, of Hamas? No, man. I've condemned Hamas more than he has. Shut the fuck up. That's not what I'm uh at. I'm currently doing it. How do you actually eradicate the, the fucking optics argument for the liberal West is so stupid. ISIS Shut the fuck up. Terror group who've quite deliberately, in my estimation, Oh, Hamas really lost its moral high ground? What do you mean? Such appalling scale. That they knew that this was going to be ethnically Israel cleansed into this kind of the idea so that like you lend any that, credence to Hamas's it. actions being like representative of, of Palestinians is, is ridiculous. The answers to yet, but it seems to me that Israel could, if it's not careful, be being lured into a massive trap here, and I I hope that is not the case. But I'm curious, how do you get rid of Hamas if you don't do it the way Israel is currently See, doing it? All that's why. With, Horrific collateral damage in, in in the in the in the face of thousands of innocent Palestinians being caught up in the bombing. Yeah. So let me give you short-term answer, long-term answer. And a lot of people are not going to like these, but these are realistic ways that you minimize minimize civilian casualties. You do what America did with the Osama bin Laden raid. We didn't go drop a nuke on Pakistan. We didn't go d destroy 6,000 residential buildings. Oh, I don't agree Pakistan. with that. We sent in special forces. That's insane. It's more dangerous to the special forces. Of did he course, just say we should do Afghanistan? We should do trying Afghanistan? The what the Does fuck? It look like Israel's trying to find the hostages. If I have a family member that's a hostage, I'm disgusted what by what Netanyahu's doing now. How do you know they're not in the buildings you're dropping bombs on? How do you know they're not in the tunnels you're dropping bombs on? How do you know they're not in the hospitals you're dropping bombs on? So this, if you want the hostages rescued, every rational human being can agree. This is not the way to do it. This is the way to do death and destruction for the sake of death and destruction. It's collective punishment. It's genocide against Palestinians. And the world has to speak out. So my way oh, is he's not talking about the raid in, it it, it, in Pakistan. Of, okay, got it. Folks dying on uh, on both sides. I understand that. Those are super hard choices. But go find Hamas. Go find the hostages. Okay, he's go right. Go rescue them. He's right. Instead of wantingly, indiscriminately 
killing after killing. And let's be honest, when you drop a bomb and, and, a, and a kid's head explodes and a grandmother is incinerated, that is terrorism. Killing three times as many civilians as Hamas is terrorism. Three times. And it's the same if it is done by our government. Send in as many special forces as you got. We should send, look, send in whatever you got to actually do the job at hand instead of what you're, what Netanyahu is doing, which is to, to kill these people to what? Send a message. And think about how unrealistic that is. And think about why his chance, his method has a 0% chance of working. How are the Palestinians supposed to rise up against Hamas? How would they prove they're against Hamas? Hamas ended all elections. Hamas ended democracy. That's so not how true. how are the Palestinians supposed to cry uncle? He's not right about they're that. They're already crying uncle. They've never been able to hold elections to without Israel and America's uh, no, uh, telling death them, death them to do so. More babies killed. That's what his answer is. And it's this, and the United States of America, I'm running for president here. There's no way in the world I would allow this. Sending $105 billion. That's, and it doesn't even go to Israel, Ukraine, or Taiwan. It goes to the defense contractors that, are get, that bribe these greedy American politicians and then get most of that money. And so the long-term answer is 1967 borders and the biggest walls you've ever seen in your entire life. And no one's allowed to cross to either side. But the Palestinians get their state. It is unconscionable for them not to get their state. And if you're a moral person, you, of course you believe that the Palestinians are not the only people in the world that cannot govern themselves. If you say that, you are being, by definition, bigoted and a racist. We have to have two-state solution immediately, immediately. If 56 years of occupation and brutalizing these people is not enough, is 57 years going to be enough? Is 156 years going to be enough? He's I'm right. asking Israel, not out of hate, out of love. So many of my friends that I grew up with are Jewish. This is not good for them. This is not good for anybody. Please look into your hearts, look and be the moral people that I know you can be. I've been to Passover dinners where you pray for your oppressors. Now, I, it breaks my heart, but I gotta tell you, you I'm gotta pray killed. for those you are oppressing. And to say that you are not oppressing them, Palestinians after brutalizing them for 56 long years, you're kidding yourself. And as a friend and an ally, I'm trying to get you to wake up and snap out of this trance. You cannot keep doing this. It is ruining your moral fiber. Cenk Yuga, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I, I greatly Yo, appreciate it. Yo, we're on I'm that sorry. Uncle Pack, dude. your first appearance on this program under these circumstances, but I hope it won't be your last. I think you're an important voice in this, and I do appreciate you coming on the show. Dude, thank you very dude, much. I'm Uncle Pilled. I'm Uncle Pilled. Well, the next, my this is the most Uncle Pilled. Pilled I've ever been in my life, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm, he did a really, he did a really good job. Uh, no notes. I would say I misunderstood what he was talking about with Afghanistan. He was just talking about the raid in, in, in Pakistan, uh, the, the Osama bin Laden raid. But overall, I think that there are more productive ways to have that conversation. At the end of the day, if you want to starve out Hamas, which is something I say all the time, if you want to starve out Hamas, you have to go back to a time and, and reframe your understanding of, of how to treat Palestinians in a humane way at a time when Hamas was not so popular, at a time when Hamas was actually at 3%, at a time when Hamas wasn't even a militant uh, group that was dedicated to violently resisting against uh, the occupation, and instead was simply just a, uh, still an Islamist fundamentalist group, but a, a fucking charity organization, okay? This has happened over the course of the past 30 fucking years, more than 30 years. Ultimately, uh, ultimately, the way to starve out Hamas and, and uh, rid it of its power uh, is, is to ensure that Palestinians have equal rights and equal representation. That's how you starve Hamas. That's how you destroy their, their uh, stranglehold that they have. The notion that, like, they uh, also, the Palestinians voted for Hamas or whatever is also a silly one because Palestinians have never been able to have a fucking fair and free election. Uh, even the 2006 election was actually done because the American government wanted them to have this election. Uh, even though the, the members of Fatah openly had stated to the Americans, uh, which they were collaborating with at the time, that this was not the right time to do elections. They were not ready for it yet. And, and yet America still pushed for it. And... Then also try to facilitate a coup, which solidified Hamas's power in Gaza entirely. Okay, so 
there is um there's never been a uh, there is there's never been a, a serious conversation about like uh what Palestinians uh, want, what Palestinians could get because there's never really been a democracy. There's never been a real democratic process. You can't have a democracy when you're running an apartheid state. You can't have a democracy when you are under occupation. How can you have a fair and free election when you are not free? That is the question. It's ridiculous. Anyway. The source of Hamas's power is the misery of the Palestinian people at the hands of Israel. Combat that misery and it destroys Hamas's power. Exactly. Exactly. I must say that if you have an open mind, Jank made his point very easy to understand. I will now pick up my jaw. Yeah, no, he did a great job. I think Jank, uh, I'm, I'm so, I'm so incredibly uncle pilled right now. I've never been more uncle pilled than I have in my entire life. What an, what an incredible performance. I'm going to text him right now. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. Um, to be fair, killing one Osama seems more easy than rescuing 200 kidnapped people. Yeah, except it's very obvious that there is no interest in rescuing the 200 people. So much so that Israel, as far as I understand, and I might be wrong on this, but Hamas, by way of uh, 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 Qatar uh, officials, had said that they wanted to release two Israeli hostages uh, due to the humanitarian constraints that they currently have, two of the hostages are, are very badly uh, either ill or, or they were very badly wounded, from what I understand. And Israel said no. They said no. And they still released those hostages to Egypt anyway, today. So the idea, the, the idea that like, uh, you know, Israel is, is taking great consideration over the, the hostages that are uh, in the hands of Hamas is fucking ridiculous. They've openly stated that they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit at all. Here it is. News. Two more hostages have been released from Hamas custody following the Qatari and Egyptian mediation. Sources tell J.M. Hansler, uh, Marquard, P.A., Alex Marquard, and me. The two hostages are Israeli citizens Nurit Cooper, 79, and Yoshev, Yosheved Lifshitz, 85. They say those Israelis, they took are anti-government, so they don't really care about them. Yeah, I don't know why they said that they do not want to fucking have these hostages. Uh, they, that they would not... That they would not actually take this seriously. Breaking, the Wall Street Journal reports that the negotiations for the release of 50 hostages fell apart because Hamas demanded the delivery of fuel into Gaza. That's crazy. Now, for people... Oh, yeah, here is what it was. Here is what the fuck was going on there. I'm going to cover this uh, hostage swap right now, hostage uh, release right now. So what originally happened, as far as I understand, is Hamas says Israel's refusal to accept two captive shows it's not serious about stopping the bloodshed in Gaza. Israel's prime minister's office has confirmed that Israel declined to accept two Israeli hostages from Hamas, stating that they will not address what is considered to be mendacious propaganda by the group. It is so fucking insane to me that that Israel time and time again shows their fucking ass in, in this situation over and over and over again. They're like, nope, doesn't matter. Hamas set, two, uh, set free two more civilian hostages on Monday, but negotiations over the possible release of a group of 50 captives stumbled over the Milton Group's demand that Israel allow fuel deliveries in the Gaza. It is so crazy. Like, how are you getting outflanked by fucking the al Qassam brigades? You are a multi-billion dollar... American state, okay? You are the, the unsinkable aircraft carrier in the Middle East. How the fuck do you get outflanked? Like, how, how arrogant, how, how inhumane, how cruel that you're just like, no, we know that the hostages that you want to release are going to make you look good. We don't want the hostages. That's insane. That's an insane thing to fucking do. It blows my mind. Like, imagine being like, what? Well, nope, they're virtue signaling. We can't do that. The cynic in me thinks they wouldn't be able to control the narrative if these hostages come back and start speaking propaganda for Palestinians, aka supporting a ceasefire, for example. You just know that they how they'd spin it. They're already arresting Israeli citizens for it. Yeah, it, I mean it's it's crazy. 
I'm not saying that these ladies are going to be fucking kind and say that, like, no, Hamas was very humane to us. I don't think that, okay? I don't think that at all. But it's, it's wild. It's wild that, like, your immediate concern isn't just, like, uh, you know, bringing in hostages that Hamas is voluntarily delivering without any conditions. They're saying, listen... These, these ladies, they're going to fucking die. So we have to release them. We want to release them to you. That is a good faith negotiation in that situation. To, to turn around and, and go, nah, man, it's cool. U.S. President Biden said he's talking to Israelis to delay an expected ground invasion to facilitate negotiations for captive releases. Palestinian woman shares her experience at the Rafah border crossing. We already saw that. We're going to cover that in a little bit. Oh... It's like the U.S. declining the handing over of bin Laden. I mean, that, it, that happened before 9-11 and also after 9-11 as well. So, yes, uh, it is exactly like that. It really do be like that a little bit, but not, I mean, but even worse because these are your own citizens. Like, you're supposed to care about your own citizens. That's the whole point, right? What the fuck? Why is there a goddamn government if you don't even give a shit about your own fucking citizens? It's crazy. Anyway. So we'll 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 get into uh, we'll get into this as well. But the fact that the fact that the Israeli government said no to this uh, originally on on conditions that this would be propaganda is psychotic. And there is zero percent chance that if Israeli media covers this, which uh, you know there are a lot of brave reporters in Israel right now doing that coverage in spite of the fear that they have that they might go to jail. I need you to understand something, okay? There are people in Israel right now whom I disagree with on uh, the maintenance of an apartheid state, on, on whom I disagree with on Zionism in general, and they are still recognizing the severity of the crisis at hand. They are still openly putting their fucking freedom on the line to report the news right now while they are supposedly uh, slated to be arrested at gunpoint. That is fucking insane. That is fucking insane. On the other hand, of course, on the Palestinian side, reporters are just dying. They are straight up being murdered. They are straight up being killed by Israeli airstrikes. Yeah, well, this is an old uh, interview. We saw this already. The irony is that the Israeli government doesn't care about their own Israeli citizens. Exactly what excuse uh, what they accuse Hamas with Palestinian civilians. It's all pure projection. It's pure projection. It's pure projection, and the double standard only works if you just uh, have an inherent bias uh, towards the the Palestinian against the Palestinian disposition, the Palestinian position that they are human beings. If you do not see them as human beings, then that double standard kicks in. You do not consider the IDF having a base, uh, having a headquarters in a fucking mall to be human shields. You do not consider the entire country having mandatory conscription to be a part of the human shield narrative. But you literally will turn around and say that people that have nothing to do with the Al Qassam brigades, people that have nothing to do with Hamas in general, being killed, ruthlessly slaughtered by Israel, is actually a perfectly valid reason. They, they're human shields. They're human shields. Yes, Roshdi Saraj uh, was was killed yesterday. Oh. Fuck. Anyway, America has blood on its hands, okay? This is 100% America's fault as well. What do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? America has all of the control in this regard. Do you understand? All of it. So much so that if you ask the defense minister who 
literally said, we are dealing with human animals and that's why we have to fucking shut their water, shut their food and shut their electricity off. He was asked the question yesterday, why are you letting humanitarian aid into Gaza? Shouldn't you be dealing with uh, all of the Palestinians in Gaza? And he turned around and said, and I'm paraphrasing here, America asked us to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. What are we supposed to do? We can't say no to the United States of America, which is true. It's true. Without America's support, this genocide would not be able to continue in the way that it is. We give Israel $4 billion a year. We co-designed the motherfucking Iron Dome. We give them our weapons. Okay? It is psychotic. It's insane. This US, uh, the U.S. weapons used in Gaza, this was manufactured by the company Woodward. The top shareholder in Woodward is Vanguard, which also has a charitable arm that is being used to funnel hundreds of millions to Israel lobby groups and the friends of the IDF. I mean, yeah, this is, this is America's death dealing, okay? They're doing it with our weapons. They're doing it with our weapons, which means... We have all of the fucking power to say, hey, cut that shit out, dial it back, stop the occupation in its entirety. But we won't because it corresponds to our personal interests to have a destabilizing force in a region. This is a national security interest that we have. Okay? It's outrageous. According to reports, U.S. wants them to delay ground. Uh, yeah, except Israel wants to delay the ground invasion anyway. And the more they delay the ground invasion, the more they, they just keep doing bombings. Roshdi Saraj, a Palestinian journalist who worked for Radio France, was killed today in an Israeli bombing of the Tel Al-Hawa neighborhood in Gaza City, the network said. One of his last tweets from five days ago below. A lack of media coverage from Gaza due to the killing of more than 12 journalists, the bombing and the blackout of electricity and the internet. However, we are still trying to withstand and continue coverage so the world can see the Israeli crimes in Gaza. He was the one who informed us first, the one who risked his life for this at a time when no one can enter. His last message was yesterday at 5.25 p.m. saying, thank you, Habibi, sending love and peace from Gaza. There is no world in which this is acceptable. There is no world in which this is anything but ethnic cleansing. It's completely unimaginable, okay? Habibi means my love. Scoop, the Biden administration recently sent a Marine three-star general and several other U.S. military officers to Israel to help advise the Israeli military leadership in its operation in Gaza. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Israel has to be terrified of a ground invasion, in my opinion. The IDF isn't prepared to fight against an actual armed militant group. An actual armed militant group that also knows the lay of the land much better. An actual armed militant group in, a, uh, in an area that's like mostly reduced to rubble, but still has a complex tunnel network underneath it. Uh, booby traps and the like. It would be devastating for the IDF. They've tried it before and they failed both in Lebanon and also in Gaza as well. So they know what the, what the consequences of a fucking ground uh, invasion would look like into Gaza, which is precisely the reason why they do not want to do it, which is why they're trying to postpone it as best as possible and just continuing to fucking uh, engage in a war of attrition or rather in this circumstance, because it's not two equal state actors, an ethnic cleansing campaign cutting off their food, only allowing a, 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 a incredibly limited amount of water to, uh, to be let into the Gaza Strip, cutting off the fuel in its entirety, not allowing fuel to come back into the Gaza Strip. The fuel that they claim is you know, going to be used by Hamas, except the fuel is necessary for the generators. The fuel is necessary for the fucking generators to work so that the hospitals can remain intact. But of course, they don't give a shit about hospitals. They clearly don't give a shit about hospitals. They've evacuated. They told every hospital to fucking evacuate in the Gaza Strip. That is fucking insane.
German media is also 100% pro Israel is disgusting. So they try to sue everyone who's even remotely pro Palestine and every free Palestine demo is just called anti-Semitism. It's making me so mad. Thanks for being a human voice in this. Yes. Germany is fucking crazy. Okay. They are out of their goddamn minds in Germany. The German government is, is, is like, is up there with, with the English government. They are so unimaginably cruel with their championing of ethnic cleansing. Okay, which is not that shocking to me. There is a 1937 quote from Winston Churchill that is incredibly prescient for this very moment. If you were to hear what he had to say in 1937 about Palestinians and about, uh, I believe, Native Americans in the United States of America, you would think, oh, Hitler said that. Except, no, it wasn't Hitler who said that. It was Winston fucking Churchill who said that. Okay, so both of these countries have been led by people and, and still maintain that same historic perspective on, on you know, someone's got to be ethnically cleansed at, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? You got to do it. No, it wasn't just about India. It was about Native Americans and also Palestinians, and I think Indians as well, but I think he was tying it to Indians. Uh, does anyone have the video? Maybe you can find it. Or he calls them dogs. Oh. So, yeah, something to uh something to consider, okay? Um, I'm seriously considering getting out of Germany because of recent events. Country is seriously broken. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's watch this uh, humanitarian Oops. aid uh, video, and then we'll get the to the Gaza strategic Strip release of like uh, wasteland. Such bombing, say Palestinians, is indiscriminate by its very nature, resulting in thousands of casualties. No one's getting out of Gaza for now, but through the border with Egypt today, more than a dozen aid trucks did get in, carrying basic food and medical supplies after an initial transfer of 20 truckloads yesterday. But the UN says it's nowhere near the 500 trucks daily needed to sustain a population of more than 2 million. 30%, um, according to our sources, Ocha, uh, of the infrastructure is already destroyed. The UN says that many who fled south to escape Israeli bombing are now heading back to homes in northern Gaza towards the shelling. So dire is the humanitarian situation. Some people will die um, if they don't get insulin on a regular basis. There are 50,000 pregnant women in Gaza. Uh, water is absolutely necessary to keep them alive. But the situation is set to worsen. Thousands of Israeli troops, tanks and heavy armour are preparing for a full-scale ground offensive in Gaza once bombing from the air achieves its objective. It's what Israel says it has to do if Hamas is to be crushed. I have no doubt that Israel will need to go in on the ground to be able to effectively hurt and undermine and weaken Hamas but also to be able to project power in this region and show the world and its other adversaries that are watching that we have capabilities. And I think it's a matter of day or days until that happens. But Israel knows a land invasion of Gaza could trigger conflict in the wider region. In the Palestinian West Bank city of Jenin, Israel says it hit a Hamas cell, preparing for an attack. After cross-border skirmishes too in southern Lebanon, a warning from Israel's Prime Minister to Hezbollah militia and their sponsors, Iran, not to get involved. In Hezbollah. If Hezbollah decides to enter the war, they'll be making the biggest mistake of their lives and hit with unimaginable force, said the Prime Minister talking to Israeli soldiers in the north today. One fact that Mr Netanyahu can't control is the fate of more than 200 Israeli and international hostages held by Hamas in Gaza whose families fear an Israeli invasion may put their lives in further danger. Willa Davis, BBC News, Jerusalem. Also funny how Reddit is shitting on you with the homosabe, etc., when many were saying for years that they are your dick riders. What do you mean? 
I don't even know what that means. They're on Reddit. I don't care. Well, as we've been reporting, a dire humanitarian crisis is unfolding in Gaza as Israel's war on Hamas continues. Our correspondent Rushdie Abu Alouf and his family have been displaced four times in Gaza in the last two weeks. Here's his assessment of the situation on the ground from an aid camp in the city of Khan Yunis, which is in the south of the territory. About 2,000 families living in uh, these uh, uh, tents, they are people displaced from the northern uh, uh, Gaza. This is the a camp has been built by the, uh, by the uh, UNRWA. I was speaking to uh, the families here. They said they are struggling to uh, find water. They are struggling to find food. They are struggling to find the bathroom. They said the bathroom here is, is a real, a real uh, challenge. They said security also is a real challenge because as you know, Hamas has been under really heavy attack by Israel for the last two weeks or so. So there is no police around the area to maintain law and order. Few problems here, social problems in the, in, in the area. But those people, they said, we, they, we, have, we have been given very little food, very little water, very little uh, 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 medicine to the people who are uh, in need uh, for this. This is an example of how 7,100 people who are displaced from the north are living in a very difficult condition in Gaza City. Rushdie Abu Alouf reporting there. Now, world leaders are stepping up their diplomatic efforts to ease the conflict. On Sunday, President Biden spoke to Pope Francis about the aid efforts working towards peace and the need to prevent a regional escalation of the conflict. Mr Biden also held two phone calls with Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday. The White House says the two leaders agreed there would be a continuous flow of assistance. Who would you say has contributed the most to this war? America. That's not even a question. England started it. America carried it on. It's not a war. It's it's a, a long and convoluted process of ethnic displacement. Um, but uh, America, for sure. I mean, it's not even a question. $4 billion every year. That's, that's not even... America holds the keys of the castle. America could literally tell Israel tomorrow there's going to be a singular secu secular state and Israel would have to comply. Now, of course, there would be a lot of terrorism, and I don't mean by Palestinians uh, as a consequence of this, uh, but, you know, they, they have all of the power in this regard. They do, which is why uh, if you look at how much propaganda, for example, the IDF engages in, uh, there's a reason. There's a deliberate reason why a lot of it is Western-focused. It's Western-focused specifically so that uh, they can still continue captivating Western audiences to ensure that they are complacent or misinformed about the ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign, not even in this incursion, in this last siege. I mean, like, across the board over the course of the past 75 fucking years, but especially so in the past couple of decades. England is responsible for the original formation, the British Mandate Palestine, and the, the mass immigration, and also the arming and training of the Zionist brigades at the time uh, against the, the uh, Arabs that lived there, right? Uh, and also literally turning a blind eye to the uh, ethnic displacement that was occurring, the ethnic cleansing campaigns that were happening uh, leading up to the Nakba and during the Nakba, okay? But even before the Nakba, there were... British police forces stationed uh, in British Mandate Palestine, and they specifically turned a blind eye to what Irgun and Lihi and, and uh, the, the Haganah, the, the many different uh, militant factions, some of which basically were at that point a standing army, a full-fledged standing army, were doing to the, the relatively powerless uh, Palestinian villagers who were disarmed in, in general. And if you want to know if you want to understand like what the the historically at least what uh, the the uh, Zionist brigades did even before the Nakba when uh, uh, England uh, conceded to the Palestinian and Arab demands that were being made in the revolts uh, from 1920s onward okay uh, if you want to uh, if you want to understand that they blew up a fucking they blew up the British headquarters the, the, the Zionist brigades blew up the British headquarters at King David Hotel and killed 91 people because England was, uh, was, was trying to temper the, the Palestinian revolts 
by refusing to allow uh, uh, Jewish people to immigrate into British Mandate Palestine. They'd like shut it down completely. Anyway. Why don't people say that the media is so fucking biased? I watched your interview with Piers and you said that he is a propaganda. I don't think I should talk about how biased uh, the media is and IOF intentionally killing people by bombing people and ambulances and even journalists. They have nothing to do with Hamas. Exactly. According to Bethany, we should make friends with Nazis. Mandel, the IDF is running out of helmets and so soldiers are asking for donations. Yeah, I saw that. It was in, it's insane. How do these guys sell their whole inventory to the Russian mob? How else could they possibly have these kinds of shortages? I do not understand how in the ever-loving fuck that the IDF is running out of fucking helmets, dude. That's insane to me, okay? Like, I already pay my taxes. Like, what do you want? What more do you want? That's crazy. Personal request. A friend is serving... On the Gaza Strip, their unit is in dire need of new tactical helmets. The donation campaign is tax deductible and all proceeds will go to the specific troop. Every dollar counts. I don't get it. How do you have not have a helmet in the IDF? Those Just those goofy berets tucked under their ep epaulets? I think it's actually them laying the groundwork for the greatest excuse we've ever heard. Battle didn't count. We had no helmets, couldn't identify our own guys, and that's why there were 750 separate fatal friendly fire incidents. Yeah. Yeah, a donation to the IDF being tax deductible is also hilarious because, you know, uh, that's a bit of a double jeopardy in that situation if it wasn't. You know what I mean? It's like our taxes already pay for it, right? Oh. What is this? Things have gotten so bad in the IDF that Rabbi Shmuley has to fundraise to get his son's unit body armor after having to let them use his shoes because they ran out of size 10 boots. No fucking way. What the fuck? We are raising a quick 15K for my son Mendy's unit in the IDF to buy bulletproof vests. What the fuck? Bro, I don't get it. Settlers in the fucking West Bank. I think that it's inspiring that his son is the same age as him, at least. What? The world's oldest Zoomers. <laughs> fucking Felix, dude. Jesus Christ. That is, that is nutty. This is... Uh, God. Is this some kind of scam? I don't know what is happening. Do, are they just like distributing all the rifles and all the fucking tactical gear to the settlers in the West Bank? What the fuck's going on? Ben Givir is literally handing out rifles right now as we speak to random dickheads with no military experience whatsoever, giving them fucking shields and shit. Meanwhile, you got IDF dudes on the line that are like, yeah, I don't have a shield. I don't have a helmet. I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. I don't have boots. What is happening? Where is the money going? What the fuck is going on? Here. You want to know where the fucking... <laughs> This is what this is what they're doing right now in the West Bank with the participation of Ben Gvir, Israeli Minister of Security, beginning the distribution of 300 assault rifles to settlers in the northern West Bank. Now this, by the way, 10,000. 10,000 small arms were purchased by Itamar Ben Gvir specifically to hand to uh, the the uh, the hyper militant messianic Jews, as Elon Pape calls them, uh, that are specifically there to to settle in the area and kill Palestinians, okay? That, it, that is who he's giving the weapons to. These guys also, in many instances, have 
a fucking religious exemption. So they didn't even serve in the fucking IDF. They are literally there to do pogroms. They have done pogroms already, and they're going to keep doing pogroms. Uh, 91 Palestinians have died on the West Bank since the, since the last siege. 91, as far as we know. They even do, did a bombing campaign. Are you pro-Israel or pro-Palestine? I'm pro-human, dog, okay? I'm, pro, uh, I'm pro-human, okay? If that, if that, to you, translates to being pro on the side of the uh, people doing ethnic cleansing right now, I don't know what to fucking tell you, Okay? How is, how is that hard to comprehend? I'm pro... Uh, I am anti-baby murder. Okay? I am anti-baby murder. I am anti-war crimes. I know it's a brave stance to take, but I think murdering babies is fucking unjustifiable and unimaginable in every circumstance. That's so great. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, nice. Dude. Anyone who, who doesn't recognize, like, the, the genuine cruelty and unimaginable awfulness that, like, the Israelis are committing here, the Israeli government is committing here, is, is blind to ethnic cleansing. And I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to convince you otherwise. Like, I, I don't know what I can do to, to, to make you understand the situation. Here, in 1937, Winston Churchill said of the Palestinians, the Native Americans, and the Aboriginal Australians. Here, you want to know? Here's what he said. In 1937, Winston Churchill said of the Palestinians, I quote, I do not agree that the dog in a manger has the final right to the manger, even though he, he may have lain there for a very long time. I do not admit that right. I do not admit, for instance, that a great wrong has been done to the Red Indians of America or the black people of Australia. I do not admit that a wrong has been done to these people by the fact that a stronger race, a higher grade race, a more worldly wise race, to put it that way, has come in and taken their place. <laughs> Adolf Hitler. <laughs> nope, not Adolf Hitler. Motherfucking anti-Adolf Hitler, Winston Churchill. I'm so conflicted by this because, like, I've been watching the RAF dubs, okay? Uh, World War II History in Color. And it's like, he was so, he was so on board with, with battling it, with duking it out with the, with the Germans when Nazi Germany, uh, at least Adolf Hitler specifically was like kind of a fan of the British empire and, and seemingly was just, uh, more interested in, in, you know, having the appeasement continue, um, and, and still escalated conflict, but, uh, in an effort to try to, to engage in conciliation, uh, some, some kind of like conciliatory behavior from the British. And Churchill was the guy who was like, fuck no, we have to fucking fight tooth and nail. So that's also interesting because like, how do you not recognize what's going on here? Like on the one hand, you're like, no dog, we can't do any more appeasement. You fucking keep blowing your load. Every time we do appeasement, you take more space. We're not letting that happen. Okay. But also simultaneously, uh, simultaneously, you're like, I believe in everything that you're saying <laughs> about the the, uh, the the servile nature of the beast uh, that isn't uh, Anglo-Saxon. How is that possible? It doesn't make any fucking sense. He's literally just like saying Hitlerian shit while simultaneously being like, but Hitler, you're going too far.
If South Africa was still in apartheid today, America would send a carrier to protect that apartheid, to the, and the media would support the apartheid. I mean, I wonder what Joe Brandon would say today. It's very odd that he's a, like, Palestinians are dogs. They're inferior. A man who starved 4 million to death in India, facilitated Zionism and Wahhabism in the Middle East, ordered a massacre of anti-Nazi protesters in Greece, conceived black and tans to terrorize Ireland, and sought to keep Kenya's fertile land uh, for white settlers who voted against, uh, who voted the greatest Britain. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's got his own fucking personal uh, genocidal shit that he engaged in, too. More proof that fascism is inevitably self-destructive. Hitler was just destroyed by a different fascist. No, nah, South Africa near the end of apartheid, even neocons considered supporting South Africa to be way too politically costly. Yes, because the one major difference between South Africa and Israel was that Israel saw and learned from the lessons of South Africa and its apartheid uh, falling apart, partially because like, there were many different factors that, that played a role in the end of the South African apartheid, right? Um, there wasn't the same viciousness at the time frame of of like anti-black violence uh on on very obvious flagrant terms uh of of having like a like a two-tier structure it was a familiar story that that uh was an important chapter in the american history in the western world's history so that also created uh a, a way easier uh, message to to fight against and push for a BDS movement against apartheid South Africa. There was, there was, um, you know, Israel saw all of that. Israel was also an apartheid state at the time and was uh, uh, friendly to the apartheid state of South Africa. These were, of course, uh, you know, very important allies in the anti-communist action that America was taking in the Cold War. And once the Cold War ended, then it was seen as like a, like, there were no more justifications, even on the Republican, the, the reactionary side, to be like, yeah, we should still keep maintaining this, like, very obviously, incredibly racist, uh, flagrantly, obviously racist structure. Um, whereas, whereas um, at the end of the day, uh, with Israel, Israel saw the, the difference there. Uh, Israel saw the, the uh, uh, way that uh, the South African apartheid ended and learned from its mistakes, immediately destroyed any kind of BDS movement that could ever happen and have successfully done that, by the way. Uh, there is no push for boycott divestments and sanctions in the state of Israel. It's, it's basically uh, uh, legal to, to stop you from participating in that movement that is a civil uh, movement. Uh, is a civil protest. It is a complete violation of the First Amendment laws in 36 states. They can ask you to legally ask you to to uh, sign a uh, form that says you will never protest uh, against Israel in order to get a job. That is fucking unimaginable, but that was done at the behest of the Israeli lobby, APAC. That's it. That's uh, APAC wrote that legislation and very successfully pushed for it. I feel like the neoliberal consensus in the Cold War was like a McKinsey-style restructuring of fascism globalized for cheap labor by exporting exploitation out of sight. Uh, yes, and yes, I, I think that's a good assessment. So, ultimately, uh, I think that uh, there's a reason why Israel has been able to maintain its apartheid regime, whereas South Africa has not been able to, and part of that is because of the long-standing dehumanization campaign, not done by Israel, mind you, but done by the Western media, on Arabs and and uh, and Iranians and anyone that's in the Middle East that is not uh, that is not Israeli, basically. There are many different components that uh, political forces that play a role in the the propping up of the uh, apartheid regime in Israel. So it's a more complicated. Uh, at least if the situation itself is not complicated, it's an apartheid. It's fucked up. It's gross. It's morally abhorrent. But if you look at like the, the reasons as to why apartheid South Africa failed uh, and had to dissolve, whereas the apartheid regime has continued uh, in Israel, there are, uh, of course, many different forces at play here. So... 
Israel also killed the many different Nelson Mandela's of, of Gaza and of Palestine. So there is that too. What are the chances that the Israeli people revolt and stage a revolution to rid themselves of Western influence? Uh, less than zero. That is literally the least likely thing that will ever happen. That will never, ever, ever in a million years happen. There is a lot of, of uh, there are a lot of people on the ground that are just very excited at the prospect of, of uh, this continued occupation and, and ethnic cleansing, I would even say. Um, there, there's definitely a lot more support for that than there is for the top of the hour ad break, which comes at the top of every hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Okay. Assistance into Gaza. Mr. Biden also thanked Mr. Netanyahu for his assistance in the release of two U.S. hostages on Friday. The leaders of the US, UK, Canada, France, Germany and Italy spoke on Sunday and several European leaders are expected in Israel this week, including French President Emmanuel Macron. Well, let's go live now to our Middle East correspondent, Yolan Nell, who is in Jerusalem for us. Uh, Yolan, first of all, before we talk about the diplomacy and the imminent visits this week, what's been happening overnight? Well, quite important, a conversation between the U.S. President Joe Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Of course, there are lots of fears building up about a wider regional war and also about the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. And after Joe Biden had spoken to Mr. Netanyahu, the White House put out a statement saying there would now be this continuous flow of critically needed assistance going into Gaza. This after uh, 14 lorries entered um, late on, on Sunday evening and uh, 20 lorries the day before. Now, then Joe Biden went on a round of calls with the uh, different world leaders, including uh, Rishi Sunak, the, the British prime minister, and they uh, put out this joint statement. Uh, they expressed support for Israel's right to defend itself, but also called for adherence to international law, in particular, the protection of of civilians. Um, and that's a very important point. It does seem that it was another very intense um, aerial bombardment of uh, Gaza overnight. We're getting reports from Palestinian media that this was one of the worst nights so far, um, with a, a great deal of people killed. And Emmanuel Macron is due to arrive tomorrow, is that correct? It was uh, not made exactly clear. We know that um, he is supposed to be coming along with the Dutch leader this week. Uh, other visits scheduled, but it will, uh, we think, now be uh, on Tuesday that uh, Emmanuel Macron comes. Of course, you know, it will be a similar message, re reinforcing what Rishi Sunak has said, what the U.S. president has said, uh, coming also with the, the U.S. Secretary of State. There have been these repeated visits to show strong support of Israel after it suffered its, its deadliest attack in its 75-year history. Um, but also now with one and a half million people almost displaced inside Gaza, uh, this military offensive expected to go on. The, the defense minister said it could go on for one, two or three months to crush Hamas in Gaza. Uh, there is real worry about what happens on the ground. You know, the amount of aid that's going in at the moment, the UN says that the, the number of lorries entering is equivalent to about 4 percent of what would enter on normal day um, to send food and, and other supplies into the Gaza Strip via Israel uh, before Israel put the Gaza Strip under siege. What is desperately needed, and there's been a specific call for it from the UN, is fuel to go into to Gaza also, because fuel is needed, of course, for hospitals to be able to run generators uh, so that they can continue to provide care to the mounting numbers of, of wounded people and sick as well. And then you also need that the electricity so that they can uh, pump away sewage, that they can uh, pump clean water for people. Otherwise, there could be, you know, waterborne diseases that, uh, that break out. Yoland, wh what's the latest as well on the hostages? Of course, we saw the, the, the two released, the two US uh, hostages released on Friday. Any more developments on the others who are still missing? I mean, there have been repeated protests over the weekends or demonstrations by the families of those 
more than 200 people. They're Israelis and also foreign nationals who are being held by Hamas and uh, other armed factions in the Gaza Strip. Of course, with this very intense bombardment going on and the lack of aid going in, uh, that really scares people. And last night, when there were members of these families meeting the Israeli president, they really put that point to him. They said that their loved ones must not be forgotten. And they also called for some aid, like medical aid, to be allowed in, hoping that that would also benefit the hostages. OK, Yolan, for now, thank you so much. Yolan Nell, who is in Jerusalem for us. Well, it's now been 17 days since the war in Gaza began, and Israel is continuing its bombing campaign. At least 400 Palestinians have been killed in some of the worst overnight attacks on the territory, according to health officials in Gaza. Well, humanitarian aid does continue to enter as hospitals are in dire need of medical supplies. Thousands of Palestinians seeking shelter in schools are now receiving some aid, but people say what they need most is for the attacks to stop. On Monday, Israeli airstrikes hit several locations, including neighborhoods in Gaza City. Now, many families and children have been displaced after their homes were left in ruins. And Israeli forces have intensified raids, too, in the occupied West Bank. Dozens of Palestinians were detained there overnight, two killed during an Israeli raid in the Jalazoran refugee camp. Now, since the start of the war on October 7th, more than 5,000 Palestinians have lost their lives in Gaza, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. In the occupied West Bank, Israeli forces have killed 95 in the past two weeks. In Israel, 1,400 people were killed in Hamas's military operation. Harry Fawcett begins our coverage. Nighttime brings no respite for Palestinians in Gaza. Instead, more death, more destruction. The Israeli army says it hit 320 targets during the night, children among the victims. Gaza's health ministry says about 2,000 have been killed so far. Medical and rescue crews work through the dark to pull people from the rubble. Their only lights, torches and car headlamps. Electricity is scarce in the Strip, under a complete blockade by Israel. Rescue workers and volunteers are sent scrambling by another Israeli missile strike nearby. Those rescued are taken to one of the dwindling number of hospitals still functioning. But even there, the threat is constant. Another bomb near the Al-Quds hospital, creating panic for those inside. And the strikes continued further south, where the Israeli army has been telling Palestinians to flee. We were told that Khan Yunus is considered to be a safe place, and everyone came here from the north or from Gaza City. But unfortunately, last night was the hardest night so far we saw in Khan Yunus. When we moved to Khan Yunus with my family, there were 17 of us. Then after the Israelis hit us and betrayed us, there's only four of us left. I can't understand how the four of us will live and how we will return to our home in Gaza City after 17 of us used to live together. This is a real nightmare, one I will never forget for the rest of my life. Nearby, what aid has so far got in through Egypt is being sorted and prioritized. It is mainly medical supplies for the hospitals. There is also a small amount of food supplies which we had received. We will work with the Palestinian Red Crescent to start distribution instantly to those in need. We will distribute in the south and are hoping to reach to the north of Gaza to deliver the aid for those in need. Some of that work is now underway, but aid agencies continue to call for a sustained, reliable supply, one that includes desperately needed fuel for a population under siege and under unrelenting bombardment. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera. Well, the Qassam Brigades has now released video footage showing the launch of its kamikaze drones into Israeli territory. The military wing of Hamas said it targeted sites in Israel for the first time since its offensive more than two weeks ago. Well, let's speak to Al Jazeera's Hani Abu Sheba. He's live for us from Khan Yunus in the Gaza Strip. The New York Times officials think they've killed 13 Hamas officials in the bombings. What the fuck? Are you serious? Only 13? That's insane. 
Honey, we have been now hearing about a, a third aid convoy that's heading into the Strip. Do we know where the aid that's gotten in so far has gone? Yes, for the past half an hour, we received reports confirming the, uh, uh, the entrance of the third uh, batch of humanitarian aid from the Egyptian side. Uh, those trucks were uh, arrived this morning at the Egyptian side from Al Arish city. They were checked, cleared, and then transferred to designated United Nations uh, trucks. And then at this particular hour, they have been allowed to enter the Palestinian uh, territories. Now, these aids uh, are going to be uh, uh, taken from the area of the Rafah crossing all the way to designated uh, UNRWA uh, uh, warehouses where they will be sorted and prioritized. So far, we know the United Nations and its uh, operations uh, branch uh, have prepared lists and, and, and made uh, and specify locations where those aids are going to be. We don't, we don't know exactly where, but we know the, uh, the, the lists have been prepared and exact locations have been also identified for these aids to be delivered. We also uh, received a, a report from a source confirming the arrival of a fourth batch of medical supplies, only medical supplies and a medical team arriving at Arish airport uh, on the Egyptian side. Uh, we don't know when this is going to be uh, entering Gaza. It could be uh, tomorrow or the day after more, depending on the coordination the process. Uh, it's necessary to point out that so far, uh, these aid convoy only contain uh, food supplies and medical supplies. There is zero fuel supplies entering the Gaza Strip. Now, it's also important to mention that uh, 20 trucks, even 40 or 50 or 100, uh, it's just so little compared to the needs of the, pa of the Palestinian Gaza Strip. Gaza needs daily 500 trucks mm. uh, of, of, of aid, of food supplies, medical supplies and other, and other supplies. Uh, honey, we know some 400 people have been killed just in the last 24 hours. And the strikes are continuing in the south where people have fled, where you are currently. Uh, what have you been seeing and hearing? Well, for the past hour, we worked on verifying the number and we learned from a source at the Ministry of Health that the number of people who have been killed uh, throughout uh, the past 24 hours have reach 500 people now and it's an, in an official statement by the ministry of health uh, uh, all of this is happening under a mass a bombardment and airstrike just at uh, about three o'clock uh, we were preparing for a live from the hospital a, a house a, a few hundred meters away from the main entrance of the hospital was targeted by four uh, by four missiles, and those kind of missiles are the warning that are sent by Israeli drones in a preparation for complete destruction by an F-16. Uh, it, it's a very scary uh, scene right now because everybody is anxious and mm. expecting uh, a bomb being dropped at any moment. I'm sure that sounds terrifying. Hani Abu Asheba, they're on the ground for us from Khan Yunus in the Gaza Strip. Thank you so much, Hani, and please stay safe. As the bombing continues, the U.S. is advising a delay in Israel's ground invasion of Gaza, even as hundreds of thousands of troops are massed at the border there. Holly Williams reports now on that part of the story and what all this could mean for the hostages still being held in Gaza. As Israel prepares for a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. Max is a weird take on other issues with excellent done or work on Gaza. Um, any chance you can give us, uh, who's joining, just joining a rundown on what's going on? Yes. Um, the Israeli forces are prepping for a ground invasion into Gaza. Um, they are, uh, they have done, their bombing campaign is continuing and, uh, there is a, there is a, a, a hostage release that occurred. Ben Shapiro is talking shit about you. Yeah, I don't care. Not surprising, but.
Hold on. The heartland of Hamas, its prime minister visited with his troops. It's do or die, Benjamin Netanyahu told them. They need to die. And on Israel's northern border with Lebanon, deadly exchanges of fire with Hezbollah, another militant group with... Why don't you debate Ben on this? Wait, what? Did Ben Shapiro ask to debate me on this? Because I've never said no to that. Like, I would be perfectly fine in having that conversation with Ben. Telegram channel showed that Israel has no trust in his army. So much internal conflict going on, and Netanyahu's going into this last venture knowing whatever the result of this war, he's fucked. He's been advised on the sheer amount of shelling is counterproductive to the infantry. Ben would probably debate Bassem over you, easier for him. He would never debate you. He was asked many times to debate from Muhammad Hijab. The guy can't only talk to high school teenagers. No, I'm, I'm pretty bad at debating. So I think Ben would possibly uh, do it. Um, but yeah. Ties to Iran are fueling fears this conflict... Do you think they'll actually invade? I think Israel is too scared. Um, I think that they... <sighs> there are conflicting forces... That, that have an appetite for blood internally at Israel, that, uh, and, and those interests have to be soothed, saved, whatever the word is. Like, they, someone has to, you suck at debating Hassan, I love you, but Hassan would cook him more. I mean, I suck at debating, and I think I can still hold my own against Ben Shapiro. I'm perfectly fine and, and uh, perfectly interested in doing that. Satiated, thank you. Um. Uh, I I have never said no to debating Ben Shapiro on this issue or on any issue at all, as a matter of fact. Um, um, but as far as as far as a uh, you have to stop being so self-deprecating. That's my job. I mean, I don't care. I I, I just don't give a shit. Ben Shapiro clearly ignored the involved him. in this controversy now is Hassan Piker. He used to be associated with the Young Turks, Fuck! and now he is. What is this? This is an old ass uh, video. They won't go beyond Gaza. China sent six warships, and Iran is doing proxy attacks. Wait, no, China's China's six warships are not new. It's 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 usual. Uh, it's usually mi usual military training. And not only that, but also China is not going to fucking fight against Israel, dude. What are you guys talking about? Please stop. There are... There are people who, who want this invasion to occur. I think that the invasion, uh, ground invasion, would be devastating for the IDF. Um, whereas right now they could just keep lobbing missiles uh, from the sky and, and keep uh, destroying whatever will the Palestinian people have in general to survive. They can keep trying to starve out the population. Um, ultimately, it's, it's much easier. Even if they kill only 13 Hamas uh, uh, officials, let's say, and 5,000 civilians in general, uh, it's just 
it, the the overarching goal there is to uh, open up a new area of Gaza to permanently occupy, to permanently annex. Okay? It's not necessarily about dealing with Hamas. I think that there's a mistake here. If you think that like uh, Israel's genuine opinion is to take out Hamas and rid the Gaza Strip of Hamas's influence, you've been blinded by the propaganda. I do not think that Israel's I do not think that Israel's goal there is to take out Hamas. I think the goal there is to annex parts of Gaza. Potentially. Or do as much terror as possible to the Palestinian population in general that, um, you know, they feel like they have uh, adequately retaliated. Could expand. There was some good news on Friday night when two American hostages were released. Judith Ranan and her daughter Natalie from Evanston, Illinois, were visiting relatives here when they were kidnapped. Today, Israel raised the number of confirmed hostages to 222. The US says that among them are more Americans. There's Americans stuck in Gaza right now. We want to get them out. There are hostages in Gaza right now. We want to get them out as well. A visiting delegation of American... Yeah, except I think that Cory Booker's alone on that. As far as I've heard, as far as I've heard, that there are Americans in Gaza for example, and they have been basically condemned to live in that hellish circumstance that the embassy is not uh, responding to their calls and they're not doing anything to like take out the American citizens that are currently stuck in Gaza and, and allow them to, to leave the Gaza Strip, which is crazy. But of course, you're on the lowest part of the totem pole if you are a a uh, Palestinian American, you know, you have no rights. You're, you're worse uh, than all of the other American Americans. You know what I mean? And senators is another show of support for Israel. Do you think that Israel should delay its ground invasion until every avenue is attempted to get the hostages out? Israel should destroy Hamas. How you do it is subject to debate. We stand with Israel without apology. This is a very cowardly way to assess the situation. Oh, well, up to debate. It's like, is it? Okay. Well, I'm saying it's, it's fucking immoral and wrong. What are you saying? You're saying it's moral and good. Okay, debate over, I guess. You think ethnic cleansing. You think 2,000 children dead, 2,000 children murdered by Israeli rocket fires is an acceptable amount of collateral damage in Israel's retaliation. I do not. That's a, that's, there's the debate for you. If you want to have a debate on the matter, this is my position. I don't like it. I don't think it's uh, uh, justifiable. I don't think it's appropriate. And everybody who dies forward, I blame Hamas. But for the families of the hostages, it's agonizing. Their loved ones are being held in the same place that Israel's bombarding. Why they took children? Why they took women? Why they took... Why, why? My Yerol Shami's sister, Eden, was taken captive by Hamas militants at a festival where the gunmen killed at least 260 people. Eden called her family as she was being kidnapped and they recorded it. They've got me, she said. Two American hostages were freed late on Friday. How did you feel about that? Uh, of course, we was uh, happy. It uh, gives us uh, hope. And people that fucking rip these posters are so stupid by the way like i don't know what the fuck is wrong with people that do shit like that like they've been posting these posters all around uh america all around uh the uk everywhere in israel and it's such a weird fucking thing to do it, it's such a gross thing to do like i i it's unimaginable uh it's unimaginable it says nothing about like the overarching uh palestinian emancipation of course from where i'm standing but uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it's so disrespectful and gross. It's obvious Zionist propaganda law? I don't give a fuck. What do you mean it's obvious Zionist propaganda? The fuck are you talking about? Those people are still missing. What is wrong with you? 
Like that that's insane. That you're an insane person, okay? You you've lost your fucking mind at that point. If you think that like uh, uh children uh with missing posters uh is is not and, and should not be uh, uh allowed to be posted. Okay? It's an insane thing to say. Okay? It's cruel, it's unusual and uh <laughs> you know, you're you're basically fucking uh, uh lending a hand to unironic propaganda for for Israel if you uh, say stupid shit like that okay from the perspective of uh, the likes of you know Benjamin Netanyahu or, or other groups it's like there's nothing better than to see some dude be like oh free Palestine I'm doing this because I want to free Palestine it's akin to the gross and immoral misconduct by charlatans that go to fucking protests and yell uh, horrifyingly anti-semitic shit okay there's a reason why uh, the ADL conflates anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, okay? So when you actually do engage in anti-Semitic shit while uh, claiming that you're doing it under the auspices of anti-Zionism, you are quite literally doing a disservice. You're gross, you're immoral, you're stupid, and you're doing a disservice to the uh, cause that you claim to care about. Crying for dead Israelis is like crying for dead Spanish conquerors who died trying to colonize Mexico or dead Ottomans who tried to <laughs> died trying to colonize the rest of the world. Yeah, dude, you're right. Uh, crying for fucking uh, a, a kidnapped baby is, is uh, the same. You're so stupid. Shut the fuck up, please. Sh please just shut your fucking mouth, okay? Just, just shut it. Just shut it. You're like... You are the guy that all of these fucking annoying libtards constantly point to and say, oh my God, look at how violent the left is. Look at how violent the left is. Like, you're, you're making yourself out to be the cartoonish depiction of this, like, supposedly scary vanguard uh, militant leftist out there. It's so dumb. Don't you say that the optics argument is irrelevant? When we're having an internal conversation in the Western world, when there's, like, mass mobilization occurring, the optics conversation is very relevant. It's not as relevant as the way that uh, uh, right-wingers make it out to be or liberals make it out to be. It's ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, uh, a, a silly, nonsensical way to, to claim that all anti-Zionist uh, protests are actually anti-Semitic in nature. But I am, of course, going to do my own cleanup in my own fucking community if I have people in here that are saying idiotic shit that lends, a, that lends credence to said idiotic fucking uh, assessments. Of course. Me saying the optics conversation is irrelevant is in the actions that Hamas engages in or Palestinian uh, militias engage in, okay? They don't care because they're fucking dying. You live in Ohio. You are in America. Your job and your goal is to be careful and, and not say some stupid fucking shit that will be used against Palestinian emancipation down the fucking line because every single person is out there to go, look, I knew it. These guys are anti-Semitic. So if there are people who are saying unhinged shit uh, that are, are careless and callous, thinking that they can get away with uh, the, the uh, blood and soil propaganda that like defenders of Israel can get away with in the United States of America, well, you're wrong. Not only are you immoral, and I don't agree with you, but you're also wrong. You can't say that. Richie Torres can go up there and say every Palestinian deserves to be ruthlessly slaughtered and people will not even fucking second guess him. But if you are defending Palestinians, you have to be incredibly fucking careful when you're here in the United States of America and trying to do as best as you can uh, to, to advocate for Palestinian liberation. Housekeep your chat fine, but nobody's going to use the Twitch chat as an evidence of fucking anything, though. You are so silly. Everyone keeps saying I am a supporter of Hamas nonstop, and people literally come in here and write shit in this chat that is gross and unhinged, specifically so they can clip it and post it on Reddit. So you're wrong. You have no idea how deep that well goes. You are absolutely wrong on that front. Yes, they have been. They can't use my words... So they try to say, look at his chat. He has created a space that is hostile to all Jews 
which is hilarious to say to someone like myself because, you know, I have been uh, a, a person who's very publicly on the record uh, in, in combating anti-Semitism of all forms, as I believe it is one of the greatest telltale signs of fascist ideology. So the idea that, like, uh, you know, it, it's new when I uh, shit on anti-Semitic uh, losers is, is a silly one. Uh, it's especially funny when you consider that uh, a lot of the communities that are saying that about me or my community, okay, are also ones that have identified and aligned with, like, literal fucking neo-Nazis in the past. They might have debated them, but, like, they've literally have been like, oh, man, he's a really effective interlocutor, as a matter of fact. Like, I can't help but feel like he makes a lot of good content. So get the fuck out of here. Anti-Semitism is the original bigotry, unacceptable and should be shunned. 100%. Absolutely. I'm Jewish and I appreciate this space is well kept from anti-Semitism. You mods do a fantastic job sniping Nazis much better than fucking Twitter does now. Yeah, exactly. And it's not a mask on, mask off thing. Saying in since there is enjoyed a music festival deserved is unhinged. Most of them were also leftists. So were the people living in the kibbutz. Online leftists arguing that they were colonized is actually fucking gross. It's just, it's just so stupid. It's a stupid fucking conversation to have over and over again. Like... That's why I openly, I think people misunderstand my position when I say analysis does not mean justification. Like, I'm not just saying that. I, I do believe that. I think that you can't maintain an apartheid regime and you can't maintain a fucking concentration camp for, you know, however many years that you have, right, for decades and, 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 and assume that you have, the, uh, you have it fully under control. It's incredibly arrogant, okay? It's incredibly arrogant. But this does not mean that, like, you know, you're doing uh, uh, revolutionary acts by fucking uh, uh, killing people inside of kibbutzes, which, you know, inside of uh, kibbutzim or, uh, or at a fucking, uh, you know, uh, festival. There should not have been a festival there, in my opinion, of course. But still, that doesn't change the reality that, like, civilians are still fucking being slaughtered at the, at the festival. And that's not, you know, that's, that's, that's still horrifying. The reason why I shit on Israel for its gross occupation and its gross actions is because they are killing. They're killing civilians. They're killing civilians all the fucking time. That's the major problem here. Um. And uh, even uh, we jealous because we want. I thought it was interesting when I searched We're on gonna be Twitter last night. Uh, to see if you were streaming, I saw several people using cockroaches as a way of referring to you. This morning, I was listening to a Mossad agent give a C-SPAN interview in the 90s, and he talked about tagging marks for propaganda by referring to them as cockroaches. Yeah, I mean, the, the Turk roach thing is a 4chan. On th me. This, it would be Eden. Holly Williams reporting for us. Now, Holly Williams is also here in Ashkelon with me, and a short time ago, she spoke to the family members of the two Americans who were taken hostage and then released. What did they tell you? That Wait, why do you think there should not have been a festival there? Are you crazy? It's literally next to the fucking border, next to an open-air prison with two million people. Are you nuts? I don't think that there should be an open-air prison there. That's number one. But, like, that's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. This is not a justification, but come on. It's not even poor planning. More critical people of the Netanyahu administration in Israel will say that it's actually by design. It is deliberate. That's why the kibbutzim were left unguarded for far too long. That's why the Bedouin, uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel, do not get the same level of protection from Iron Dome and also have bomb shelters, for example. Um, it's... I think it's arrogance. That's what I think it is. It's arrogance to think that you had this completely handled, that you know every single thing that happens inside of Gaza, and that it's perfectly valid to continue operating a two million, uh, uh, a two million open air prison uh, that you control every aspect of living inside of. It's, 
It's arrogance. It was so entirely arrogant that, like, you could even move troops away from the border uh, into the West Bank to continue doing more awful uh, operations inside of the West Bank that is incredibly radicalizing for Palestinians that live under that brutal occupation to begin with. It's just, I, it's arrogance. That's it. Arrogant to think that you can uh, maintain this brutal occupation. It's arrogant to think that you can maintain this apartheid. It's arrogant to think that, uh, that, that you have this completely uh, controlled. That's right, Tony. So Judith Ranan and her daughter Natalie are from Evanston, Illinois. They were here in Israel celebrating the 85th birthday of Judith's mother. They were kidnapped on October 7th, and so far they are the only hostages to have been freed. We spoke a little earlier today with two of their cousins, Ayelet and Or Sela. When you first saw those images, the videos, the photographs of them released, what was that feeling like? overwhelming it's disbelief and it's relief at the, at the same time and it's all the emotions all at once because um, being happy is a privilege that we do not have right now we have eight other family members among them young children that are still being held hostage so you feel very lucky and you feel very guilty and it's very very hard to reconcile everything that is going on they're still in Israel. Are they staying with your family members? Yeah. Yeah. And what have they told you about their ordeal? All we can say, all I can say is that hugging them was, I never felt a hug like this. Like you can't even describe in words the, the overwhelming feelings. And uh, like I said, you know, there is a lot of, relief and a lot of happiness inside this specific moment. Do Judith and Natalie have any injuries that you're aware of? They are physically well. Um, we were very happy to learn that. Mentally, how are they doing? You know, they're, um, it's going to be a long, a long uh, road for them and for the rest of the family to heal from this. Do you know what President Biden said to them on that phone call that he had with them after they were released? Uh, so we can't get into to specifics about the... Arabs are Semitic people as well, okay? Uh, I don't know why people are arguing in the chat, but it doesn't matter. When you say anti-Semitism, no one thinks it's anti-Arab, okay? Anti-Semitism is, is uh, against Jews, okay? That's just colloquially uh, what it's used for, Okay. Although Arab people are also Semitic people, absolutely zero people fucking use anti-Semitism as anti-Arab sentiment. Please. It does not matter. It does literally does not matter. It doesn't matter. Like, you will never, you will never be able to, like, dictionary definition your way out of that for sure. I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why people uh, try to do that anyway. I, I don't know. It's like, it almost feels like a, like a, a black Israelite uh, trying to explain how uh, they are the real Jews or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not as ridiculous as that because like technically Semitic is literally uh, uh, Arabs as well. But it's like, I just don't understand. Like, I, I don't understand why you're still uh, pushing this fucking, uh, you know, pushing the button over and over again. It's just semantics the call but we can say we are grateful uh, for the support of President Biden and all of uh, his administration and also uh, all all the American people uh, on this from both parties it's 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 way beyond politics it's about human lives you have eight family members who are still missing how do you think they they might be being treated right now I try not to think about it I'll tell you the truth. When late at night, when I go to sleep, uh, and all my defenses are weak, um, those thoughts come, and I shake them away because I can't allow myself to break. We have to stay strong. We have to keep going full force until they are all released and back home. 
would you prefer that Israel delays its ground invasion until every avenue has been attempted to bring the hostages back? I, we demand it. We, they need to do everything to get the hostages back, to get our family back and 200 more families, loved ones back before anything is even on the table. The hostages, they are civilians. This is the basic contract between the country and us. The civilians come first. Yeah. I, I mean, civilians come first. He's right, which is not a position that uh, is shared by some, at least in the uh, in the Israeli administration right now. Yelit Seller told us it's like her family is missing a limb. And Tony, they are not the only family members of hostages who've told us they want a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip to be delayed. I thought they let him go because they were ill. No, they let two other. Uh, they let two other hostages go as well. Uh, they they wanted to le uh, they wanted to release two other older hostages, both like eighty plus. And uh, Israel said no at first. Israel said no and said that it's like propaganda, which was insane to me. But here they uh, here is a a, a uh, released uh, uh, hostages being released. Here is the video. They released the hostages. Hamas released the hostages through the Rafah border. Well, Hamas hasn't lied before, have they? No, of course they've lied. What the fuck? What do you mean? Of course, both sides are, are going to do everything they can to fucking present their, uh, <laughs> present their side as best as they possibly can. What you're supposed to do is parse through that and, and make up your mind regardless of what either side is fucking saying. <laughs> yes, Hamas also lies. Of course they do. These are the two hostages that they released. Uh, originally tried to release into Israel. Israel said no, and they released them uh, into Egypt today. They said that they wanted to release these hostages on uh, humanitarian considerations because, like, they wanted to, um, I think they were, like, uh, too sick or something. I don't know. They're old. They're very old. There's no way they can look good. It's silly to pretend that some kind of PR is going to make Hamas favorable somehow. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not going to happen. Uh, of course not. Can you explain why Israel denied it? Uh, the hostages? I think they wanted to... Uh, they, I mean, don't ask me. They're, this is what they said, okay? They said that they are denying it originally on, on considerations of propaganda. They said that it would be a... Hold on. I don't know why we can't hear anything from that video. Let me see if I can find uh, the original IDF comment from... Yeah, Hamas claims to have released two Israeli women, Yosheved Lifshitz, age 85, and Nurit Yitzhak, who I think is like 83. Uh, and the thing that they... The thing that they said was uh, before Hamas set them free, they were, uh, they were claiming that they were trying to negotiate. Like, they were claiming that they were go uh, going to release them. Palestinian woman shares their experience. Oh, here, this is the one. Uh, this is what I was looking for. Israeli Prime Minister's Office has confirmed that Israel declined to accept two Israeli hostages from Hamas, stating that they will not address what is considered to be mendacious propaganda by the group. They're saying... They're, they're stating that... Um, they're, they're stating that, like, they did not want to allow... Uh, 
Uh, they did not want to allow Hamas to get a propaganda dub in this situation, which, like, I, I get, I understand that optically speaking, this will, I guess, kind of look good for Hamas uh, because it breaks through the the uh, narrative that they're, like, uh, they're doing wanton and indiscriminate punishment to, like, regular uh, Israeli grandmas and shit, but they did do that already. So there is no reason not to accept hostages. It blows my fucking mind. Uh, like, it, it, it just, it, I'm going to calm down. There is, it, it is so unhinged and so insane to just refuse to accept hostages because you think that like this will uh, go against, uh, in your minds, it, it will create mendacious propaganda. The Al Jazeera English tweet does not match the reporting in the blog. There was no confirmation of the claim. Just refusal to comment on grounds of propaganda. Please check the link. So are they saying that they actually uh, did engage in hostage negotiation, uh, no strings attached, release of hostages, and that they, uh, they were saying yes to it, but instead it went uh, uh, through the Rafah border through Egypt and that they sent the hostages through Egypt instead? Yeah, the mendacious propaganda was a direct quote from the Israeli government chatter. I guess, like, the what the chatter is saying is that it's propaganda to to uh, confirm or deny that, like, they uh, were in talks with Hamas on the uh, release of the hostages, which could be the case. Maybe they didn't actually fucking bring it up to Israel at all. Um, but I remember a couple days ago, Times of Israel says something else on Saturday. Abu Obeda claimed that there was a terror group that wanted to release some the same two hostages, but that Israel declined to accept them. Following the claim, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said they would not respond to Hamas's propaganda lies. So um, I have been hearing about uh, the, the uh, like, I know for a fact that uh, Al-Qassam, I think, or Hamas, openly stated that they had two hostages that they want to release on humanitarian grounds without, uh, without additional, uh, uh, like, they didn't mention anything else. I know that they publicly uh, tried to release it two days ago. I know that because I've been following this nonstop. They literally fucking said two days ago openly and publicly that they wanted to release these two hostages on humanitarian grounds. Okay? So... I don't know. Uh, I don't know what happened in that process, and I don't know what the fuck. Oh shit! There is audio. Hold on. What is happening? Now, I'm using Kapatma. I mean, it's okay, let's go. It's okay? Let's go. Yes. You go with this one? Okay. You go with this lady? Okay. Yes. Okay. She's saying names I'd assume they'd wanted to bleep them. You were if you were king of the world, how would you resolve the Israel Palestine issue? Uh I already talked about it so many times. If it was a six-hour ceasefire for the hostages and they didn't want Hamas to start firing after the trade and make Israel fire back and make the PA uh, they didn't keep the deal and then make PA that they didn't keep the deal? What? If I were Israeli, I would protest right now against the fascist government. Good luck. Uh, you'll go to prison. Anyway, um, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, what kind of additional updates are. I'm sure that they will be interviewed promptly uh, once they get the the proper medical care that they need. So we'll see. If you guys have. If you guys have a, a, a good, uh, a better article, like a, like a Hebrew article or Israeli article that shows, um, oh Jesus, that shows the, uh, the, the, uh, 
like internal communications. I would love to see it. Oh, this will is Will you a, release all the civilian hostages? Will you let them go from Gaza? Unconditionally, will you let them out now? I will let they are not hostages. First, secondly, I told you. Whatever you call them, captives, guests, whatever. Will you let them go? What have they done? I said we will release them, and Al Qassam brigades announced that. But now they are distributed in different locations. Israel has killed more than 22 of them because of the destruction it has caused. So therefore, if Netanyahu was keen on their safety, if the Europeans and the Americans are keen on their safety, let them force Israel to stop its aggression, to stop this genocide. Oh shit, do we know if that's true, that 22 of them uh, have been uh, killed by Israeli bombing campaigns? It might not be, but I've, I've told you this before. There is no reason for them to not kill the hostages on camera. They said that they would kill the hostages on camera if the bombings, uh, if no-knock bombings continued. So I don't know why you would get a hostage and then just execute them off camera when um, your goal with the hostages is to show how serious you are. But yes, the claim from the Al Qassam brigades is that 22 of the hostages have died uh, in in bombing campaigns so far. Like ultimately, no matter how gruesome, no matter how ruthless they are, uh, there are still uh, basic interests that they have, self interest in this regard. So the way I look at it is by. Um, Khalid Michel does not uh, doesn't speak for Hamas anymore. Abu Abaida is the only Qassam Brigade military talks person now. They retracted from saying killing them on camera because they got backlash from Iran and allies. I understand after parsing through it, the Israeli government was trying to say the claim they refused the hostages was propaganda, even though it's pretty clear at that point. I just don't know why they didn't uh, uh, say yes to it two days ago. I I, I legitimately don't understand it. I I don't. I don't want to believe that Israel was like, no, we're just not going to release the hostages or we're not going to take in the hostages. But I also don't understand why it took two days for them to say, uh, to, to not even actually take the hostages, but allow the hostages to go through the Rafah border. Does this mean Israel has supposedly killed more of the hostages than the estimated Hamas officials with the bombings? I don't know. I don't know. We do not know. We do not have any conclusive evidence. The only thing we have in this circumstance is critical thinking. The critical thinking is that Al Jazeera reported that Israel confirmed the fact that they denied hostages, but I didn't see that specifically in the words Israel said. I think the the misunderstanding here is that Israel didn't directly say that they, confer, they uh, refused the hostages. They simply said that they do not want to respond to propaganda. This brutal war crimes which are committed every day. Yesterday, only 400 victims in one night, Dominic. Let them stop this aggression and you will find the mediators like Qatar and some Arab countries like Egypt and others. They will find a way to have them released and we'll send them to their homes. Did you mean to take civilian hostages? Did you intend to do that? Or was that a mistake, taking so many civilians and civilians from countries all around the world? I said this happened. <laughs> they did, they, they low-key did say, oops, are bad, which is fucking ridiculous. No, they did. You're saying a mistake, lol, but like, <laughs> they literally did say, oops, are bad, which is an insane thing to say, okay? Um, that was like one day in. That was like on October 9th or October 10th or something where they were like, yeah, we fucking uh you, you know we fucked that up a little bit which is ridiculous it's ridiculous don't misunderstand me i'm saying it's fucking ridiculous to say that because like you know you had an opportunity to not do that you know what i mean you and you shouldn't have done that happened within the situation of a battle al qassam fighters focused on the army officers and rank and file to exchange them for the 5500 prisoners we have we have hundreds of children women we have some people who spent 45 years in israeli prisons dominic please try and understand me this is 
a message. Hamas. This is not. This is not a battle between Israel and Hamas. This is a battle between Israel as an occupier and the Palestinian people. Not asking about that. I'm asking about the hostages. I'm, I'm asking about your captives, Mr. Michel. Please, you, Dominic. Please, Western media talk, talks about being objective, but you have to apply them honestly. Like you apply them to Rwanda, genocide was there. Netanyahu is committing genocide. Our cause is a, a cause of liberty. Bro, what the fuck? I can't even. Yo, chill out, dude. I can't even understand what he's saying. Liberation. You do not look at the latest developments. You tend conveniently to forget the crimes upon which Israel was founded in 1948. The Palestinian people want freedom. Yasser Arafat negotiated with them. He made peace with them. They, they poisoned him. They killed him. Abu Mazen is left helpless so, now because they don't want I just they should have mixed the audio much better than this because it's like impossible to fucking comprehend what he's saying given the given how fucking uh you know the voices are are just incredibly confusing um i understood nothing as someone who speaks both languages yeah it like it, it ruined like you can't even understand what the fuck he's saying with like uh in, in english because like it's so loud the audio mixing is the problem in this situation. Like, they mixed it in a way where it's, like, it's impossible to hear. Like, at the top of the hour, it's impossible to see and hear because you'll see an ad unless you're subscribed. Here's a three-minute break now. Okay. So all of that justifies what you did on October the 7th, going into civilian places, taking civilians hostage, killing civilians, taking old women, taking children. All of that, all of that is justified by what Israel did. Is that right? You're saying an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Do two wrongs make a right? And, 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 and they are Dominic. You, Dominic, insist on the same narrative. This is what Israel has done. Occupation. Assaults on Al-Aqsa, assaults on children, massacres. This is what made them fight their soldiers, as I told you before. But they are killers. But on, on that day, we saw your fighters killing women, killing children, taking children, taking old women. Are you saying, let me ask you, was that, was that a mistake? Did you go too far? You couldn't control your fighters because you talked about the military operation, the attacks on the civilians, the 250 dead at that music festival. They were attacked deliberately by fighters in paragliders. We've seen the pictures. Was that intentional or was that a mistake? Because you say you were only attack, attacking the military, but clearly many civilians were targeted, yes. killed, kidnapped and tortured that day. Dominic, please listen to me well. The elite force... Yeah, he is asking Hamas to condemn Hamas as always, which is... This of uh, Hamas on the dawn of the 7th of October attacked the barracks and positions of the Gaza division, defeated them in seven days. They went to other... Yes, we've lessons. heard about the military issue. We've heard about the... This guy doesn't know shit. He's the leader of the political bureau of Hamas, the military wing known as the Al Qassam Brigade, are the ones who did October seventh op. Both wings are almost non-related. I mean, there's still communication amongst them, though. The paragliders were fake news. What, dude? Are you insane? What do you mean they were fake news? We saw it, brother. They filmed it. What are you talking about? Like. I'm losing my mind, dude. Dog. Half of the fucking Al Qassam dudes are like literally Zoomers. You know that, right? They got fucking GoPros on their guns. They got GoPros on their fucking helmets. They filmed every part of the, the military operation in their... No, that... Was I incorrect in someone debunking that? No, there is no debunking that. There, that's... It's very real. So... Okay, that part is very real. You know what else is very real? Some of the fucking ruthless executions that were also on camera that were very real. Then 
there is, of course, uh, shit that is like from live leak cartel footage that they claim uh, Hamas was doing. There are atrocities that like Israel has committed that they attribute to Hamas and, and Palestinians. But, but having said that, there were also plenty of fucking atrocities that they committed uh, on, on camera. Like, they did. They shot, they shot at random fucking people uh, in bus stops and whatnot. It's not like it was a, uh, a, a perfect, tactical, precise strike on, on military formations. Like, it wasn't. It literally was not. And they filmed most of it. I'm asking about the civilians, the attacks on the civilians. Please answer that, Mr. Mashal. Never, Dominic, you insist on adopting the Israeli narrative. It's not Israeli. It's, it's the pictures we've seen on Al Jazeera. Palestinian journalists have filmed Hamas fighters going to civilian places, attacking civilians. I'm asking you, please answer. Was that intended? Was it calculated? No, there are interviews of some of the survivors of the rave. They did not say the IDF killed civilians there. You're wrong. There are interviews of a one specific survivor, Yasmin Polat, I believe her name is, that uh, went from the rave to the nearest kibbutz, who said to the state radio broadcast of Israel that the the uh, the major number of of civilian uh, casualties occurred when the IDF came storming into the uh, into the kibbutz in the crossfire where they used tanks and and. Uh, shelled some of the of the uh houses that that was not about the the uh the rave at all that was about uh, one of the kibbutzes near uh, the rave she said that they there's a likelihood that they were shot in crossfire and also through tank shelling as well that was also i believe a, that might have been a day after not even on the same day Calculated, or was it a mistake? Did your men go too far that day? I'm telling you very specifically, the elite forces of Al Qassam did not kill civilians with the admission of Israeli women in the Israeli media as a result of the fire exchange and by the bullets. In-depth Times of Israel article that uh, shows the claims of both Hamas and the Netanyahu government. Hamas released two elderly Israeli hostages Monday evening after 17 days in captivity. The third and fourth captives to be freed by the terror group in recent days. The two were identified as Nurit Cooper, 79, and Yosheved Lifshitz, 85. They were released from Gaza into Egypt late Monday and were then transferred to the IDF who brought them to an Israeli hospital for examination. At least 220 others, including the respective husbands of both women, Amiram Cooper and Oded Lifshitz, are still believed to be held hostage by Hamas. The couples were taken captive on October 7th from their homes in the kibbutz near Oz. Many others were slaughtered by Hamas terrorists in the community. The International Committee of uh, Red Cross said it had facilitated the release of the hostages, transporting them out of Gaza this evening. The organization wrote on X. Video footage which aired on Egyptian TV showed the two women being transported in the back of ambulances while receiving medical treatment. Thank God. The release came after reports proliferated in Hebrew media earlier that 50 hostages with foreign citizenships could be freed by the terror group. The Wall Street Journal, citing three unnamed officials with knowledge of the matter, said that effort failed over Israel's refusal to accept Hamas's demand to allow fuel in the Gaza. Now, Hamas's demand to allow fuel in the Gaza is a contentious point by Israel because they claim, oh, you're going to use that fuel for rockets. However, that fuel needs to go into Gaza because currently Gaza does not have any fucking fuel to run their motherfucking generators. And there are uh, babies inside of incubators that are slated to die. I believe, as Jenk uh, pointed out, 45 of them might die today. Okay? So remember that. The fuel is... The fuel is specifically for the hospitals, okay? Um, but here's the footage of them being uh, released on Egyptian TV. Uh, 
هذه بعثة من الصليب الأحمر ويرافقها الآن فرق نعم. من هيئة الإسعاف المصرية كي تدخل إلى سيارة الإسعاف المصرية طبعا لأنها دخلت إلى مصر عبر معبر um. Just before midnight on Monday, the Prime Minister's office confirmed that the two women had been released and were handed over to the Israeli forces who were bringing them to an Israeli hospital for full assessment. The government thanked both Egypt and Red Cross for their roles in freeing and transporting Lifshitz and Cooper and vowed to continue the work to the best of our abilities and the full effort to locate all the missing uh, and bring all the hostages <laughs> home. I, I, this is Al Jazeera Arabic. I would like to fucking hear uh, an English translation to this. Pictures published by the Al Qassam Brigade show the release of two female detainees whom Israel had previously refused to receive is the way that Al Jazeera Arabic is covering it. I do not know if Israel uh, legitimately said no to it. Uh, it sounds fucking insane. Um, uh, but I do know that it's been two days. It took two days for these hostages to be released into uh, Egypt. So... Um, I know that there, two days ago, they were publicly stating that they wanted to release these two hostages. The spokesperson for Hamas's military wing, the Izad Din al Qassam Brigades, who goes by the nom de guerre Abu Obeda, announced on Monday that the terror group had released the two Israeli hostages for humanitarian reasons following Egyptian and Qatari mediation. On Saturday, Abu Obeda claimed that the terror group wanted to release the same two hostages, but that Israel declined to accept them. They said this on Saturday. This is true. They did say this. Following the claim, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said it would not respond to Hamas's propaganda lies. Daniel Lifshitz, the grandson of Yoshheved and Oded, told reporters on Monday night that his family was excited, happy, overjoyed by the official notice that his grandmother, as well as Cooper, are coming back to us. He said that the whole family is waiting for them, and we are also waiting for all the hostages from this kibbutz, as well as all the hostages in general. Lifshitz added that he hopes both women are in good health and that the family was desperately uh, waiting uh, to be reunited with Yoshheved. Asked about the status of his grandfather, Daniel said he did not have any news about anything else. There was no immediate indication why Cooper and Lifshitz were selected for release other than their advanced age and potential health complications. Lifshitz's daughter, Sharon, uh, said that the, her mother uses oxygen when she sleeps and suffers from significant back pain. Cooper's son, Rotem, had told a US, uh, local U.S. TV network they might not survive if they don't get their medicines. Egyptian TV station Al Qahira News said the hostages were released through the Rafah crossing, with Egypt claiming that the move came following the intense Egyptian efforts. The Lifshitz couple, who were among the founders of Kibbutz near Oz, were peace activists and regularly transported patients from Gaza to receive medical treatment in hospitals across Israel. On Friday evening, Hamas released two American Israelis, mother and daughter Judith and Natalie Ra'anan, who also, via the Rafah crossing with Egypt, uh, were released into Egypt. Yocheved, that's how you say it. Okay. The two were handed over to the Red Cross, which handed them over to Israel. Hamas also said that the release was made for humanitarian reasons. Um... Eight other members of Judith and Natalie's extended family are among the hostages. Two members of the extended family were killed by terrorists in Hamas's October 7 onslaught. U.S. officials over the past week have reported they've been urging Israel to delay its ground operations in the Gaza Strip to allow more time for negotiation to release more hostages. Yeah, I think some in the chat don't understand how many hostages are actually peace activists. Yes, people don't know what a kibbutz is. It's literally like a commune communal formation it's it's a fucking commune they're like agrarian farm people that live off the land and are uh and, and in many of them are just like uh they're all like old people that uh that oftentimes are um they're they're like pro uh the palestinian emancipation too Oh, oh, I just, oh my God. Bro, it's so funny to fucking be like, oh, it doesn't matter. When, like, their criticisms half the time are that, like, the, the uh, IDF basically leaves them out with their asses hanging specifically so that they can be the first line of defense as a kind of a human shield. If you hear, uh, if you hear what they have to say, that's why so many 
of the people that survived in the uh, uh, kibbutzim openly stated that they, the, the Israeli government has deliberately left us here um, to, to be fucking human shields, basically. The government only likes the idea of those people who are hostages when it can be used as leverage, not their reality. They don't care about those left-leaning peace activists. Yeah, I mean... Is there a reason why most reporters will say including women and children when discussing casualties and tragedies like children I get, but as a woman myself saying that and the victims were women doesn't change how upset I am by something? Wait, what? No, it's because in most, in, in, in the Western world or in general, the understanding is that like adult aged, military aged men are declared enemy combatants usually. And it's like more of a justifiable casualty regardless of uh, the fact that they might be civilians. That's it. That's why people say women and children. How do you not understand that? It, they are historically uh, women and children are considered not combatants. Anyway, maybe you didn't know, but uh, people in the chat are saying that the land invasion might have begun, and we will cover that uh, uh, as best to to my ability. But Speaking to reporters early on Monday, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said the number of confirmed hostages stood at 222. He said that their number included a not, significant, not insignificant number of foreign nationals and that it had taken the time for them to be identified and their families to be notified. The number appeared to stand at 220 following the latest release. When asked whether the ground operation was being delayed to allow more time for attempts to secure the release of the further hostages, Hagari said, we are working on all ways to free the hostages and bring them home. Hagari refused to confirm or deny reports that some of the 50 hostages with foreign citizenship were slated to be freed, saying only Israel does not differentiate between who has a passport, what race, gender, or religion they are when it comes to securing their release. Ani Apiamasun. Thank you. So this article still doesn't really show uh, the, the Israeli uh, perspective, the Israeli government's perspective on uh, the, the conditional release of hostages. So I don't know. I don't know why people said that, but. Here is uh, the. Uh, the the Mondo Weiss article from I don't know I mean it's from it's from someone who wants to maintain their anonymity so I read it this morning I read the Mondo Weiss article this morning I I don't like that it's uh it's anonymous uh, I'll be honest with you I I don't like that it's anonymous and I I read it uh, I know that it matches up uh, I know that this matches up with uh with the with the uh like the the Hannibal Protocol of of uh going completely uh, balls of the wall uh, and indiscriminately firing when there are uh hostages that have, have been taken they have done this in the past as well but ultimately i i i don't think that there's enough i mean i, I the only evidence that we have so far is from one of the victims This is the full statement. We will not refer to false propaganda by Hamas. We will continue to act in every way to return all kidnapped and missing people home. Yeah. Um, I think it seems like, uh, as far as that goes, I think it seems like they're just saying that they're not responding to the propaganda from Hamas, not necessarily saying that they uh, did not uh, say yes to receiving hostages for some fucking weird reason. Because that, that would be insane. Like, that would be completely completely unimaginably uh, 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 cruel, like psychotic. Can't even say the propaganda is wrong? What do you mean? Is it different from how they're treating the hostages taken to Gaza? What do you mean?
um, just like for the record, uh, uh, it's the the IDF and their response. Yeah, we watched this already. The IDF and their the IDF and their response in the in the uh, kibbutzim is is still on the hands of of Hamas. Like they would not have had to respond that way, uh, regardless of their uh, military, uh, regardless of their perspective on their own uh, citizens and uh, whether they care for them or not. There would be no need for uh, that level of incursion, that level of invasion, if there were no uh, Hamas operatives in the kibbutz. So it's still. I think it's still valid to say that it, that is the fault of the Palestinian brigades there, for sure. Why would they, you know, they would not, uh, they, they of course were not going to respond by being like, okay, you can just walk back to Gaza now. Um, chatters weren't joking. CNN is reporting fast tank movement. Oh, Jesus Christ. It might be beginning. On. of thousands of people they're not going to go back oh yeah Hezbollah threat is still live just across the border and you know you know behind the scenes israeli officials are telling me that they will no longer tolerate the status quo on that northern border with hezbollah fighters literally just over the fence threatening israelis they're not going to they don't know what they're going to do yet but the status quo they're saying will not will not be allowed to last nothing chance thank you so much appreciate it a man's plea to the Biden administration after an Israeli airstrike hit his family uh, home in Gaza. We're back in a moment. Okay. Dave Chappelle's bid on Palestine Israel. Pretty funny, not gonna lie. Wait, this is what he said? Bro, this is old. I don't think this is the new thing that he was saying. Anne, gel de salatan. You see that right wingers don't know what to do with Chappelle now that he says something in support of Palestine. Oh yeah, this is uh, this was reported by the Wall Street Journal as well. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Dave Chappelle is Muslim. I don't know if you know that. Not that it fucking matters in this situation, but I would suspect that he has uh, at least somewhat of a different perspective than like the the uh, regular American Christian on the matter. He might feel a sense of closeness. Um, so you guys did not know that. Yes. So, uh, uh, this is uh, an assessment of what happened. This is like uh, someone describing what happened. Did you see this? An interview, uh, the, an interview with the Israeli civil defense worker, Hamas terrorist, and leaked interrogation video. The commander told us to stomp in their heads, behead them, do whatever you want with them, chop off their legs. Hamas is ISIS. What? I have not seen that, but... I have seen some interrogation videos where, like, they, uh, I know for a fact that one of the interrogation videos that they released early on was, like, a random dude who fucking ran in, uh, through the, through the fence and was not Hamas at all, but they claimed that he was Hamas. Some dude who was, like, 17, uh, whose family was, like, uh, asking, uh, where he was. But that is way, way, way. That was like fucking two weeks ago. Okay. Something is changing in America. I saw Dave Chappelle last night at the Boston TD Garden. It was sold out, so I would say 22,000 people there. Three-fourths of the show, he said he wanted to address what's going on in Palestine and Israel. He specifically said Palestine and said it before Israel. He said what happened on October 7th wasn't right. But also, what's going on isn't right and not just. You can't kill innocent civilians like that, and the whole world sits silently and watches. Then someone shouted at him from the crowd, shut the fuck up, Dave. He then went nuts and yelled back, no, you shut the fuck up. You don't take the tens of billions of my country to go kill innocent women and children and come tell me to shut the fuck up. 
He said, don't come begging me for money from my country and then go drop bombs on children and cut off innocent people, uh, water ele and electricity. You have the audacity to pay to come see me and then tell me to shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. The crowd started clapping and cheering for him and saying, yes, Dave, and chance of free Palestine. And he said, you're damn right, free Palestine. He went on a 15-minute rant about being a Muslim and that the Israelis are projecting what's wrong with them on Muslims, and the crowd kept on cheering. It was surreal. The crowd is a typical Boston demographic, 80% white, 5% black, the rest Latin and others. He yelled, what are you going to do? Cancel me. Go ahead and cancel me. You can't cancel all of us. So um, this, is, uh, this is the only like inside account from this situation. And you can go, oh, well, what the fuck? This is just a like, regular ass like Facebook post. How do we know it's real? Well, Wall Street Journal covered it and, and at first and numerous other people covered it as well that like uh, a commotion occurred at the Dave Chappelle show um, uh, on, on the, the uh, boundaries of uh, and, and it triggered a walkout is what the, is the way that they're uh, referencing war, it. During a recent show at the TD Garden, people who attended Thursday night show tell the Wall Street Journal Chappelle, who is Muslim, referred to what is happening in Gaza as war crimes and said students should not lose their job offers for supporting Palestinians. Some in the crowd cheered his comments while others got up and left. WBZ and CB Oh, you know, the work week's a bit okay. So, yeah, during the show, TD Garden Tuesday, uh, Thursday night, uh, Chappelle criticized Israeli actions on Gaza, calling them war crimes. That's according to the Wall Street Journal, which spoke with several audience members. They said Chappelle also condemned the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel and the U.S. aid in the U.S. for aiding Israel. Reaction to his comments about Israel was reportedly mixed. While some audience members cheered on Chappelle's opinions on the war, others heckled and challenged the comedian, while others walked out of the arena entirely. So, yeah. Israel also says Hamas is holding up more than 200 hostages. Two American hostages with Massachusetts ties were released last week. They're offering money to people who are pro-Palestine to keep silent or go against Palestine. Is this true? What? I don't fucking know. Nobody asked me. Damn, bro. I'll take that shit. You know what I mean? I'll be so quiet. No, I'm just kidding. I'll fucking... I'll, I'll take that shit, dude. I'll take it, brother. Take it and run with it. Take the money, but don't shut up. Yeah, I'll be fucking criticizing Hamas every day. You'll be hearing from me. You're not pro-Palestine. True. Fucking got him. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's, uh, I mean, this is a, this is interesting because like, uh, this is an old, uh, Dave Chappelle bit about Israel, I guess not a new one, but, um, yeah, I mean, he, when he fucking gets his mind on something, when he like hyper focuses on something and people start telling him, uh, that he's wrong, uh, he will double down, triple down. He just literally will never stop. So we'll see. But he also does care about his bag. I know there's two conflicting forces internally inside of Dave Chappelle's mind. The, the, inside of him are two wolves. Both of them are gay, you know? The one wolf is, is saying, uh, you know, they, they, they're telling you to shut the fuck up, which means you can't shut the fuck up. The other wolf is saying, I like making money. You can shit on trans people, and you'll still get a $20 million contract. But if you continue, if you continue to fucking criticize Israel, you know, it's a little bit different. It is. It's a little bit different than shitting on trans people. It's just, we're talking about even without, even without any other uh, uh, influential people uh, getting mad at him, 56% of the population believes that uh, Israelis are in the right uh, as opposed to 9%. Uh, that believes Palestinians are in the right. So,
it is it is certainly more socially acceptable to shit on trans people than it is to shit on uh, Israel, I will say. Depending on what circles we're talking about. But overall, it's like, there is, even if you look at, even if you look at the numbers... Uh, even if you look at the popularity of certain concepts, like it's it's not very popular uh, in the eyes of the broader population. I mean, I feel like if you ask, um, maybe not the ADL in general, but if you if you look at like right wing commentators who are uh, ultra Zionists, right? And, and even, like, liberal commentators who are ultra-Zionists, it's wild that they refuse to recognize the indecency of fascist rhetoric, the, the immorality and the danger that fascist rhetoric presents to Jews, to Arabs, to Palestinians, to Muslims, to everyone who is not white. These are people who consistently, like Barry Weiss is a great example, consistently talks about free speech on college campuses whenever it's a fucking Nazi, okay, but then literally loses her mind at Palestinian activists. It is so unserious, dude. It's so fucking insane. It is so obvious what you're doing. You just don't care. You don't care. Like, I mean, the lady who's... Uh, the lady who's currently trying to uh, get money to donate to the IDF once famously wrote an article at fucking, I think it was Tablet or Forward, one of the other, one or the other, uh, about how we must befriend Nazis. Like, she wrote an article talking about how, like, we got to start befriending Nazis. It was on the Forward. There it is. We need to start befriending neo-Nazis, she wrote. Bethany Mandel. No, it's not a fucking sat satirical piece. It's a very real one. I'm trying to explain to you guys, like... Like, Bethany Mandel, if you were to ask her, I think she thinks Palestinian activists on college campus present a far greater threat to her existence than fucking neo-Nazis do for some real reason. For some valid reason in her mind. She said the only reason not the new Gaza was the clouds would blow into Israel, which is ironic because I've said that as well. When, when you guys asked me like, oh, wouldn't they nuke Gaza? I told you no, because the fallout would actually harm uh, Israelis uh, a lot as well. So they would not do that. Hey, we got a dono match by Hunt and Farm. Up to $5,000. I covered this earlier. During the meeting, Defense Minister Yaov Galant was pressed on why the government agreed to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza from Egypt before the hostages have been returned. And the Americans insisted we are not in a place, the Americans insisted we are not in a place where we can refuse them. We rely on them for planes and military equipment. What are we supposed to do? Tell them no? All of these people that have written articles extensively on fucking uh, uh, wokeness in college campuses are right now saying that, like, if you are literally a Palestinian activist, you are scarier and worse than a Nazi. You are, like, the worst Nazi on the fucking planet. You know what I mean? They're just, like, deeply unserious people. They've defended actual fucking literal Nazis who present a far greater threat to to uh, Jewish people in America than Palestinians do. It's, it's not even a question. Then Muslims across the board do. The greatest threat to a Muslim living in the Western world, in America especially, is not 
a Jewish person. It is a fucking neo-Nazi, a white supremacist. And the same goes for Jews in America. The greatest threat to Jews in America are not Muslim Americans, but instead neo-Nazis and white supremacists. The dude that walked into a fucking synagogue in Pittsburgh was a Trump supporter who thought Trump was too favorable to Israel, but like he wanted to go fucking beyond. He was like, I, I, I liked Trump's original takes, but I wanted to go even harder. What, what, what was his main purpose? He said that Jews are trying to destroy the foundation of Western supremacist civilization by allowing uh, uh, unfettered immigration to occur into the United States of America. That is directly conservative rhetoric. The, the great replacement narrative is something that Tucker Carlson has talked about regularly. That was the singular worst anti-Semitic incident in the United States history in, in uh, decades. He was repeating, literally, Nazi conspiracies that we have repackaged in contemporary conservative politics. They do not say it's uh, Judeo-Bolshevism anymore. They do not say it's uh, 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 cultural Bolshevism anymore. They simply say it's cultural Marxism. But the idea is the same. The notion that like Jewish uh, intelligentsia and Jewish academics and, and, and Jews in media and in positions of power are actually uh, destroying, are, are actually fucking destroying uh, the Western civilization by uh, doing moral degeneracy and, and, you know, doing feminism and also allowing, uh, uh, allowing unfettered access uh, to the United States of America by, by helping facilitate uh, immigration into the country. How is that tied to Judaism? It's not. It's a lie. It is an anti-Semitic lie. And it's also a very commonly told lie that Nazis also said. That is what I'm explaining. It's so funny because, like, uh, this is something that I've talked about so much, so frequently. Like, so, so, so much. This is something that I have covered for 10 fucking years, okay? Which is why it's, like, ridiculous when I uh, hear from uh, dumb motherfuckers who try to claim that I'm anti-Semitic and, like, pro-Hamas and shit. Dumb motherfuckers who were, like, literal out and about Nazis not that long ago who, like, I guess became neoliberals now. You're all over the place. You get told by your overlords to take it easy on Israel. Um, Yeah, dude, I have overlords. Says impolite jerk. I wonder who impolite jerk follows. I want to take a look. Fucking dumbass chatter. My overlords, overlords, uh, fucking prick. Little Nazi shithead. Uh, first of all, I'm not taking it easy on Israel by any means necessary, okay? I have not stopped criticizing Israel, and I will never stop criticizing Israel until... Israel no longer maintains an apartheid state. But I've also never engaged in anti-Semitism and will loudly condemn it way better than 99% of motherfuckers you think are in support of Israel unconditionally and will engage in anti-Semitic nonsense on a regular basis. I've been in this game for a lot longer than you have. Motherfuckers who hate me are not Jewish people in general. Maybe some Zionists might hate me now, but the reality is that the, the, the dudes who hate me the most are Nazis. Neo-Nazis, those who uh, Barry Weiss and others will protect on campuses, uh, I will not. Anyway. 
Palestinian media is reporting a major power outage at the Indonesian hospital in Gaza due to the lack of necessary fuel uh, due to the severe Israeli siege. Oh, Jesus Christ. Could Twitch take down your channel using the anti-Semitism excuse since we know there are plenty of Jewish organizations who got removed for that excuse? No. That would be ridiculous. That would be completely unacceptable. And no, I don't think Twitch would do that. That would be unimaginable. Because it would be a lie. It would be a complete fucking lie. Ironic, because Twitch has banned me in the past. Literally, Twitch banned me in the past for shitting on Kanye West and Gavin Newsom, two neo-Nazis having a conversation spreading anti-Semitic conspiracies, and Twitch fucking banned me for that because the supposed free speech defenders over on the Nazi side said they hit me with a fucking uh, copyright uh, action. Or Gavin Newsom, sorry. Uh, Gavin McGinnis, not Gavin Newsom. I said Gavin Newsom. I meant Gavin McGinnis and Kanye West. Fuck. Um, yeah, I got Gavin Newsom on the mind. All right, let's, uh, let's continue. Delayed. Interesting. That's very interesting. Holly Williams, thank you very much. Bro, spreading misinfo like crazy, lol. Spreading misinfo like crazy. What? You think I didn't actually get fucking banned by Gavin McGinnis's uh, free speech group? I did. They copy struck me for watching their fucking interview and, and criticizing the anti-Semitic garbage that they were fucking presenting. And guys, as I send it back to you in New York, it's just remarkable how many places you can put your sympathy right now. You've got the hostages, the more than 200 families still suffering. You've got the Americans stuck in Gaza. You've got the Israelis suffering bombardments. They've had losses. And then you've got, of course, the devastation inside Gaza. There's just so much. Wow, that's crazy, man. Uh, I like that he, he it's an afterthought for him. And even then he can't say the Palestinians suffering in Gaza. That's crazy. Bro can't even fucking mention it. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. I wonder where that devastation is coming from. Much heartache right now. It, it boggles the mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it boggles the mind. Uh, no one can stop another, it. Unlike the top of the hour ad break, which can be stopped with a three, uh, with a five dollar a month subscription, or a free one in the form of Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub. It's a three minute ad break now. Here, I'll look at the Bassem Yusuf uh, tweet. Jesus Christ, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Hey, fucking Ben Shapiro, are you happy with how many sons of bitches killed so far? Is that enough for you? What's today's exchange rate for human lives? I remember how annoyed you were with I am Cardi B's wet ass pussy telling your viewers that medically speaking, the only way a pussy can get wet is if it had an infection. So apparently, Ben, you've never made a woman wet. And maybe just maybe you have a weird kink that makes you get off on the side of dead civilians. So I hope that you can come soon so Israel can take notice and stop bombing Gaza at Pornhub. Please add genocide category exclusively for Ben Shapiro. Hashtag Ben Shapiro is a bitch. Make it viral. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit much. I got it. You guys love it. Okay, it's fine. I think, like, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit unserious. Breaking, the Biden administration recently sent a Marine three-star general and several other U.S. military officers to Israel to help advise the Israeli military's leadership on its ground operation in Gaza, U.S. and Israeli officials say Axios. What is this? Israelis are going ballistic over this photo of the Israeli elderly woman being freed by Hamas shaking his hand.
Oh, God. I know there's a video clip. We watched it. We watched it. Old ladies are old ladies, okay? Of course. They're going to do old lady shit. To her, it doesn't matter. She probably looks at him and goes like, this is my fucking grandson's age, this dude. Also, you have to remember, these are like fucking uh, old kibbutz grandmas who, uh, by the accounts of their family members, literally uh, participated in like transferring uh, uh, Palestinians trapped in Gaza to Israeli hospitals from time to time. So, you know, they're, they, they already see the humanity of Palestinians. They've been ready to go, ready to go, expecting to get that green light to actually go, and then... There's been delay after delay, uh, again, saying that there would be an assault in the air, ground, and sea, and it will come soon. Do your work. Get ready. We will need you. And, of course, uh, this comes as Israel today stepped up their assault on Gaza. More than 300 strikes over last night. Strikes continue now. They say they've killed the Hamas commander of, of the rocket launching unit, as well as five Hamas aerial array commanders, they call them. They say some of those were directly involved in the attacks of October 7th. They say they've killed five of those Hamas-level commanders since this war began 17 days ago, Wolf. Aaron Burnett reporting for us, and of course we'll get a lot more reporting from Aaron later tonight on Outfront. That starts right at the top of the next hour. This new hostage release comes as sources tell CNN the U.S. has been urging Israel to delay a potential ground uh, invasion of Gaza, in part to allow more time for efforts to free Americans and other captives. CNN's Alex Marquardt is uh, looking into this part of the story for us, and you've done some significant reporting, Alex. How does this hostage release influence the administration's thinking right now? Well, it certainly reinforces their thinking and encourages the fact that they have been pushing for this delay and the thinking that more time before Israel's ground invasion into Gaza could allow uh, for not just more hostages to come out, but more aid to go in, which is what we've seen over, seen over the course of the past few days. And Wolf, uh, that attitude by the administration is being reinforced. We're told uh, by a U.S. official to our colleague M.J. Lee uh, that the Israeli military has told the Biden administration that there are still American hostages who are alive. Uh, among those 200 plus hostages still in Gaza. Um, so that is certainly a, a, an encouragement uh, for the Biden administration. Uh, meanwhile, Wolf, we have been told that as a result of this hope that more hostages uh, can get uh, can get released, uh, that there that the U.S. has been encouraging Israel uh, to not go in. Israel, however, uh, says that they are uh, ready to go uh, and they are uh, Excuse me. They are. Uh, they are. Uh, the U.S. doesn't want to be seen as uh, being told, be, as telling Israel uh, what to do. So there are big questions now about what what happens next. Why? Uh, Hamas is certainly being pressed. Uh, to release bigger groups of hostages. But even if Israel delays, they are certainly not going to wait forever. Uh, so this invasion could be coming very soon, Wolf. What happens when these hostages are released, uh, Alex? And what sort of information potentially could they provide? Well, they could provide all kinds of intelligence about the conditions that they were uh, living under in, in Gaza. So we understand that the Hanans, uh, Judith and, and Natalie Hanan, uh, who were released on Friday, uh, that they are still in Israel and that they will be speaking with uh, U.S. officials who will be asking them all kinds of questions about their time in custody, uh, their, their treatment, uh, where they were. Uh, we can imagine that the Israeli officials will be asking them the same things uh, as, as well as to these two ladies who have, have these two women who have just been released today that is certainly going to inform uh, what Israel knows uh, about uh, how Hamas is keeping these hostages. And of course, as they prepare for this ground invasion, that intelligence could prove uh, to be absolutely critical because we understand that these hostages are spread out all across the Gaza Strip, uh, they're being kept underground in tunnels and in bunkers. And certainly the Israelis and the Americans want to know uh, as much as they can before this ground invasion is launched. Well, Good point, uh, Alex Marquardt. Thank you very much. Uh, now to the humani humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Some more aid trucks made it through the Rafah border crossing from Egypt into Gaza today, even as Israel has been ramping up its air war against Hamas. CNN's Clarissa Ward is joining us live from Cairo right now. Clarissa, people in Gaza are waiting for aid to trickle in as bombs fall and conditions grow more dire. Update our viewers. 
That's right, Wolf. I mean, the situation was critical. Now the word you use is exactly apt. It is dire. Today we saw another convoy of just over 30 trucks going in. That brings the total. Bro, when you got the CNN, when you got these fucking clown asses at CNN saying the situation is dire and showing footage of like entire fucking city blocks leveled, you know it's 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 out of control. Been seven thousand, more like, than seven thousand trucks. Of we knew we knew that it had to get to a. We knew that it had to get to a point where two thousand uh, children have been ruthlessly slaughtered by Israel for them to even say, yeah, it's kind of bad. Three hundred strikes yesterday. Uh, some Hamas commanders were killed in those strikes, but also hundreds of civilians, Wolf, and the yeah, forty-two percent of all housing units in Gaza are damaged or destroyed, according to the UN OCHA the flash the update as of yesterday. Just to give a sense of how the how high the physical destruction has been, the lack of infrastructure is going to be Israel more deadly. Cut off the electricity in Gaza. Therefore, all these hospitals are reliant on generators. And yeah, by the way, this has been an ongoing crisis for the past two weeks. Where the fuck were you guys? Into Gaza for you don't need to be a fucking, you don't need to be Nostradamus to know that this was going to be inf these insane. All these diplomatic talks to try to facilitate the continued flow of humanitarian aid. Fuel is the tough one. The Israelis are concerned that Hamas will end up taking the fuel and using it. They don't want to see that happen. But without fuel, it's not just even about generators, it's about desalination. We spoke to a doctor who talked about people drinking brackish water at the moment. That's leading to a huge uptick in preeclampsia in pregnant women in Gaza. And so you're having all kinds of knock-on effects and still no sign, really, that there is going to be a continuous, sustained humanitarian corridor and that, crucially, few will be able to get into Gaza anytime soon, Wolf. Clarissa, I know you had a chance to speak to a doctor at the largest hospital in Gaza City about how desperate the situation is there on the ground. Tell us about that. That's right, Wolf. So we spoke to Dr. Marwan Abusada. He is the chief surgeon at the El Shifa Hospital. That's in northern Gaza. They have been told repeatedly to evacuate. He told us that they have 5,000 patients at the moment, 700 beds and 5,000 patients. They also have thousands of displaced people living in and around the hospital premises. He says that to evacuate is simply not an option for these people. Many of them are severely wounded or they can't move. And he talked again about the crucial importance of Here. getting that fuel. He said there are just two. Here. The electricity at the Indonesian hospital in North Gaza is completely cut off. Hundreds of patients, including the trauma sections, could be at risk of immediate harm. Further, thousands are seeking shelter at the hospital. That's what's going on right now. Do I mean, what can you do? I think the international community will be part of the process of killing of our people. If they don't act on Israel to allow it to get this fuel into enter Gaza, what to do for the people who are in the ICU and mechanical ventilator? What about the neonatal, neonates, the small babies? We have more than 130 in our neonatal ICU units. What to do with them? They will, okay, we, it is, I think we are allowing them to die in peace. This is the issue if we don't have a fuel to run our generators in the hospital. So you heard that there, Wolf. He says that he has more than 130 babies in the neonatal unit. They are all dependent. I'm going to be honest. I think part of the reason why they're covering this now is because uh, even they're like, all right, Israel's gone too fucking far. They got the go ahead. Like, remember, the State Department released internal memos saying no mention of ceasefire, no mention of de-escalation, literally as Israel was conducting this, this, this uh, bombing campaign. Okay, it's gotten to a point where even fucking CNN has to be like, yeah, it's fucked up. But oh, here's the, here's the another IDF Thanks guy. Thanks so much oh, for joining us. Go. First, let me get to uh, this this set very sensitive first. Please issue. explain to us why it's totally justifiable to do what you're doing, oh, these sir. These two Israeli hostages who were released today by Hamas. Hi, thank you for having me again. Um, the condition is that they are now being examined by doctors, by Israeli doctors. I still do not know the exact condition. I have heard unconfirmed reports about the medical state of one of them, but still unconfirmed and unofficial. And as soon as we will have more information about the state of these two elderly Israeli women that were taken uh, and now released, we will update. Yeah, Yocheved Lifshitz, uh, 85 years old, and Nurit Cooper, 79 years old. 
Uh, there you see pictures of them. CNN has learned, Lieutenant Colonel, that U.S. officials are urging Israel to delay its ground invasion of Gaza to try to release more hostages and facilitate more aid to come into a southern Gaza from Egypt. How much is Israel weighing that advice based on what you know? I will answer that, Wolf. I just want to say something about the story that was aired before from Cairo. You know, there is fuel in Gaza. Hamas has fuel. Hamas has quite a lot of fuel, about a thousand liters if not more than that. Um, what? And they can decide where to use that fuel. And I find it strikingly absent from the discussion, from many discussions, what is Hamas doing with the resources that it has? It's only about Israel and Egypt and UN and international. I love that it's a thousand liters. Like, what the fuck? That's not a lot of Why fuel to begin with. Like, opposed to Hamas. Why don't you use some of the fuel that you have stockpiled and hoarded in advance. Of the this. fuck's he saying? Like, you're supposed to keep a hospital generator running? Dog, you cut off their power. What are you saying? This is so... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He knows Yanks don't know how much that is. Like, a thousand is liters is... Exactly. And they are using these poor civilians, which are not our enemy and not our target. They yeah, but we're still killing them. Cynically just in order to milk every drop of international pity and legitimacy for their horrific activities. Uh, and they're using their own civilians to do it. Hamas has fuel, and Hamas should use the fuel not to fight against Israel, but really to care about the civilians that they are responsible for. Important point indeed. Uh, let's get back to this other very sensitive issue. As you know, multiple sources, multiple sources have told CNN that uh, U.S. officials have asked Israel to delay its ground invasion, especially after they were told more American hostages are alive. No U.S. official is denying our reporting. Is Israel considering delaying its ground operation of Gaza? So what I can say is that the level of the coordination is intimate, uh, minute by minute. We share intelligence, we share assessments, we share the location and position of our troops, the capabilities, assessments of the enemy. And we look at this war that has been forced upon us, both through a local lens and then, of course, a regional and international lens. Uh, I am not concerned by a day or two of uh, delaying operations because we use that in order to prepare ourselves even better. As we speak now, the ground forces are ready and prepared, and once they will be ordered by the cabinet to do so, they will launch ahead and bring the fight to Hamas and start hunting Hamas in the tunnels. Are you at all concerned, Lieutenant Colonel, that uh, as uh, the ho as more hostages are being released and the dis situation in Gaza deteriorates, the public image of Israel could deteriorate if it goes into Gaza with a large number of troops on the ground? I am concerned by the fact that many people are people, organizations, officials, etc., for somehow uh, maybe have a short, short-term memory and forget how this started. Uh, on the first day of the war, uh, a few hours after the massacre of October 7th became apparent, I tweeted before I even got back into uniform, remember how this started. And I say that again today. Remember, I like that Wolf is worried about the major issues, you know, PR for it didn't Israel. It started with us butchering civilians. It started with them doing that. And yeah. yes, there is a risk of the new cycle being hijacked by images out. The rule of thumb still continues. Anytime you hear anything from an IDF official, if you flip the words Israeli and Palestinian, uh, you will arrive at the truth. Okay. It's always, it's always the same. Like literally crazy reason do not want to see reality as we see it from here will be reminded of projection. how they started and what we are trying to do we are not fighting the civilians we are not targeting them well you're uh, doing a bad job of Hamas not targeting them then. them that we are going to defeat one hospital one hospital in gaza now says they're consuming nine thousand liters a day so clearly more fuel is desperately needed uh, I just wanted to point that out. Do you want to react to that, Lieutenant Colonel? I, I agree that more fuel is needed. 
Uh, first and foremost, they, everybody in the north should evacuate. That's the first order, and it should have been done long ago. And there's been ample time, more than a week, a week and three days since we issued the first warning urging civilians to go south. So people who care about it should have facilitated it with ambulances and whatever equipment available and had should have. <laughs> they literally blew up an ambulance again the other day, like yes, two days ago. Yes, reprioritize your assets, Hamas. You have fuel, give, give it to the civilians and don't hoard it in order to run your uh, HQs underground and facilitate rocket launch to Israel and uh, care for the families only of uh, select Hamas officials. Provide for the Palestinians in Gaza. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus, thanks so, so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Just, just ahead, another live report from the region on this new hostage release as fears of a wider Middle East war are escalating. And up next, I'll ask the key White House official, John, about the Hamas strategy on hostage. It's so odd that they're like, the. it's, it's especially odd to have this conversation still at this point without... Uh, uh, the international community coming in to make uh, a, a third-party assessment of what happened in the Al Ahly hospital bombing, considering that like uh, they bombed a church courtyard uh, the day after, and uh, I believe last night bombed a a ambulance, as they have before as well. More than 300 uh, specific instances, according to the World Health Organization, of health uh, healthcare attacks have occurred. I didn't add it. Okay, so. No, the church bombed itself. I guess like the the rhetoric is that uh, they're all misfires. Like, is that what it is? Like, all ma any matter of violence that has taken place on uh, on Gaza is all uh, PIJ uh, rocket misfires. Is that what the what the prevailing narrative will be? I, I don't know. I I genuinely don't know what the what the goal is here, right? Like, uh, who? Sh I mean, the guy had the audacity to fucking go on CNN and literally make it seem as though Hamas is the one who's, like, shutting off the electricity. You know what I mean? It, like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, you did that. You did that. He's like, well, Hamas should use their own remaining 1,000 liters of fuel, which is, like, by the way, a laughable amount of fuel, for the record. Um, like, we don't even know if that's true or not, but it's also ridiculous. Like... You're you're the one who shut off their fuel. But the worst part is they don't even fucking Western media doesn't even like look at that and go, "What are you saying?" Like any normal human being, I feel like would look at a situation like this and go, "Hey, are you fucking joking? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're saying like, "Oh, well, we can't let fuel in there. Sorry. Sucks to suck." There's 2.2 million people there, man. What the fuck are you saying? Hospitals have now officially gone dark. I love how we're supposed to use baby gloves when talking about Israel, but also celebrate six fucking trucks only of humanitarian aid going into a war zone. Who could, who could ever be preventing aid? Yeah, exactly. Another sign of escalation in the Middle East... Israeli defense forces have now begun limited ground raids into Gaza. Not a full-blown invasion just yet, but still notable. In the last 24 hours as well, I the Israeli defense back. forces say they've hit at least 320 targets inside the Strip, including a tunnel they say has been used by Hamas fighters to strike Israel. And amid all of this, imagine what I'm about to tell you. At least 400 Americans trapped inside Gaza trying to leave, but with the border shut down indefinitely, they cannot. We spoke with one American woman who came with her family, five kids, for a short visit with relatives, only to get stuck in what has become a war zone. As Israel hammers Gaza from the air, Emily Rauschenberger's family is on the ground. It's a bit of Russian roulette going to sleep uh, at night, um, not knowing really when the next one's going to hit. She and her Palestinian-born husband, Mohammed, brought their five kids, ages four through 14, on what they thought would be a short trip to Gaza. Why bring your kids there in the first place? Because of family. They have many uncles and aunts and grandparents here, a grandmother. 
still alive here, and if we didn't come, they would never know them. But the visit with their sito, their grandmother, came just as war broke out all around them. What have you told the kids about what's happening? I imagine they're scared. They're very scared. They just have lots of questions that are hard to answer. Uh, like when can we leave or why is, you know, why is all the bombardment happening um, to everybody? They're now sheltering in an apartment building in South Gaza after evacuating from another family home. The kids. What was CNN say if it was Ukraine? We know what they would say. We've, we've covered it. There's no, I'm telling you, there's, there, it, it's so flagrantly obvious, dude. This is like, listen. There are UN numbers of how many children have been fucking murdered by uh, the Russian invasion in the hands of, of Russian invaders, okay? The number, of, the number of children murdered so far by Israel in Gaza, the number of Palestinian children that have murdered is like four times that number, I think. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's crazy. And this is over, this is over the course of many This is over the course of a year plus versus... Like, two weeks. Two fucking weeks. So it's only bad when Americans are stuck in Gaza and it doesn't matter how many humans have been killed so far? Dude, Helal Kamal, I don't think you understand. The American government doesn't even give a fuck about American citizens stuck in Gaza. Okay? Like, that's the... Stuff like this is always important to, to recognize the humanity of the people that are under brutal occupation, right? That's why the Western media does it. That's why they talk to, like, American Palestinians. But you have to remember, what is this? This is the Russian airstrikes have killed 262 Ukrainian civilians over a seven-month period this year. According to the UK ambassador to the UN, Israeli airstrikes have already killed nearly 20 times that number of Gazans in just two weeks. 120th, just with 120th the population of Ukraine. We are shock, we're in shock and mourning. It is now confirmed that 29 of our colleagues in Gaza have been killed since October 7th. Half of these colleagues were UNRWA teachers. As an agency, we are devastated. We are grieving with each other and with the families. Bro, they're fucking slaughtering UN people, okay? That's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. What is this? This is what she said. Yeah, we, we, uh, I covered this before. I covered this when it first came out. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, the, the people who are counter demonstrating, counter protesting, like pro Palestinian at pro-Palestinian protests as well and like what they've been doing so far. But here, let's hear what John Biden, Kirby, Biden said he wanted to do a ceasefire and then corrected update. himself. Let's hear what John and Kirby said. We'll go back to Jerusalem. For Fuck, a live we missed update. it. We missed it. Biden literally said there should be a ceasefire and then had to correct himself. I mean, God forbid, God forbid he had a moment of fucking moral clarity due to his brain melting, you know? Idea was going insane on Twitter. What the fuck? This would have been a photo of a lifeless pregnant woman next to her beheaded unborn baby cut out of her belly by Hamas terrorists, but due to this platform's guidelines, we can't show you that. Yeah, this is... um. This is something that I have heard from the IDF, which they've shown zero evidence for. And the only evidence that I remember of this is the Shabra and, uh, uh, the Sabra and Shatila massacre that was done uh, uh, under uh, IDF watch where that actually did happen. 
So that's the only time where I've ever heard of this uh, being uh, uh, documented in Lebanon against Palestinians. Yeah, I've also seen a lot of like Mexican cartel videos being shared uh and and with claims that it's like Hamas in Israel. But um you know that's besides the point. I want to comment on this narrative. Calculated as an untenable term to use panicking, used for panic and IDF units responded to an invasion and crucially unable to beat Hamas for several days inside of Israel. IDF did kill Israelis in crossfire because they were getting killed themselves. Seven Israeli Navy SEALs died and 10 were seriously injured in the first 48 hours of fighting. That's why they began firing anti-tank missiles in the houses where Hamas had hostages, though Hamas had uh, kept most kibbutz hostages in a secure basement bomb shelter rooms. Few civilians died that way. Most civilian deaths after IDF arrived took place in the crossfire when Hamas... Uh, or hostages decided to leave secured rooms after hours of IDF Hamas fighting outside. Intifada themselves posted the interview with a rave lady taken to a kibbutz, said the Hamas guy took her outside as a human shield. That said, Israel has caused terrorist attacks to go worse than they initially should have by intervening halfway through to make sure non-Israelis were main victims of the attacks. I mentioned this uh, in the thread. On top of that, in my opinion, Israel's engaged in false flag operations through Abu Nadal, who worked for anyone who paid him uh, and surely killed more Palestinians than Israelis. Here is an example of an attack nominally against Israel, but time to affect as few Israelis as possible. Um, however, there's a difference, in my opinion, between engaging in malicious counterterrorism to make international people feel pain of terrorism against Israelis and consciously trying to murder Israelis in Israel. No one goes to IDF to murder Israelis. You can just be a criminal for that. I am, again, in the uncomfortable situation where I have to say Intifada does actually do more investigative work than other outlets and reports do more facts that are inconvenient to mainstream narrative, yet their analysis is a clear agenda. Still worth reading, but keep that in mind. Yeah, um, the I waited for another... Um, I waited for another uh, outlet to cover it, but uh, the Intifada's reporting uh, clearly just uh, took a direct rip from the, the Israeli radio broadcast, um, which is now taken now been taken off the air. I love that there are still people discussing the 1,000 liter fuel uh, situation. Fighting boredom with a chess set. The grown ups figuring out how to keep them fed with dwindling resources. Water started to run out the, on the Wednesday after the conflict started. Um, from then, you have to go out uh, with water tubs and find sources of uh, drinking water. And the bread lines are very long. You have to stand a few hours or go to another locality to. Um, to wait in those lines to, to find bread, which is really a staple uh, food here. You are remarkably steady and composed. Are there moments where you are just at your limit? Certainly. You just um, try to, to stay positive. You know that this, this can't last forever and that there has to be a brighter day coming. But so far, leaving is not an option. <laughs> Though humanitarian aid has begun moving in, the borders with Israel and Egypt are still closed to those like Emily and her family. What's it like for you to know that Americans here in Israel are being provided charters by the U.S. State Department to get them out of potential harm's way here in Israel, and yet there you are stuck in Gaza? It's ironic, I suppose. There's just not enough political will for some reason to push for more assistance for, uh, for Americans in Gaza. If we're concerned about American life, it should be all American lives. There's really no good reason that we shouldn't be um, pressuring more to have this happen. You must have anger in all of this. You must have frustration. Where do you direct it? That's a tough question, but I, I think I would say, you know, it's not, it's not a simple answer. It's, you know, it's successive failures 
of many political leaders. And I hold the hope that you know, we're learning lessons and, and a new generation and new, new thinking uh, can emerge out of this. Boy, yeah, I mean, I think that it is uh, deeply immoral uh, and probably the grossest thing that you could do to not uh, rein in uh, genocide occurring with your weapons uh, and with your go-ahead and with your knowledge and with your intel. And I am shocked that uh, we just uh, make it seem as though we have no power simply to stop Israel from committing this uh, genocidal act. Uh, we do. We absolutely do. It is abhorrent that we have not uh, done that so far. So much so that even Western media has uh, been able to cover with some level of accuracy how devastating the conditions are on the ground at this point. It's taken them two weeks to get here. Whereas it started off this way, you know. Like just a little bit of genocide. Come on. Israel can have a little bit of ethnic cleansing as a treat. It's not exactly a good counter. Miguel, I have to say, you hear her, and she is so calm. You have to think bravo to your poise. It's tough to get through a rainy day with kids back in the U.S., and here she is holding it down for them through what has become a full-blown war zone. I was so in awe of her courage, Tony. That stood out to me as well. And when you say you hope for a brighter day, right now between the anger and the... What the fuck? And Why another sign of... S Why is that video private now? This is material which was found on the body of one. Yeah, this is fucking ridiculous, dude. Uh, like, they keep waving around PDFs and shit being like, dude, uh, it, it, you know, the... Ay, ay, ay. ...of those sadistic villains. It's Al-Qaeda material, official Al-Qaeda material. We're dealing with ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Hamas. This is what we're dealing with. And in, those, in, and in this material, there were instructions how to produce chemical weapons. This is, it speaks about a, a, a That video showed that this guy just lied and Sky News privated it just now. Wait, really? The other video that was privated was the Sky News uh, guy like analyzing how fucking stupid this claim is. That's nice. Well, let me tell you, this is like, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is yellow cake, uranium. WMD claims, okay? It is it's laughable. It's so fucking stupid. Every single time they're like, this is what Hamas is doing. Yeah. Yeah, it was analysis that this is not a chemical weapons uh, manual, but it doesn't even matter. I don't even think that this was like something that... I, I don't think that there was a fucking Hamas guy with a FedEx Kinko's account that just went balls to the fucking wall with PDFs, okay? And he was just like, all right, brothers, we are doing this military attack, but also, inshallah, we are going to be reading while we do it. Like, what do you, what, what's going on? How much are they spending on fucking PDFs that they're printing out, dude? Take these laminated slides. No, they laminated it, but it's just so fucking stupid. It's so stupid. It's, it, it's blowing my fucking mind. The, the real situation is already gruesome enough. But of course, you know, leave it to the Israeli officials to just be like, no, 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 this situation was a massacre. It was ruthless. But also, look at this funny-ass fucking PDF we found for sure. Yeah, they, they were just like tactically deploying PDFs everywhere, okay? Pieces of paper. Left and right. In color, they have a, uh, you know, they, they brought their fucking colored printers. 
that show that they actually have a, a secret WMD inside of Gaza and that in the PDF I have in my hands, it says the only thing that Hamas fears more than anything else is to explode that WMD facility in the middle of Gaza that, uh, you know, entire babies are uh, on top of. See, there it is. There it is. It's on the PDF, dude. Yeah. Arson, and it speaks uh, uh, about uh, uh, various chemicals uh, that uh, come out and produce chemical weapons. Simple as that. The severing of medical supplies and electricity. Wait. Uh, if the Hamas terrorists had classified chemical weapons and structures, it is not the book Herzog Holds, which is a biography of Ramzi Yusuf, a terrorist responsible for the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. The book is Al-Qaeda propaganda, but not a weapons manual. I Look, this is how I feel about the, the, uh, the El -Ah the, in the aftermath of the El Ahli hospital bombing. What I found... What is this? Elant says, so Hamas likely has access to a device that can disperse hydrogen cyanide since Al-Qaeda made it in the late 90s and transferred it to them in the early 2000s, but there's no evidence they've ever made it into Gaza or brought the actual device or materials to make it into Israel or the fact that they literally have printed PDFs of like some fucking Al-Qaeda guy that they brought with them as like reading material while they're on the fucking paraglider. You know what I mean? It's, it's insane. It's like... It's laughably bad, which is, it is akin to the same problem that occurred immediately in the aftermath of the Al Ahli hospital bombing, where the IDF came out with information that was inherently contradictory to the other information that they were presenting. So I, I just don't understand why they cannot stay on a consistent message in this regard, especially when the actions, not at the El Ahli Hospital, but in general on October 7th, October 8th, and October 9th, as fighting continued inside of Israeli territory, is already gruesome enough. So why the fuck do you have to also try to beef it up by saying so many idiotic things that are so laughably false, like such a demonstrable failure to communicate clearly exactly the, the, the ruthless massacres that occurred? It's just so weird. I don't understand it. Is it like, can you not hold yourself back a little bit? What the fuck is going on? Yeah, they blew the budget on FedEx Kinko's, making sure that they had fucking double-sided, uh, 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 perfectly laminated, uh, uh, colored printed uh, PDFs about, uh, you know, doing evil and why I like it. An autobiography by the blind sheik. You know what I mean? It's like not even related. So that part is very frustrating, and it especially serves to muddy the fucking waters as well, just like in the aftermath of the, the El Ahli hospital bombing where they offered contradictory information and information like the intercepted phone calls that were very quickly dismissed by uh, many fucking journalists that at least understood Arabic. And I'm, it, it's very frustrating, to me at least, when um, there is already the fog of war, it's already deliberately very difficult to get accurate on-the-ground reporting from the Gazan side, and that is, you know, the Israeli design in this circumstance because they shut off their electricity and they get very patchy internet every now and then. But it's already, it, it, it's already horrifying in general. Like, the situation on the ground is already fucking bad. It was bad. Oh, and then we sit around and, and uh, I go back and forth on this too, because like, then we sit around and we go, well, okay, uh, here, here is what is misinformation in this regard, but that doesn't bring uh, the, the dead back to life. You know what I mean? That doesn't offer any kind of justice to the victims on either side. All it does is just drive the conversation away from the ongoing atrocities that Israel is committing in Gaza and drives it away from that to like uh, semantics conversations, whether or not this is real, whether or not this is fake. Are you anti-Semitic for saying that this is fake? You know what I mean? 
It's very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. And these news channels aren't even questioning and just agreeing with these uh, uh, claims of the Israelis. I mean, I've seen news channels do journalistic malpractice uh, over this past couple of weeks. And no, I don't mean on the fucking El Ahli hospital bombing story. I mean straight up journalistic malpractice in the sense that, like, they will write a quote from an Israeli official, realize it sounds fucking unhinged and bloodthirsty, delete the fucking quote in its entirety. Like, what are we doing? What the fuck's going on here? Like, what are you doing? Why are you running defense? Like, if you're going to be a stenographer, be a fucking stenographer. You can't even do that where you literally turn around and sometimes will we'll, uh, redact things that you realize are not being well received by the West, uh, by the Western audiences. Like, what are you doing? It's having an incredibly profound but it's not effect. Us on the, severing. That's but it's the, having a very profound effect on the ability for those hospitals to operate. But that's part of operate. the distorted information. It was Hamas missiles which broke. From 17 to 20. They decided to release them for against. Here, oh, this is the video that they deleted. I don't know why they privated this video. Isaac Herzog showed us documents uh, which were recovered from a USB stick on a dead Hamas fighter. Our data and forensics uh, correspondent Tom Cheshire has been looking into the claims. <clears throat> The Israeli president showed what he said was al-Qaeda material found by the Israel Defense Forces, the IDF, on the body of a dead fighter in Kibbutz Bieri. Now, in an interview with Sky News, he said these documents show that Israel was dealing with ISIS, al-Qaeda and Hamas, and that the material included instructions on how to produce chemical weapons. The front page of the document held by Mr Herzog shows the cover of a publication written in Arabic. The cover includes an ISIS flag at the top and the red text which reads a brigade of Islamic International Council for Jihad against Jews and Christians. The text at the bottom of the document claims it is a periodic publication for self-advancing knowledge for Mujahids, Islamic. Yeah, bro, he's like, I brought some reading material with me. Like, why? Think about it. Think about it. Not only is the document not saying what he claims it says, but also, why the fuck would anybody bring this? Bringing this along, what does that do? What, what, what is that for? It's like... <laughs> it's like the, uh, the, the... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, cops planting drugs, right? Except, in this circumstance, cops would be planting drugs on a dude who, like, already committed a murder, okay? You don't need to do that. He already did the fucking murder. Cops being like, yeah, we found that this guy had a fuck all cops uh, badge on his chest, and it's like, well, he already did the murder. What do you mean? You, you got the guy for doing the murder. Why are you planting something on him afterwards? You know what I mean? Like, I just don't get it. I don't understand. He's like, wow, this is the, this is the reading material we found on the guy fighters now the idf said in they're like they literally are like hey we found a document that says israel is the uh, the most moral army wow here we have a document that says israel is the most moral army and we love when israel murders our babies which we uh, uh purposely put in front of direct rocket fire ah well that's proof everybody knows now Soon they're going to claim that they found printed out pages of Mein Kampf and proved that they were not shaking their heads in disapproval while reading it, especially on a USB stick. Quick reading on a laptop mid paragraph. Yeah, like what, what was happening there? And that the source of the documents is a manual from the Al Qaeda terrorist organization dated 2003. And this is when the IDF first claimed on the 12th of October that they had found the cover of an Al Qaeda ISIS training and inspiration booklet on the body of a dead fighter in Israel. In a post on X, formerly known as Twitter. But this document is not a chemical weapons manual. It's actually <laughs> a biography of one of the 9-11 terrorists. Sky News has seen the 30-page document, and the diagram we see later isn't in here. 
Now, what wasn't clear is that the two diagrams held up by Mitzah Herzog actually come from a different source. One was labelled in Arabic, the second in English, presumably translated by the IDF. Now, this image isn't anything particularly new. In fact, it's widely available online. And we've seen evidence of it having been shared on extremist forums for more than a decade. The labels around it list the materials that can be used in bomb making. We've blurred and cropped most of the labels so that the instructions for making the device remain hidden. But we want to show you one of them, adhesive tape. This is a rudimentary homemade device, and that is exactly the point of it. Now, in trying to verify the image of the device, Sky News has spoken to Eamon Dean, a former member of Al-Qaeda who turned against the terrorist group to work for British intelligence. He himself created the design of this weapon, known as the Mubtakar. He told us, I can confirm that this is the exact diagram from a 2003 secret document written by an Al-Qaeda cell. I Damn, bro, they went to the source. Source, the guy who made the bomb. That's insane. I confirm this is the exact diagram from a 2003 secret document written by an Al-Qaeda cell. I was infiltrating in Arabia between 2002 and 2005. I was infiltrating in Arabia between 2002 and 2005. Now, other weapons experts told us that this diagram alone would not be enough to construct a chemical device, nor is there evidence that Hamas had the intention to make or use this kind of device. Dean said this design was leaked to Hamas, and then by 2009, it was released online for wider distribution, downloaded more than 900 times. Aren't cops doing that, though, trying to dig up dirt on someone's post dead the slander to their character? Yeah, but they do that when they kill someone, like, in a unjustifiable manner when they kill someone who's unarmed okay they don't do that when there's like dead to rights uh, a, a legal kill okay i don't think anybody here is going to be like wow it's really fucked up that the idf killed uh, armed hamas uh, militants like that's crazy i don't even think hamas would say that okay that is expected that is understood to have happened it's going to happen so th my point is like it would be like if, if cops did that to a guy who very openly was like a, a serial killer and then was like trying to serially murder cops or something. And then they turned around and were like, well, did you know that he had fucked vibes, dude? Did you know we found a, 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 a letter that he wrote where he was like, I hate cops and I want to kill all the fucking cops myself personally. <laughs> and here's a weapon that I will use to do so. Like after they fucking killed him. It's like, yeah, I mean, you don't need to do that at that point. before being taken down by security services. Now, the president's office says that the discovery of the documents indicates the connection between Hamas and al-Qaeda. But the documents he provided seem to have been widely available in extremist circles online, and so the degree of connection is open to question, pending further evidence. Yeah, I mean, they ripped them. <laughs> they just, they ripped that entire document to fucking shreds in this conversation. So, uh, good on them for at least doing that. Holy shit. So, Hamas Here is the UN Special Rapporteur on counterterrorism warns not to repeat the mistakes of 9-11. This is October the 7th attack has been described as Israel's 9-11. US yes, to be honest, they do that to help give white school shooters an excuse now. Thoughts on the New York Times press release regarding publishing the false hospital claims before they were substantiated? What? I don't, I don't know. Um, what John Kirby said on CNN regarding the ceasefire. Oh. Here, in an interview with CNN, uh, the National Security Council, um, the NSC spokesperson John Kirby tells Wolf Blitzer the White House is not talking about a ceasefire right now. In fact, we don't believe that this is the time for a ceasefire. Israel's right to defend themselves. <clears throat> nice. Uh, repeating calls to first release all hostages from Gaza. Yeah. Yeah, Israel has a right to defend itself against babies. I, I have to remind everybody, Israel has a right to defend itself against babies. Israel has a right to defend itself is literally the, the fucking calling card. It's like the, the, the civil war was fought over states' rights, okay? It's missing a key detail, okay? The key detail is Israel has a right to defend itself against children that we're bombing because <clears throat> that's what they're doing. It's like when you say the Civil War was fought on states' rights. States' rights to own slaves, okay? 
a key detail has been omitted in this circumstance. If you say civil war was fought on states' rights, Israel has a right to defend itself, is uh, omitting a, a key detail from the matter, which is, you know, against babies that are dying. Babies on incubators, inside of hospitals, hospital uh, staff in general. United Nations staff, teachers, journalists, you know. Here's, the, here's Biden's brain melting. Is the U.S. supporting the hostages for a ceasefire deal? Why did you? Because you guys helped me stay out of ceasefire. Not ceasefire, we should have no hostages released. We should have a ceasefire, not a ceasefire. We should have those hostages released and then we could talk. Nice, dude. Thanks. What should they do, in your opinion, the IDF, though it's hard to focus terrorists when they are hiding in civilian homes? Let's see what this guy, where this guy. What should they do about Hamas, though? What should they do about Hamas, though? It's still a terrorist group. Can you show who dismissed the records of the IDF? They want to show their true intentions. What should they do, in your opinion, the IDF? I've said this already. You have the capability of doing tactical strikes. You know where the hostages are. You claim that you have fucking nonstop surveillance on the Gaza Strip. Okay? Go in there. And, and uh, apply pressure in areas where it is necessary instead of fucking bombing the entire Gaza Strip. Here's what Israel should not do. Bomb the entire Gaza Strip. That's completely unacceptable. Israel has, especially in the past, uh, conducted prisoner swaps as well. Ultimately, the argument revolves around Israel having a right to just have do a little ethnic cleansing. That's it. That's that's what you're that's what you're defending when you defend this. Okay? When you defend this, okay, this, you're basically just saying Israel has a right to fucking do this. Okay? Israel has a right to do a little bit of ethnic cleansing. That's crazy. There is no justification for this. But in this solution, civilians are dying too. Yeah, except civilian casualties could be kept to a fucking minimum in that circumstance. You understand that, right? So what, you're saying, well, civilians die in either circumstance, so we might as well keep bombing them and demolish neighborhoods? That's what you're saying? No, the real reason why Israel doesn't want to do that, by the way, uh, precise strikes on locations where they uh, believe that there are hostages, is specifically because they don't want to... They don't want to fucking free the hostages. They want to kill Palestinians more than they want to uh, free Israelis. You understand that, right? As a matter of fact, this is a simple continuation of the same principle that has been ongoing with the occupation and with the apartheid. If Israel gave a fuck about Israeli citizens and their well-being and their security, they would have made permanent commitments to uh, security by treating the Palestinians like fucking human beings instead of constantly applying pressure on the West Bank over and over again, even though their own internal security apparatus, the Shin Bet, was telling them not to do that. But you know this already. You're not, I don't think you're in here with, with honest intentions because either you've been misled or you're here with dishonest intentions. The notion that you think in this solution, civilians are dying too, so it's better to just like keep bombing them is crazy to me. <sighs> no, I think they are lost of options. No. You mean there are lots of options? Yes, there are lots of options, and they're using the absolute unimaginably worst one. This is this is literally the one the one option that is not a nuke, okay? That's it. They're they're basically using a slow crippling burn. Instead of wiping out like a hundred thousand at once, they're just, you know, going tens of thousands of deaths. Slowly but surely, 42% of the, uh, of the entire infrastructure of the Gaza Strip is completely destroyed or crippled. 
They released a new article on BBC proving that Israel isn't an apartheid. No fucking shot. They have starved the entire strip. It's completely unacceptable. Also, there's no better, there's no greater proof that Israel cares more about killing Palestinians than saving Israelis than the fact that they started bombing Gaza while they hadn't controlled southern towns. They had not taken the southern towns back from Hamas militants that were sitting inside of southern towns and inside of police precincts. So please, if they had any interest in doing, if they had any interest in saving Israeli citizens, and if they had care and consideration for Israeli citizens, they would not have immediately started bombing Gaza. They would have literally done everything they can to save more Israeli citizens. Do not take my word for it. Take the words of those who were stuck inside of those kibbutzim uh, who have these exact same opinions as, uh, as myself, okay? And every single time we have this conversation... We, we also, for some weird fucking reason, every single time we have this conversation, we just, like, refuse to hear what Israeli Knesset members are saying. We refuse to hear the words when they very clearly tell you what their intentions are. It's very odd to just take for granted any kind of propaganda or any kind of misinformation that the IDF presents uh, uh, whenever, uh, whenever they want to... They want to prove a position like uh, the the fucking Al Qaeda manual or whatever, and everybody goes, "Yeah, I kind of I want to believe that that's actually real." But the but the moment that Israel or an Israeli members of the Knesset say, "We want to fucking make sure Gaza looks like this, the entire day Gaza looks like this. We want to fucking do ethnic cleansing. We want to do ethnic cleansing over and over again." You just go la 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 la. Can't hear that. Can't hear that. Didn't hear that. At a certain point, you have to recognize like you're. You know, you're on board with it. You just don't care. You don't believe that the Palestinians are, are human beings, and therefore it's not that big of a deal for you. I agree with you. It's extremely tough. No, it's not. It's it is not a tough thing to not do ethnic cleansing. Okay? It's not a tough thing. It's a very easy thing to not do ethnic cleansing. Can you change my POV about Hamas? Why are they terrorists? They are resistance groups who defend Israeli aggression and their mere existence because of Israeli genocide. Had Israeli not committed war crimes and settler colonialism, they wouldn't be existing. So wouldn't you call them freedom fighters? That's an honest question, please. Hamas is a Islamist, fundamentalist, violent resistance group to the Israeli occupation, among many other groups that have peacefully tried to resist the Israeli occupation. Their existence is a byproduct of Israel's occupation. This is true. Their violent measures is also a byproduct of the Israeli occupation becoming more and more violent. Or originally, Hamas and every other Palestinian group's uh, resistance was originally uh, around peaceful coexist or not peaceful coexistence, but like peacefully resisting in acts of civil disobedience and riots and strikes in general. Um, of course, uh, over the course of many years, they have turned into uh, much more violent means. I want to hear this, actually. You'll hear her incredible story of survival. Let's go out front. Isn't this that, is, this is Yasmin, right? And good evening. Welcome to a special edition of Out Front. I'm Aaron Burnett, live from Tel Aviv tonight. We begin with the breaking news. Hostages freed. Two Israeli hostages are now making their way to a medical center in Israel in Tel Aviv after being held by Hamas for over two weeks. They are 79-year-old Nareed Cooper and 85-year-old Yoki Lifshitz. Both were taken from their homes in the southern Israeli kibbutz of Niroz, which is, of course, just near the Gaza border. Now, both of their husbands were kidnapped with them. They were not released with their wives tonight. We do have some video of Lifshitz making her way to an ambulance, her daughter releasing a statement that reads in part, while I cannot put into words the relief that she is now safe, I will remain focused on securing the release of my father. We also have new video of Cooper in a stretcher being treated by medics. Her husband, as I said, is still being held by Hamas. And that is the reality. 
while these two women are free, and that is something that is important and so wonderful for their families, there are still 218 civilians being held against their will, hostages in, in Gaza. This is according to the IDF. Hamas, 10 Americans are still unaccounted Hamas. for. And that is why, according to sources, American officials are pressing Israel to delay its ground offensive, something that appears to at least have been successful over these past few days. Tonight, we are learning more about what that potential ground assault may look like. Here is the Israeli defense minister as he visited a Navy base today. Keep preparing for our operation. It will come soon. We are preparing thoroughly for the next step, a multilateral operation in the air, ground and sea. Do your work. Get ready. We will need you. Get ready. We will need you. And Israel again putting out new video ahead of the ground assault. Because as each day goes by, they feel the need for the world to remember why they are in this position. There is a reason for it, and it is the unspeakable brutality that the world witnessed from Hamas. I warn you that what you are about to see is graphic. It is body cam video from a Hamas militant because so many of them were wearing GoPros. That's how they've been able actually to identify them, we're told, by the unit in charge. You see one of the assailants firing into a car. The militants then inspect the car to make sure that the people inside are dead. This is horrific. It's hard to comprehend. There is a lot worse out there that they documented. And this is why Israel is ramping up its assault on Hamas and Gaza. According to the IDF, so far, uh, just over the past night, they took out 320 military targets. That was one of the biggest airstrikes in recent days. And the targets they say that they took out also happened, uh, they say, several uh, commanders, including of the rocket division. This, of course, is in one of the most densely populated areas. There are few places for anybody who is an innocent civilian to hide. And earlier tonight, out front spoke to Dr. Hatem Edher. He works at the Nasser Hospital in Gaza. So he wanted to send us a voice memo, these dispatches we've been trying to gather for you. He did. And then in one of them, you're going to hear the reality of daily life in Gaza. Listen to this. About the, about the critical supply, we have running of uh, about, uh, critical supply, uh, uh, IV fluid, antibiotics, uh, some of uh, when uh, some of the sub, uh, uh, drug, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And you hear that explosion in the background. I, I do want to note we did speak to Dr. Adher after that blast. He is okay. But that is the reality of his life in the hospital, hearing that as he's trying to tell you what's happening. CNN analyzed that audio. And at the same time that Dr. Ed Hare made those recordings for Outfront, the exact same time that you heard that explosion at 2.30 p.m. local time in Gaza today, CNN confirmed that there was a strike at a home near the hospital. So that appears to be what you're hearing. And as this is all unfolding, Tensions beyond Israel and Gaza are rapidly escalating. According to U.S. intelligence sources tonight, Iranian-backed militias are prepared to step up. I like that they're fucking saying, like, you know, East. here's why the civilians deserved it, by the way. Uh, begin, though, with Nick Robertson, who is live along the Israel-Gaza border, and Matthew Chance, who is here with me tonight. I mean, that's basically what they're saying. Nick, let's just begin with you. This uh, Is there any impact that this second release of hostages may have on Israel's plans to launch a ground war in Gaza? Certainly it appears, while they are, are ill in health, to be part of a strategy of one or two every few days, which of course uh, would, would delay this in an unsustainable fashion for Israel. Oh, oh, dude. And uh, that's exactly what Hamas appears to be trying to do, one or two a few days at a time. Uh, is it going to put Israel completely off track? Hamas is manipulating. They're literally saying like... Is international pressure, the United States and other countries whose nationals are being held by Hamas, who are speaking to, to Israel about the importance of hostage releases, is that kind of pressure going to have an impact? It certainly appears as if it is, although Israel says that the U.S. is not putting pressure on it in that way but it's been interesting that the idf That's actually crazy. had to put out a statement because of reports in local media here in israel that there were rifts opening up between the prime minister and his military leadership uh, the idf saying that's not true everyone is everyone is joined up um, but i think that gives you a sense of the pressures on the prime minister the impact that this drip 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 of hostage releases and the, and the whatever's happening behind the scenes whatever hamas is talking 
talking about in terms of other releases, in terms of is that pulling the troops away from their positions and their armor that are close to their, their jumping off points close to Gaza? No, they're still in position. And I, and I think um, it is a matter of time. And that seems to be the indication coming from the military commanders. Now, it is a matter of time before that incursion happens. Is Hamas trying to put them off track? A hundred percent, yes. All right, Nick Robertson, thank you very much in Sturrod, where he has been monitoring right along that Gaza border, the back and forth and the buildup of this massive Israeli presence along the Gaza border over these past 17 days. Out front now, Rudy Mizrahi. She is the niece of Yochi Lifshitz. Oh, they literally said it's Hamas's goal to slowly release the hostages to stop the ethnic cleansing happening in Gaza by trying to do ceasefires for six hours at a time. And they're literally saying that that's a bad thing. Okay, we are so completely on board with ethnic cleansing happening in Palestine, happening in Gaza, that at this point they're like, well, it's really delaying Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign, and that's kind of fucked up. It's like, where is your morality, dude? Where is your fucking morality? Um, believe it, and today it was, you know, also like a, a bit of a shock, but in a good way, of course. I know you've been staying in close uh, touch with your, your relatives and, and all of you trying to get answers. Do you know anything more about her release, Rudy, or why they released her and her friend or any other information? Um, I, I really don't have any, any more uh, information. I was surprised, you know, even though uh, for the last couple of days there were rumors that, uh, you know, but... It was denied uh, by the Israeli. Uh, I think they're not showing the old lady shaking the hands of the Hamas guy on purpose. Yes. Um, I think she's on her way to Israel right now. She might. Not actually... that this means that they're good. Okay, please, before you fucking yell at me. There's a big time difference, you know, 10 hours difference between where I am and over there. But I, I saw the... Uh, the pictures of what you're showing right now and um I, I can't even express how happy i am um and relieved uh to see her uh but at the same time you know i can't forget uh my uncle and the rest of the people that are still uh we don't know what's going on with them um not even know that if they're alive or whether uh, you know, situation is, and I can't wait to see everybody, you know, come home um, safe in one piece, and then they will have a long healing process to go through, but I, I can't mm. really wait until us, we'll see all of them um, back home. You know? yeah. Well, I... I, I... I can only imagine that, and I know just seeing even the the fact that you had that little smile in the in the ambulance is, you know, something about that. It does my give some warmth this to the is, heart. Yeah. This is my aunt. She's always smiling. Always uh, look and find the the positive, the good thing in every situation. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm sure she's uh, also happy to be released. Uh, it might be also a, a shock, you know, um, but she's such a, a really brave and, and amazing, amazing lady. I'm so proud of her, you know. I uh, can't wait to actually see her in person. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you'll be able to do that very soon and that your uncle will will soon be released as well. Yeah. I know you've you got to be awaiting that, uh, but I know they've been married for... What, over 50 years, so I hope that I they will soon be together more. again. Uh, Rudy, thank you so much. Yeah. They, yeah. Should, <laughs> they should ask her how she feels about uh, putting a fucking ceasefire for six hours so that her aunt could be released. Because just moments prior to that interview, she very carelessly and very callously said, this is Hamas' strategy to stop the, the ethnic cleansing uh, occurring in Gaza. Like, that, that is the level of consideration they have for the fucking hostages. Go ahead. Say I'm a fucking propagandist for Hamas by saying 
it is it is a bad thing to continue doing a fucking ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza. Go ahead. Alive. It gives yeah. hope that people can be brought out alive as part of this process that's underway. But I, I think it, it, it also it is potentially a tactic by Hamas to mm. avert that land operation mm. that, we, that right. we've been that we've been expecting. You know, and it's a it's a it's a tactic that's working. It's been 17 days since these attacks took place in Israel, and yeah, virtually every day of that, Israel has been promising it's going to go in. Yes. And it hasn't done so yet, and it's, it, perhaps it's giving space. To yeah. this process to yield more results in terms of um people to get out get those people out of gaza i don't think hamas doesn't want to have a land invasion i think they want to stop the bombing have you know you, you've had extensive conversations with them but on the day of the attacks yes on the day of the attacks you reached out to a senior hamas commander yes. who was involved and he responded he responded i had i have a, an american phone phone number he answered i was surprised and I told Damn. him, you murdered children. You burned babies. And he said, we don't. And I started to begging him. And I told him, you have babies. You have one baby's nine month old. Please release him for humanitarian reason. And he started to say, no, we can't. We are starting in a war. It's a very complicated situation. And believe me, I found myself starting to cry with a Hamas senior tried to begging him to release the, the babies, only the babies. And then he shut down the, 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 the phone. And later on, he sent me a message. He texted you. He texted me. Yep. And he wrote, Shlomi, first the death in Gaza must stop. The death in Gaza. I'm talking about the Saturday, the Black Saturday on October 7th. Here there is a mass killing and massacres against the civilian population. There are entire families that have been exterminated. Families in Gaza is exterminated. After I believe this. We I believe this. Dead in Israel, and mm -hmm. most he of them babies. Gaza, I believe it. About the, and we will not be able. It's not any different than what the Al Qassam brigades have said as well. I believe it. Now they started to release. We saw these pictures. Old women. It's heartbreaking. Old yeah. women, 18 years old. They are not prisoners. Yeah. They are hostages. Does Does Matthew this? behavior, right? Israel had allowed Hamas to exist as a government, right? And to, to, to effectively rule Gaza, knowing that it was a terrorist organization, but they had felt that this was somehow- Gross team is harboring terrorists? And that something of this brutality could Support come out saying what group. Hamas did is fake, yikes. That well, you're, I'm not you're sure imagining shit. Shut the fuck up. In it, in the oh. Shut the fuck up. I've literally yelled at people, banned people. Suck my dick, dude. Suck my fucking dick. Like, you, ha you, can't get, you can't get me to even fucking say something that you can clip out of context to fucking claim that that is what's going on. So you fucking lie and you say, oh, people in your chat are saying it. Shut the fuck up. Anytime there's anything even remotely close to that, I fucking yell at them. Shut the fuck up. God, you are such a delusional little freak, dude. Imagine literally looking at a fucking ongoing active ethnic cleansing campaign and being like, how do I... How do I make this about my least favorite streamer that I can't stop fucking watching pathetically? Jesus Christ, dude. The authorities do not seem to have conceived of the idea that that kind of an attack would have been yeah. possible, and if it were possible, would have been successful, and they were wrong. You have seen horrific videos yes. um, that you describe of, of actual rape graphic. Yes. Uh, you were describing them to me before. They're, 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 hard, to, yes. they're hard to even um, imagine. Is this consistent in any way with the Hamas leadership there now that you have spoken to so many times? Or does it shock even you? It shocked me. Something happened in Hamas. You know, I uh, didn't enter to Gaza Strip since the military coup. I think the viewers must know that what happened in Gaza in 2007, they made a military coup. They kicked out the PLO, mm -hmm. they right. shot them, and took control over Gaza. This is what happened in Gaza. So they were He's elected right. in 2006, but they made a military coup. Mm -hmm. He's and right. I, you motherfuckers don't know the truth. He's right. America Sinania, did it. The aid of the Hamas leadership. And for me, it seems like, you know, ordinary people 
It was America. Uh, in it was George W. Bush. But all the time they knew the boundary of mm. control, the boundary of power of Hamas. Yeah. Now ha happened something different. Yeah. Different. They came with hundreds with instruction to slaughtering, mm -hmm. to rape, and in every uh, 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 direction, <clears throat> and yeah. also to take video. To take video, they got yeah. an order to harm the uh, and they public opinion it. of Israel and yeah. harm the, 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 the morale of the Israelis. And Matthew, you know, you had a chance to sit down with one of the founders of Hamas in one of the many interviews you've conducted. Um, when you see now, years later, young guys with GoPros documenting Document. the brutal rape and dismemberment of women, beheadings, they documented this on their own GoPros. Can you draw a line between what you saw then and what you see now? It's a difficult question, difficult question to answer, but it's, I mean, I think it's something to do with the, you know, the inhumanity of this mm -hmm. conflict generally. Yeah. You know, the fact that, you know, Palestinians, um, and to some extent Israelis as well, mm -hmm. are, you know, not, not really willing in some ways to understand how much suffering they cause on the other side. You know, what? Not like hear, hearing me say that, but I think that's sort of- I'm gonna uh, die. Brother, once again, projection. Literally take everything they're saying about Palestinians or Hamas and flip it with Israel. That's crazy. It's crazy that he's saying that. As we all just try to even, trying to put words around. No, others. he's not even both sidesing it. He just straight up fucking said it, it's the Palestinians that are inhumane. He said that they're the ones who are inhumane as though like, oh my God. As though, as though the, the, the 2,000 fucking children is- Breaking is, news coverage continues after this. I'm going to speak to a father whose daughter is one of the 10 Americans still unaccounted for here in Israel. Well, he is very hopeful. That no, he said, to some degree, Israel. That's the most you're going to get. Contemporary criticism of Israel basically only extends to some degree. President Joe Biden, by U.S. President Joe Biden, while supporting Israel's right to defend itself, he also publicly warned I never Netanyahu not to make the same mistakes the U.S. did in response, a warning that was echoed today by the U.N. Special Rapporteur on Counterterrorism and Human Rights. Oh, I, heard, I misheard it. He said both sides are hurting the other. The coup was against Hamas, uh, not against the PLO. Hamas won the elections. Yes, bro. What are you talking about? I know. Hello? I've, I've covered this extensively on this broadcast. I know. The United States, George W. Bush, wanted in 2006 to conduct elections. George W. Bush's guys were the, uh, were, were the, the PLO guys, former PLO guys, Fatah guys. Okay? So what happened in that situation was originally... Um, they said, do not hold an election. Do not hold an election. Do not hold an election. George W. Bush didn't listen to them and said, no, we're going to hold an election in 2006. What happened in that election? Hamas ran as an anti-corruption party, okay, showing that uh, the other side were corrupt, the other side was taking a lot of money, showing that the other side uh, was uh, 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 not uh, genuinely interested in, in uh, liberating Palestinians. And then after that, the United States was like, oh, fuck, we fucked up. Hamas won the elections. Uh-oh, by a narrow, uh, by a slim majority. Now, after that, a coup happened at the behest of the United States of America where they thought maybe they could get the, the Palestinian Authority in charge regardless of the election results. That coup failed, and Hamas ended up uh, maintaining permanent control over the Gaza Strip. That is when Hamas's influence became a, a, permanent, uh, a, a permanent entity. In Israeli news, they always portray it like the coup was against the PLO. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about uh, what America's involvement was. And, and uh, no, the, the coup wasn't against the PLO. No, it wasn't. Hamas wasn't the one uh, who... who uh, who originally started the, the, the coup. <laughs> no, it was Americans trying to 
it was it was Americans pushing uh, the Palestinian Authority side to to uh, conduct efforts. They literally tortured Hamas uh, militants, dude. They tortured Hamas uh, politicians, like openly on camera. There's like a photographic evidence, videos of of uh, what's his name, uh, Mohammed Dahlan, like the the enforcer, openly torturing. Uh, openly torturing like Hamas uh, uh, members. This is at a time when they were fighting one another pretty aggressively as well. Like PLO one and Hamas got it through the coop, even though the president of Israel said it in English. No, that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, that, that is the exact opposite of what happened. Hamas won, and then the PLO, or uh, rather American forces, tried to uh, do a coup, and then Hamas destroyed them and gained permanent control over Gaza. So no, that's incorrect. What they're saying on the CNN interview is incorrect. I thought they were actually talking about the the correct assessment. Yeah, that's what the CNN said, and the president of Israel is such what was saying. Yeah, they're wrong about that. What is this source for you? Washington engineered the disaster split in the Palestinian national movement. Yeah, the divide between Hamas and Gaza and Fatah in the West Bank dates back to a crucial period in the mid two thousands. Yep. Um. Every step of the way, and this was this was not even a deliberate attempt to actually solidify uh, Hamas's uh, Hamas's position and power. This was actually a major fuck up by America. Prior attempts to give Hamas influence and prominence was done specifically to create a counterweight and a divide and conquer between Hamas and more secular Marxist formations of Palestinian liberation. So that is different. This, this, this act, this facilitation of a coup that failed, okay, was done uh, with Americans thinking that they at least could control the secular forces within uh, the West Bank, the secular forces that have in, that had influence over uh, Palestinians at the time, and they did not even want to do an election. They just didn't listen to the the secular. Uh, the, the uh, secular Fatah individuals, they actually conducted the, uh, they, they, forced an, uh, they forced an election through, which uh, ended up having in some of these places like four fucking guys that are all, uh, that all have the same constituents uh, splitting the votes over one fucking Hamas guy. And that's how Hamas uh, won the election by, uh, by a narrow margin. But then, they tried to go back and say, all right, we'll do a coup. And then that coup failed and Hamas became the permanent uh, controller of Gaza. Anyway, for Israel and supporters, there's a simple explanation. Israel withdrew his force from Gaza in 2005 in a bold gesture to create an opportunity for peace. This is a lie. Instead of responding constructively to this gesture, Palestinians voted for Hamas in an election held the following year. Hamas went on to seize power in Gaza and repeatedly used the territory as a base from which to carry attacks on Israeli soil, leaving Israel with no alternative but to launch military operations in response. This version of events is truly uh, rea turns reality upside down. The Israeli withdrawal from Gaza was never intended to pave the way for a peace settlement. In fact, its true purpose was to help entrench the occupation of the West Bank. The rise of Hamas was a predictable result of Israeli policy and could have been uh, and could have resulted in the formation of a national unity government between Fatah and Hamas with a serious negotiating platform for, for peace talks. However, Israel's U.S. ally insisted on unreasonable and insulting preconditions for recognizing any such government then began fomenting a violent conflict between the two Palestinian parties. In many ways, the events that unfolded between the Israeli withdrawal from Gaza in 2005 and the Hamas takeover two years later have determined the shape of Palestinian politics ever since. A close look at what happened in this period is essential background for the crisis today. So, um, this is Ariel Sharon, Sharon uh, announcing his plan in 2004. Uh, at the time, Israel's main backer, the United States, was under pressure from its allies to secure progress. What? Yo, just wanted to point out, sending in special forces to catch Hamas's IDF light. If Israel can finance a sectarian party to undermine Fatah, they can just as well prop up Fatah and work on a political diplomatic avenues of coexistence. That would still be awful. Wait, I, 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 I'm saying like, even even though I do not agree in a militaristic uh, reaction to October 7th, even if you were supposed to, 
even if you are supposed to find a, a uh, military reaction, even if you're supposed to do a military reaction, there are infinitely better ways of doing that without fucking indiscriminately bombing Gaza. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do. Of course, the best thing to do is, is undermine uh, the, the power that Hamas could have ever had by not negotiating with them and instead negotiating with the Palestinian Authority, offering concessions to the Palestinian Authority, show the Palestinian people in the West Bank that the Palestinian Authority actually is... Uh, getting meaningful concessions and and taking the fucking vice grip off of their necks that Israel has placed upon them instead of becoming a part of the Israeli security apparatus and like routinely fucking uh, uh, helping the Israeli forces, the Israeli occupation uh, conduct military exercises inside of the Janine refugee camp against the fucking Janine brigades, um, which is what the Palestinian Authority instead has become and has done. Um, they could have done the exact opposite and genuinely made the Palestinian Authority look like a force to be reckoned with, like the correct uh, uh, secular and, and uh, the correct humanitarian uh, group that is interested in uh, ceasefire and interested in peace. Anyway, but they didn't do that. They didn't do that on purpose because they're fucking arrogant. They didn't do that because they're bloodthirsty and they're fucking arrogant, okay? They thought that they could keep pushing the Palestinian people over and over and over again. They thought that they could push all the Palestinians into the hands of Hamas and then turn around and go, they're all Hamas, we have to do ethnic cleansing, okay? They also, I think, thought that they could do fucking ethnic cleansing without the rest of the world going, what the fuck are you doing? That's ethnic cleansing. And they have said it time and time again. They said it. Netanyahu said it. Netanyahu said that uh, if you want to thwart Palestinian statehood, what you do is negotiate with Hamas. No one else. Anyway. <clears throat> no Israeli politician symbolized violent extremism better than Sharon. He was responsible for the invasion of Lebanon in 1982 during which his Lebanese allies massacred the Palestinian civilians with the complicity of the Israeli army. Sharon was completely opposed to the Oslo Agreement signed by Yitzhak Rabin and Yasser Arafat in 1993, and he led the provocative march in Jerusalem that provoked the beginning of the Second Intifada uh, in September 2000. Now the international media celebrated Sharon as a daring peacemaker. Amidst the hype, few stop, uh, stopped to examine the details of the withdrawal plan or to ask whether it was really intended to be the first step towards the creation of an independent Palestinian state. Sharon's advisor, Dov Weissglass, left the Israeli paper Haaretz in no doubt af, uh, about his leader's true intentions. The disengagement is actually formaldehyde. It supplies the amount of formaldehyde that's necessary so that there will not be a political process with the Palestinians. That is the significance of what we did. The significance is the freezing of the political process. And when you freeze that process, you prevent the establishment of a Palestinian state and you prevent a discussion about the refugees, the borders, and Jerusalem. Effectively, this whole package that is called the Palestinian state, with all that it entails, has been removed from our agenda indefinitely. There are plenty of people who openly said these decisions are fucking stupid at the time. And there were plenty of people who wrote about it at the time and still do write about it. It is up to you to actually get an honest assessment of the situation from on-the-ground resources. I, I try to do this as best as possible here at the broadcast. Or it's up to you to go, la, 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 la. I can't fucking hear you. At the top of the hour, there isn't a three-minute ad break. And I won't see a three-minute ad break right now, except you will. Sometimes that comes in the middle of the hour, though. Top of the hour, streaming ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here's the streaming ad break now. Anyway. My point is, you can either read primary sources, on-the-ground reporting, academics that have covered this and made it their entire fucking lives, or you can listen to Ben Shapiro and other fucking hacks in the media that refuse to, to give you an honest assessment of the events that unfolded and actually lie to you, okay? You can do that. You can do that, and it'll make you feel comfy, and it'll, you know, you'll be in a cozy hug box where 
everyone is talking about the the ruthless uh, slaughter of Palestinians and how justified that is and how pog it is and how sick that is and how all of your enemies are actually Hamas supporting uh, dirty Arabs or whatever the fuck you believe or whatever the fuck makes you feel better about your position. But the reality is unchanging. Okay? You can do that. You can just channel all of the fucking nonsense that Ben Shapiro puts out there and Prager you puts out there while simultaneously claiming that you're a fucking liberal uh, and not recognize that you are being propagandized to and then turn around and go, well, Hassan said he's a propagandist himself, so he must be lying all the fucking time about everything that's going on on the ground. But you cannot avoid the truth. And if you want to know the truth, then you have to do a little bit more reading. Anyway, in any future uh, permanent status arrangement, there will be no Israeli towns and villages in the Gaza Strip. On the other hand, it is clear that in the West Bank, there are areas which will be part of the state of Israel, including major Israeli population centers, cities, towns, and villages, security areas, and other places of special interest to Israel. If the main Israeli population centers in the West Bank were annexed to Israel proper, along with the road networks that connect them, the security areas that protect them, and other places of special interest to Israel, any notional Palestinian state would consist of four or five isolated fragments of territory, covering barely half the land of the West Bank and completely dependent on Israeli goodwill to survive, especially Jericho region where they're, they have nothing. They're like completely an island. Okay? Surrounded by fucking buildings and, and uh, uh, horrifying border walls stuck in the middle of, of uh, settler uh, projects that they've, been, that they've propped up. The darkest horseshoe theory is that people on either side who question the innocence of children on the opposing side just deep despair-inducing stuff. What? When you hear the concept, when you hear the term innocent civilians in Gaza, you really need to question the concept? Here's what they do at kindergarten graduations in Gaza? What? Yeah. Terror babies. Babies do do... Babies that do terror, like fucking uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's uh, character. That's that's what's going on. Like immediately, the f the first thing that comes to mind is Sasha Baron Cohen's like fucking uh, Mossad guy. Terror. We are doing kindergartens. <laughs> These are babies conducting terror. Eran Murad. <laughs> It's a pretty good Israeli accent, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I'm just repeating what Sasha Baron Cohen has done. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll get back to this coverage, but I do want to watch this. He is the head of the neonatal unit at Nasr Hospital. That is in Khan Yunus, as you can see, in southern Gaza. You heard the voice memo that he sent us that was interrupted by a loud blast. Now, when we heard that on his tape, we were actually able to, to trace back that there was an explosion at that time to a home near the hospital. We used the timestamps on the recordings Dr. Ed Hare sent us. And here's more of what he told us. About the, about the critical supply, we have running of uh, about, uh, critical supply, uh, uh, IV fluid, antibiotics, uh, some of uh, when uh, some of the sub, uh, uh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I can't continue talking. I want to go to the safe place now, but it's terrifying here. And in the last few days, it's more, more, more. A scary, a scary situation. Of course, he's there taking care of, of, of pre preemie babies, a neonatal unit there. And you hear the panic in his voice as he is still trying to do his job as a doctor. The situation is, is horrible there. And some vital aid has begun trickling in, but trickling would be the operative word. Uh, it is trickling in, and it is very far away from pretty much anyone who needs it. Well, as we've been doing every night on Outfront, we have another exclusive dispatch from the journalist Ibrahim Dahman. He is inside Gaza. Ibrahim and his family, as you know. What's up? Israel has to do this, though, right? Egypt. Those hopes for now 
still hopes, not yet successful. Ibrahim and his wife, Rasha, and their two young sons, age 11 and 7, evacuated northern Gaza when Israel told civilians to leave. They uh, complied. They fled to the south. And now they wait and wait. Here's the update that Ibrahim shared with us today. كنا في معبر رفح وانتظرنا على أمل من ندخل الجانب المصري لكن المعبر مغلق فتح فقط للمساعدات الإنسانية نشق طريقنا للرجوع متفادين الفوضى على أمل أن يكون الغد أفضل من اليوم نسمع الغارات الجوية على مسافة ولكني أرى الرعب في عينيه نفس الخوف الذي في عيني That was Ibrahim Dachman, as we said, our CNN producer who is in Gaza tonight, hoping, hoping to be able to leave. Joining me now, Lieutenant... Um, but you also been saying like, you know, oh, oh, thank God. Spokesperson, of course, oh, a familiar oh, face. Oh, thank God. This guy's Pal back. Oh, we're now joining uh, our lieutenant who's going to tell us that our CNN producer deserves to be ethnically cleansed. Thank you. Lieutenant, go ahead. Tell us why he deserves to fucking die. The original point that the IDF had urged all Gazans to go past for their own safety. Obviously, though, there have been strikes there. Um, is that something that's going to... Bro, this guy is literally a, a fucking commentator on CNN at this point, I think. Like, come on. He's he's on every channel. Hello again. He's on Aaron, every program. Thank you for having me. Um, what's happening all over the Gaza Strip is that we continue to target Hamas. Uh, whereas, of course, we are aware of the enhanced presence of civilians in various areas, and we are careful not to strike them, uh, as I also think that uh, your producer um, insinuated. Um, but we continue to hunt Hamas commanders. Uh, we continue to uh, actively what? search and use the intelligence that we... Dog, you just listened to a doctor talk to her about being bombed, like uh, having a house be bombed Going. right next door. So uh, we, we and and we have to be clear. We never said to anybody in no language, not in Arabic and not in English, that we are not going to strike south of that area. We just said that north, northern part of Gaza is going to be a main combat zone. Oh, my God, I'm losing it. Oh, my God, he's saying a very dangerous place to be. He's saying so, we so never I said we're not going to stop bombing the south. We're going to keep bombing the south, but go south. Uh, in the days as Bakhmut began, <laughs> began to be completely destroyed, the, the northern Gaza drone footage that we have. And you point out that you have been striking very specifically. Actually, if you add up your number of strikes, even versus Palestinian reported number of civilians. How is, um, how is Aaron Burnett you, you not the, responding to that by going, excuse me, did you just say you're going to bomb the south and the north? Today, some more commanders that you say you've killed, uh, one in the rocket unit. Uh, the basic question for you, Colonel, is how much is left? You, you, you've taken out a lot of the command. Uh -huh. You've taken uh -huh. out a lot of the infrastructure. Are you 10% done? Are you 80% done? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I heard you gave a very succinct uh, breakdown of it before with uh, Wolf Blitzer, uh, spot on. I cannot say how many percent yet. Uh, I can say that there are unfortunately many, many more senior uh, Hamas officials, senior commanders, operatives from the Nukba unit, the so-called select or elite terrorists. And there's Hamas many babies. more targets, yeah. both infrastructure, weapon storage, and many other things. So no, we are not done. Uh, and there are many more targets and many more new targets are created as we extract more intelligence also from Nukba fighters or terrorists that we have captive, that we are extracting intelligence from. They this is why there is no uh, equivalence here. This is a military official, a lieutenant, and is a spokesperson, and no questions are being asked, like, do you condemn the fucking uh, civilian casualties? He just goes, yeah, they're in, they're in the way. No questions. Objective in Gaza. Never tell me and there isn't a double standard. Report that the Pentagon Never. specifically sent officers to help Israelis with the challenges of fighting an urban war. Perhaps uh, some with the experience in places like Mosul or Fallujah. Can you confirm that the Pentagon has sent these officers? Uh, they're reporting some real specifics, including a three-star Marine, uh, Lieutenant General James Glynn. I can confirm that we are very closely coordinated and that there are boots on the ground and that we share intelligence and we share perspectives and goals, uh, the highest levels in Israel and of course in the military. I cannot confirm any such report in the New York Times and uh, I can only confirm that today I read something else in the New York Times that I found very interesting, something that I haven't seen in a long, long time and that is close to an apology yeah. for their horrible and unprofessional coverage of the hospital incident. That's so crazy. I can't believe they're extracting apologies from like Western media for understandably assuming, for understandably assuming, okay, that that it is an Israeli airstrike until proven otherwise. I'm losing my fucking mind. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is so crazy. Actually confronting the gunman and she's going to tell you her... Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. She should just turn around and ask him how many hospitals they've officially bombed. Yeah, I think so. But it'll never happen. Meanwhile, this hospital strike is distracted from the hundreds of others killed since then already. It's so nauseating. Yeah, it, it worked. It was very successful. It worked perfectly well. The New York Times, BBC, everybody fucking apologized profusely to the IDF for, uh, for, for you know, sparking discourse uh, and, and daring to assume until proven otherwise that Israel's bombing campaign also featured another fucking bombed hospital that they had bombed on Saturday. The idea that this is like a completely... Uh, ridiculous uh, and, and unacceptable abdication of duty for journalism is mind-boggling, okay? It's mind-boggling. It's crazy. I'm losing my fucking mind. 729K views on uh, the Jank versus Piers video? Yeah, he really popped off. Even the geo confirmed OSINT guy, OSINT guy now that claimed it was a rocket has revisited his conclusions and says he does not know for sure what caused it. Here's still good reason to doubt. This is precisely the reason why I have been fucking saying that not because of this, but this is, but because of the, because of all the information that we still do not have access to. Okay. Uh, this is the reason why I've said until proven otherwise, of course, my expectation is that Israel was engaging in a bombing campaign in that area. Israel lied about engaging in a bombing campaign in that area, said they weren't when we know that they were. That's crazy. How, how do you just like act like that's not important? As a key detail that they just simply, not even omitted, but actually just straight up lied about. You know what I mean?
Based on the geolocation of the new footage, it's highly likely that the missile Al Jazeera footage is an interceptor, Iron Dome. The explosion in the air is far too uh, far away to be related to the hospital explosion. Oh my god. Oh my god. Where is fucking Elint? I hope he's in the chat. Because I said these things, and every single person said to me, Hassan, you don't know how the interceptors work. You don't know how the interceptors work. Every single person that I talked to, not Elint News, he's fine. But uh, but a lot of a lot of people that I talked to, or rather a lot of people that I was uh, trying to learn from legitimately, kept saying that this cannot be an interceptor missile because an interceptor missile wouldn't uh, wouldn't actually fucking intercept over Gaza. Well, we didn't know where the missile was in its own trajectory. We don't know that it was actually intercepted over Gaza, or if it was actually I intercepted over. Uh, if it was actually intercepted over uh, Israel, Israeli territory, or even if uh, whether or not the the uh, the capabilities of the Iron Dome have been expanded, there's a lot of secrecy there. <laughs> Read the damn thread, man. Based on the investigations concluded by F. Dove uh, regarding the Al Ahli ba uh, Baptist Hospital explosion, starting with the three threads that this thread is largely, largely based on. Good work on Archie Arving, who was the one to first challenge our good initial analysis. Oh, this was this is a Hasanabi head, isn't it? Yeah. Damn, you got an Eric Toller follow. Congratulations to Archie Irving, um, who sent this to me yesterday. Um, I apologize for yelling at you and not reading your actual fucking thread. I fucking hate O's in Twitter. I mean, I do too, but it's fine. Uh, there's some good guys there. And also, I, I do... There are still forensic analysts that I respect who know a lot more than I do, who I still rely on for information. Um, I mean, a great example of, of uh, I think, analysts uh, who even work for Bellingcat, as a matter of fact, are uh, people like Eric Toller. Uh, Evan Hill is also great, as I've talked about, as I've hyped up quite a bit. I mean, you have to remember, there are certain guys out there, forensic analysts out there, who literally investigate American war crimes, okay? You cannot... You can never forget. Uh, you can never forget that. Or Hassan is CIA. Yes, I'm CIA. Anyway, there are still good dudes out there. There are still good dudes out there doing incredible work. Not every fucking O's and Andy on Twitter is the same. But I do respect that this person is like at least going back on his original assumptions, because uh, I think that there are plenty who are not doing that in O's and Twitter and are just like straight up interested in. Uh, pumping misinformation. Followed by FW21 volunteer. Da, 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 da. I had a closer look at some of the videos related to Al Ahli. I found this very interesting and recently followed by um, Alexander DK. First, the geolocation of the footage video showing the hospital. Here's the initial footage. This is the full footage from the AJ Mubasher feed. You can see the outgoing rocket fire some distance away. Rocket is intercepted in the air. Video two, the other footage from the same location. Um, new footage. Uh, do, 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 do. here's the new footage. Now the footage showing another explosion before the explosion of the courtyard of the hospital, but relevant to the investigation. Two of the videos that thought to show the explosion of the hospital, which have been used in many analysis, do not show that blast, but another explosion in Gaza that happened approximately 20 seconds prior. Yes, forensic architecture is a really, really good uh, uh, group as well. I, I also follow them. They were the ones who first uh, conducted uh, decent uh, projectile trajectory analysis. And also on top of that, were the ones who said, potentially this could be a strike that is consistent with artillery shells that Israel uses. The only difference there is that there are still certain aspects of this. There are still certain aspects of this that aren't called into question, like, there was a fuel fire. How did that happen? How was there a fuel fire? Was it actually a rocket that misfired, and therefore it had a tremendous amount of fuel in its, uh, in its, uh, it, it, like because it didn't go the distance at all, and therefore it was a fuel fire and an explosion that was much larger. That was the main uh, point of contention. Or was it not? It was a car lot, uh, parking lot full of cars. Yes. It, however, you have to remember how much fuel do those fucking cars have? I know three cars exploded. Is that big enough for a three car explosion? The the fuel and uh, the fuel that you saw. Anyway, 
Um, Geo confirmed being filmed from Natif Haz, uh, Hazara. The second video is posted from Channel 12 News. Both of these videos show the same event, which took place just prior to the hospital explosion. Uh, the triangulation of the initial blast before the hospital explosion. Um, why does the geolocation from the explosion... Uh, why the geolocation from the explosion before the hospital matters? Triangulation of the different hospital-related footage. Bar. Karda yatak odamda. Hayır. Direkt olarak yatağın yanında. Şey, cage'in üstünde. Direkt açıkta bıraktım. We are pleased to observe the open source community and journalists actively engaged in their work. Based on their above investigation, uh, are answered back with proof that questions can be raised. Answer questions. Is the missile visible in the Al Jazeera stream above or near the hospital? Highly likely not. If an Iron Dome missile is involved, why was it fired above Gaza? Not above Gaza, but highly likely at the edge of a normal intercept. If an Iron Dome missile is involved, can we identify past incidents of Iron Dome missile interceptions occurring above Gaza? Not relevant. See number two. If an interceptor was in action, what was its target? What happened to the debris of the intercepted object? No debris. Because of the estimates of the distance between the explosion and the hospital, it seems to have exploded too, uh, too far away to have relevance. Questions which are irrelevant now after this above investigation restarted numbering. If it's a Tamir interceptor and it intercepted something above in line of the hospital, doesn't this support the IDF's claims uh, reject regarding rocket trajectory? Very relevant, although it is now highly likely that it didn't intercept something above the hospital. It could have intercepted something that was shot over the hospital. What means with the possibility of another falling... What? Rocket failing still exists? I don't understand why every single circumstance uh, still has the, the operating theory reinforced here. Like, I know that I'm saying a similar thing on the opposing side where I'm saying, well... It's most likely either Israeli air fire. If it's not Israeli air fire, most likely some kind of artillery shelling, which had happened before. But at least I have additional circumstantial evidence to back this up. These guys don't have that. They're just simply saying, I made the assertion that it was, it was definitely a rocket misfire. So maybe it was a rocket misfire. And I don't actually have any fucking proof that it was a rocket misfire. And here I am falsifying every single other counterclaim that accompanied the rocket misfire narrative while simultaneously still saying, maybe there's a rocket misfire happening, but we just haven't been able to account for it. I don't understand it. I don't understand that at all. At least for me, I'm looking at the circumstantial evidence. I'm looking at the audio pattern, the visual pattern of fucking bombing that was... Uh, verifiable from uh, the, the, the balcony footage. I'm looking at, uh, and, and also even recognizing that I, I was wrong in my initial assessment of assuming that this was a JDAM Mark 84 rocket because crater uh, analysis showed that that was not the case, right? But that still does not, it's still not enough to, 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 to believe hook, line, and sinker what the Israeli government's narrative is. There is ample proof that it is a rocket misfire. Hamas launched a barrage of rockets one minute before the explosion, and there is footage of the rocket malfunctioning over the hospital. Dude, you can't be saying that while we're currently literally watching these guys disprove that narrative. This is the danger of, of mainstream media running along with this, by the way, because a lot of OSINT Twitter immediately ran with this narrative, and the unfortunate reality is that plenty of uh, journalists who don't want to do forensic architecture uh, themselves or forensic analysis themselves. The forensic architecture analysis is deeply flawed as it fails to acknowledge that the missile would likely change direction after it malfunctioned in the air. I'm going to lose my fucking mind, dude. You say there's ample proof, but there is no ample proof. There's no visual cues for it. There's no audio cues for it. There's no fucking, there's nothing. It's just your expectation that it is a rocket misfire. Where did the rocket misfire narrative come from? Israel. What other things that they say in that process that they had intercepted communications and they showed intercepted communications that were laughable. They said that uh, they, they presented drone footage of the fucking area. The only thing that worked against uh, or the only thing that worked for the narrative that it might be a rocket misfire is that the ground crater was consistent, not with a JDAM Mark 84 missile, but actually with something much smaller. That's it. 
Show me the proof. You can't just say the forensic architecture analysis is deeply flawed because you're you're being ridiculous. You're, you're looking at the Doppler effect uh, sound analysis and saying, well, maybe they just only covered the Doppler effect for when the missile didn't go in one direction, but in the opposite direction. No need to trust everything the IDF says, but there's nothing to suggest that it is the IDF. Excuse me, you cannot say that. That is the most insane thing I've ever fucking heard. Are you, did you just like shove your head into the chicken's ass and pull it out the moment that the IDF released counterintelligence? Are you fucking stupid? They first lied and said they did not do any bombing in that camp area when there was clearly a bombing campaign ongoing in that area as documented by the Al Jazeera footage that every single person has pointed to. They literally had bombed that hospital prior and destroyed the cancer ward and wounded four medical professionals. They had called the hospital prior multiple times over the course of the past week alongside 22 other hospitals that they told to evacuate because they were going to inevitably bomb them. The idea that this is not suggestive enough for you as far as circumstantial evidence goes, which is not physical evidence, I admit that, but if you think that there's anything pointing, there's more information pointing to the fact that this is actually 100% an, uh, a, 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 uh, the, the Islamic Jihad misfire and not still an Israeli shell or an Israeli bomb of some sort uh, that exploded in the fucking courtyard. I don't want to believe what I want to believe due to my own biases. Fuck you. You have presented zero fucking evidence. You said Hamas launched a barrage at the same time and the payload was too small for an IDF strike. That is not enough evidence. Hamas launched a barrage at the same time. We saw all of those missiles. Some of them were intercepted, except for the one that actually misfired secretly that we couldn't find in any of the fucking videos that ended up changing its trajectory and fucking perfectly dropping in the courtyard of a hospital. A hospital's courtyard that they had actually fucking attacked before. One just went stealth. You do not have the information. You do not have the evidence. You, however, do have the backing of the overarching Western media that has apologized and has basically said time and time again without enough evidence that this is actually absolutely a misfire. I think that is journalistic malpractice. I think that there are actual good forensic analysts out there who haven't come out and said that this was, in, this was absolutely a fucking misfire. You can't say, where is your evidence when I gave you the evidence? We're also, we're looking at the evidence. Man. I hate this. I hate this so much. For the record, unlike you, okay, I am very open and very honest about this. I'm saying I... I believe this is an Israeli bomb due to the circumstantial evidence. I'm not saying 100% it is an Israeli bomb, and I know for a fact it is an Israeli bomb. I'm saying there is a likelihood that it might not be, okay? But currently, all circumstantial evidence favors that this is an Israeli strike. All of the circumstantial evidence favors that it is an Israeli strike. That is my assessment. I am willing to concede that it's not, as long as it's proven to not be an Israeli airstrike due to some on the ground, uh, due to an actual on the ground investigation that is conducted. You need to do soil samples. You need to do chemical samples. You need to figure out exactly what was utilized in that situation. The one thing that I will mention, however, okay, the one thing that I will mention in this circumstance is that normally Hamas or the Islamic Jihad or someone else would literally turn around and say, here's a fucking piece of the bomb that was used. Okay? They have not done that. What do you have to say about the crater size? You know what I have to say about the crater size because you saw the forensic architecture analysis of the crater size and you didn't even mention the forensic architecture analysis of the crater size because you did not want to admit that it is consistent with shelling. I agree that there should be an international investigation, but Hamas will have likely cleaned up all the evidence. The fact that they uh, have nothing stinks. Wait, first of all, you can still find patterns even if you were allowed inside. And Hamas is not the one who was stopping international investigators from going in there. Israel is. I hope you understand that. So that actually doesn't favor your side of the equation. And instead, it favors the other, the opposing side uh, on this e equation, I would say. Oh...
Conclusion, based on the investigations conducted by FDOV, Alexander DK, and Archie Irving, it's highly likely that the missile on the initial Al Jazeera footage is an interceptor. The explosion is too far away from the hospital to be, be related to the hospital explosion. We said this already, by the way. Obviously, there wasn't proof that it was 100%. Like, I didn't fucking say the trajectory. But days ago, I, I responded to the other guy. Uh, what's his face? He's not even in this. Uh, the, the, the Australian fucking OSINT Andy. I readily admit that the evidence we have at hand is inconclusive, but given the circumstantial evidence, including the fact that Israel had already bombed this hospital prior and destroyed the cancer war prior, and the fact that they routinely threatened this hospital, of course I'm going to make the assertion that it's still Israel until proven otherwise, rather than it's still Hamas until proven otherwise. Does that mean that Hamas doesn't have accidental misfires? Of course they do. Of course they do. Yes, of course they do. They do it hundreds of times, okay? Of course. I'm not, I'm not actually discounting that. However, it is, the evidence for that is infinitely less, infinitely uh, uh, less than the evidence for it being uh, a part of regular Israeli bombing campaigns, which have been conducted not just by drones, but also uh, uh, rockets, uh, guided munitions, dumb missiles, uh, and, and artillery, shelling. Anyway, I think it's impossible to say for certain who did it as of yet, but why point to one side when it will just inflame tensions? My friend, you just did something very important. You basically conceded to what I have to say because you understand that there's at least enough circumstantial evidence to, to give light to my side of the argument. And you, instead of conceding to that, immediately turned around and said, one side will just inflame the tensions. You said, where is your evidence? I gave you the evidence. And then you said, what about the crater side, which I had talked about already? You know what the crater size evidence looks like because it is also consistent with uh, shelling that Israel engages in as well. The main argument here is not any of those things. The main counter argument that actually genuinely is important to address is why there was a f uh, fire consistent with a fuel fire, okay? Instead of deflecting around and trying to fucking argue with me on this issue without knowing my, my exact uh, uh, analysis as to why I've come to this conclusion, you tried to derail the conversation as best as you could, piece by piece. I gave you the information over and over again, and now you've moved on, and instead of fucking con uh, conceding that it is valid to assume that this is still uh, Israel until proven otherwise, because Israel has been bombing the shit out of Gaza. It's fucking ridiculous. Way more frequently than Hamas rockets have been uh, misfiring over Gaza, especially ones that would uh, uh, cause such a massive amount of fucking death, okay? You then turn around and said, I think it's impossible to say for certain who's to do it as of yet, but you already are acting like you do know who did it. It's very cowardly for you to assume 100% without a shred of doubt uh, that that like this was this was uh, a a Islamic jihad missile, okay? And then you you turn around and you you go, "Oh, well, okay, well, it's just inconclusive. So why did you say Israel did it?" I told you why. Because circumstantial evidence points to it being an Israeli airstrike or an Israeli bomb. That's why. Anyway, now, having said that, you have an impressionable viewer base. Maybe you should wait for more clear evidence to come out before saying it is the IDF is ridiculous because you said it was the Islamic Jihad. You are running with a narrative that has less fucking evidence. The only evidence you have is that the crater size is not consistent with a fucking JDAM. That's it. That's it. That's the only evidence you have. The idea that this is a rocket misfire has not been proven at all. At all. As a matter of fact, the exact opposite has been proven now by those who originally claimed that it was a rocket misfire or potentially a rocket that was intercepted and fell on the hospital. I don't have 30,000 kids idolizing me though, haha. -ha. Oh, okay, got it. So you can just fucking lie. Well, guess what? You're not alone in that. You personally now recognize that you ran with the narrative that uh, you ran with the narrative that I, uh, the IDF presented without any information whatsoever. You ran with that narrative. 
Guess what? You know who else ran with that narrative? Every single fucking Western media outlet that has now apologized for their original assessment. So shut the fuck up. Who do you think has more influence? Those guys or fucking me? If your problem right now is that misinformation is spreading in this situation, maybe you should go take it up with the BBC. Maybe you should go take it up with the New York Times. Maybe you should go take it up with all of those other fucking journalistic outlets that have literally been round the clock apologizing and saying, even though it is not conclusive that the Israeli investigation was absolutely conclusive when we know for a fucking fact that the information that they put out there was literally contradictory to the claims that they were making. So how dare you? Why do you come in here and yell at me when at least I have circumstantial evidence on my fucking side? You can say you don't have enough physical evidence, which is true, but you cannot fucking turn around and say that I'm coming at this from an unreasonable perspective. Oh... Also, yes, 70% of the stream is over the age of 25, but it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever narratives you have. We are pleased to observe the open source community and journalists actively engaged in their work. OSINT analysis isn't, isn't, is always based on information at the time. It's only as good as the quality of opposing arguments. Very good work by the OSINT community. Okay, I mean, is it very good work, though? I don't understand. The previous analysis was partially based on information that has not been disproven. Therefore, we have deleted the initial thread. I'm glad that they did that. Many others have not. And they're still going along with that conclusion. What will happen? What will happen to all of the media outlets that ran with this narrative, though? At the time of the hospital bombing, Israel had admitted to dropping 6,000 bombs in six days, a.k.a. 1,000 a day, a.k.a. 42 an hour. It is not out of the question that this was an Israeli bomb, unlike the chatter is implying. Thank you. Exactly. It is fucking ridiculous. It is, I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind in this circumstance. I feel like I'm losing my fucking mind, especially when there are also suspiciously quiet forensic analysts out there who haven't conclusively brought forward an argument that uh, took the, the Israeli government's narrative hook, line, and sinker. Perhaps you should think a little bit about that. And for the record, this does not change the reality that maybe, maybe this is the one fucking missile that actually misfired in a sea of 6,000 fucking bombs. None of that changes the reality of Israel's atrocious crimes in this situation, unless you personally think that it's only bad when Islamic Jihad rockets kill Palestinians, and it's perfectly fine and valid when Israel's rockets kill Palestinians. Because that's kind of the argument that people are making here. It's ridiculous that people say, oh, you really are pushing tensions here by claiming that Israel did this without adequate evidence. Brother, are you fucking insane? Do you think those people were completely oblivious to the 6,000 rockets that Israel flexed on that they dropped on fucking Gaza? No, this was simply the straw that broke the fucking camel's back for many people, and they haven't stopped, even though all of those news articles have come out and said, we were wrong, we're so sorry, without additional evidence, mind you. They've said, oh yeah, we should have just taken what Israel said for granted and immediately fucking portrayed it uh, as, the, as the good old boys that we are, as the stenographers that we are for the Israeli government. We are so sorry, we will never do that again. People are still protesting. You wanna know why? Because bombs are still being dropped on Gaza. It didn't fucking change anything. Thousands more children have died since this hospital bombing. If you think that people are only hyper-focusing on this one instance at the Al-Ahli Hospital, you are falling into this fucking ridiculous sea of misinformation and propaganda. It's not that. It's, a, it's everything. It's every day before that. Cut that surgically that day, surgically out of the conversation. People are still going to be fucking pissed. No one is going to go... Oh, man. Well, they, I guess they didn't bomb the Al-Ahli Hospital Courtyard, so I guess I'm no longer upset at the 4,000, 5,000 plus fucking uh, Palestinians that have been murdered by Israeli rockets. All of a sudden, I only cared about the one hospital. That's the only thing I cared about. Nothing else. Is that what your argument is? Fuck. This is what's really gross about it. Those are Gaza Health Ministry, a.k.a. Hamas numbers, though. You're right, brother. You're right. It's all a lie. Actually, Gaza is fucking awesome right now. You should go take a fucking nice little stroll down uh, Gaza. It's all Hamas Health Ministry numbers, guys. We can't believe it. That is the true disgusting purpose of this fucking propaganda, this back and forth about the hospital, by the way. At least that chatter is brave enough to fucking admit the cruel, inhumane perspective that he has. 
Motherfucker, you are now officially to the right of CNN. How does that make you fucking feel, dog? Does that make you feel good? That you're literally saying like, well, we can't really believe the ho- the numbers at all because those are all the Gazan Health Ministry numbers. We are now officially... Notice how quick it was for you to literally engage in genocide denial? Like, it was that easy for you. Really? 15-month subscriber? It was that fucking easy for you? You said this too, and I think you might be right about playing the role of a patsy for this issue. It's kind of muddying the discourse to what the IDF wants. Exactly. Really, dude? Is Gaza fucking sick right now? Is Gaza actually dope? Do they also have, like, uh, you know, fancy hotels and, and uh, incredible... They have fancy hotels. No, nothing is bombed, actually. Really? That's, that's, how you're, that's what you're going with? A little bit of genocide denial? Think about that. Oh. The idea of YouTube ads are working, apparently. It just blows my mind. It blows my mind. What was that chatter's username? I want to see if he responds uh, to what I just said. You literally said that's the Gazan Health Ministry. Brother, okay, Israel said they dropped 6,000 bombs. Do you think that's also the Gazan Health Ministry? Do you think, the, do you think Hamas is inside of the IDF uh, propaganda accounts? Lemau, just say you want more dead Jews. Fucking Jimmy Carter had a more favorable position on Palestinians 15 years ago when he wrote a book called Peace Not Apartheid. Give me a break, Piers Lamau. Unrelated, how are you supposed to respond to people who say a Gaza health ministry count as false? Not trying to create drama, but Ethan did this, so I want to know. Why did you say Lamau just so you just say you want more dead Jews? Those Gaza Health Ministry, aka Hamas numbers, though. What happened? How did you go from like trying to spark drama between me and Ethan while also simultaneously assuming the role that you were, uh, uh, you know, against this, saying that it's actually fucked up, uh, the death count, whatever, to literally being like, actually, that is, those uh, numbers are Hamas numbers and they're probably fake. How did that go? How, what happened here? Maybe it's Hamas. No, I want to hear what he has to say. Do you think I actually want more dead Jews, really? The chatter is funneling what E is saying on his podcast in real time. I just don't understand how what happened here. Like, how did this happen? How could this have happened? You do do you realize you aren't arguing with the person, but someone deliberately stun locking you? Yeah, I guess you're right. No, he's not banned. I unbanned him. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's crazy, yeah. We literally just watched a CNN interview where an IDF spokesperson said we never promised we wouldn't bomb southern Gaza, and people still think that the IDF is all above board and tells the truth. Like, it's crazy. And the worst part is the CNN person didn't even fucking turn around and go, wait a minute. The fuck do you mean you didn't promise to say you're not going to bomb uh, southern Gaza? Well, you're evacuating people into southern Gaza, so why are you still bombing it? I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I, 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 don't, I don't understand how we're just going to, to, to make this right. I, I don't think we will. I, I think it's just like, it's so fucked. It's so fucked from start to bottom, top to fin. I mean, top to bottom, start to finish. It's just ridiculous. This person literally switched up their POV of that argument to make sure Hassan would react to it. Why is this community this way? I think a lot of people don't personally care 
um, about uh, about the issue at hand and quite literally feel like this is just like a fun game for them. And the game, the big prize in the game is just like my attention and, and maybe even like um, additional admiration they'll get from like their peers if they're in an echo chamber where they'll say hey dude you really owned Hassan you really did a good job owning him and you pissed him off and now we can clip something out of context and like further draw a wedge between him and other content creators him and Ethan you know what I mean like that's usually what it is and to be fair you know I just don't think that that's a very healthy way to look at life I don't I, I don't think that that's great I'm terminally online, but like, how do you reach that level of brain rot? It's crazy. Yeah. I think it's very hard for people to separate Hamas from the other bodies in Gaza, such as the health ministry, since Hamas is pretty much the only structuring body in Gaza. They associate the health ministry with Hamas. Even I myself have had trouble distinguishing the two, since like in America, the health ministry equivalent is part of the same government. Yeah, of course. Of course. But it's not simply just coming from the Palestinian health ministry, which is, yes, run by Hamas. It is the governing body of Palestine. It is the governing body of Gaza. It's just that you wouldn't argue against the department. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't argue against, like, the National Institute of Health. You wouldn't argue against... Uh, certain aspects of the American government just because you disagree with the with the American government's uh, uh, actions uh, overseas, right? Do you, do you understand that? Like, this is really important because this is basically the same thing that, like, uh, QAnon supporters and anti-vaxxers do where they go, oh, well, big pharma and corporations are working at the FDA, which is why the Pfizer vaccine makes you gay and autistic, brother. They're a part of the same group. And it's like, no, they're still definitely very different people working on, on very different fronts there with very different interests, right? And it's not just the Gazan health ministry. It's like actual fucking unaffiliated doctors that are also reconfirming the, the, the casualty counts. So how far does that propaganda go? Like, do you think that the, the doctors without borders guys and the UN guys and, um, and every other person that's like on the ground and the Al Jazeera guys and all the fucking press that's in Gaza, like they all have gotten together, all 2.2 million of them, and are just, like, collectively lying about Israel's war crimes in an effort to, like, draw sympathy towards them? Or do you think the, le the, the inverse is true? That, like, these guys are trying to do their best in a fucking really horrifying situation and trying to deliver information as quickly as possible without, like, operating alongside the al Qassam brigades or whatever the fuck and, and trying to say lies regularly and routinely? No, I understand perfectly now. I'm just saying, in, in the past, when I was a crazy Zionist, I previously held the mindset, if Hamas and Gaza Health Ministry, etc., said it, it's bullshit since they're terrorists. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I mean, I'm glad you, you uh, recognize that, too, by the way. I literally said this to some shithead last night who was using that argument, and he replied, with no international orgs or media personnel are in northern Gaza right now. Some people are just completely lost. It's not even true. When you believe that an AP building is hiding Hamas soldiers, you can be convinced of anything. Yeah. Digging their... Jesse Waters believes Palestine is telegenically dead child. Yeah, he didn't even come up with that. That's the grossest part. He, like, stole that from fucking Benjamin Netanyahu piece of shit can't even come up with a fucking independent original thought even when he wants to be like horrifyingly racist towards arabs and muslims and palestinians in general he can't even come up with that on his own because he's such a fucking stupid idiot dude absolute dumbass and i will show you the massive destruction that happened to the zahara city in the middle of the strip more than 14 residential tower got destroyed by the israeli airstrikes imagine how many people have been homeless and lost their places like like Gaza need a new <sighs> Nakba. 
How much does? Something that's overlooked by your lack of fuel in the cars at the hospital argument is that the liquid gas isn't actually explosive. It's the fumes themselves mixing with oxygen that becomes explosive. If that parking lot was full of cars with basically empty tanks and suffer shrapnel damage to fuel tanks or lines, it could absolutely erupt like that. And frankly, it's more likely in a car with less gas than one in a full tank. I did not know that. Uh, I, I did not know that. I thought that it was fuel fire that uh, keeps it going. Some people seem to think you created the story of it being Israel's doing like there was uh, everyone on the ground, like everyone on the ground wasn't saying that. Yeah, those people are fucking delusional. OK, I've made my perspective very clear. If someone doesn't want to hear that, then they are deliberately missing my my point. OK, because they want to make a better argument for themselves. They want to feel comfortable about why they uh, took the, the uh, IDF narrative across the board without any additional consideration. The only fucking piece of information beyond the assessment, beyond the crater analysis, that this is uh, beyond the crater analysis in and of itself, which doesn't feature artillery shelling as a, as a substitute theory, as an alternative theory, uh, is that it's a rocket misfire. Everybody just ran with it and they didn't do anything else. They just ran with that and nothing else. And I've been trying to explain as to why, as to why this potentially is still likely to be uh, an Israeli bombing. Have you covered similar hindsight about the original 1,400 civilians number from the uh, October 7th attacks? What do you mean? Oh, that like uh, the Israeli numbers might be uh, more? I, I have not. I am looking... The only thing that I know is that uh, the Haaretz uh, article that accounted for every single dead... Uh, I believe stopped updating. I don't know what it is, but there's still there's it's still going to take time. It's still going to take time to fully uh, make a, a, an honest assessment of what happened in Israel as well. I don't know. It's just. Is a good thread on ballistics that pointed to not being a munition that hit the ground. What do you mean? The impact site can be analyzed with these images. What? Projectiles created a crater with one meter diameter. Here's the impact. Okay. I mean, this is all the same shit over and over again. You should pin this on your screen. Based on all available evidence, Hassan considers it more likely than not to be Israeli cause in the event that Hassan is eventually unanimously proven wrong by independent third-party uh, verifiers with on-the-ground information like the UN or the ICC. It does not invalidate the rest of the circumstantial proof that Israel is committing atrocities in Gaza. Yes. The airstrike has to be the longest record-holding stun lock. Yeah, and the grossest part about it is that, like, Israel hasn't stopped fucking bombing. So, like, that's the reason why we're hyper-focusing on this last one or anything. They're just still bombing. They bombed a fucking church, and then people were like, that wasn't actually the church. It was just a courtyard of the church. It was a building that was connected to the church. It doesn't count. Or, uh, or a, a fucking, they vaporized the goddamn ambulance again. Not the first time they've done this thus far. really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. Babies and toddlers were found with their heads decapitated. What separates Israel, the United States, and other democracies is our respect for international law. There's no occupation in Gaza. Oh, uh, yes, there is. Absolutely. Absolutely there is. I don't think there's any way Israel can be expected to coexist or find some diplomatic off-ramp uh, with these savages. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. A full-scale Israeli ground offensive would likely lead to large-scale casualties. They are terrorists. Civilians as human shield. Accept the right of Israel to exist. Whoever strikes Israel will strike back. Does that mean starve? 
the Palestinian people. They have to be eradicated. My view is one side is guilty, and it's not Israel. The war is not just with Hamas. The war is with all the civilians. We're in a religious war here. Finish them. Finish them. Yeah, like every Western media personality, every Western politician, with the exception of like a select few, and and uh, every uh, every IDF spokesperson, or uh, whether they're speaking uh, to the Israeli population or the Western media, has been very open about their interest in doing ethnic cleansing. Like very, very open. There is no way to misconstrue their words. When you say we're fighting human animals, we're, when they say we're going to turn Gaza into a tent city, when they say we're going to do a Nakba that's worse than the Nakba, it's going to be even worse than the Nakba that happened uh, and, and double the Nakba. It's just so crazy. It's just so fucking insane that people are just oblivious to all of those other statements. Like, I, I, I sometimes try to understand how you can operate like this, right? Like, how, how can you look at the situation on the ground? How can you look at what's going on in front of your fucking eyes and just simply refuse to hear what Israeli officials are saying about the atrocities that they are slated to commit and are continuing to commit now? Since October 7th, Roeper Hassan Alliance, I want to say so many fucking awful things to you that I will get banned to if I if I genuinely tell you how I feel. Just follow your leader, you know? Follow your fucking leader. Do the right thing. Do what Adolf did, okay? And just, you know, go out the same fucking way that he did. You stupid bitch. Fucking Nazi losers. There is a hysteria in this country right now, characterized by a type of bloodlust and misinformation campaign we haven't seen since 2001. At the time of filming this, it has been 11 days since the October 7th Hamas attacks in southern Israel and the ensuing devastating Israeli response in Gaza, where Israeli bombardment has killed thousands of Palestinians, including over 1,000 children. The current death toll in Israel from the Hamas attacks stands at 1,400 Israelis. Over the course of just six days, Israel has dropped 6,000 bombs on Gaza. It has wiped out all generations of dozens of families. It has repeatedly bombed the Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt, making it impossible for anyone, including dual nationals, to escape. Israel has also begun forcible displacement of over one million Palestinians under the guise of minimizing casualties. It's bombed Palestinians trying to evacuate through a so-called safe path. As my friends are all pro-Israel, I've come to understand that they consider Western imperialism to be based in morality and that this has to be done so we can deal with Russia and China. These are people in their 30s who are very well informed. Yeah, um, that is the ultimate conclusion that many arrive at at the end of the day when they start defending NATO unconditionally, when they believe in multipolarity to be a problem, when they believe that America has to be the singular force of good. Ultimately, they are well-informed. They're just well-informed by neoliberal hegemonic propaganda that they hear from CNN, MSNBC, and every other fucking institution that's worth a damn. That's it. It's the, it's the notion that, like, we cannot peacefully coexist, and if we are not the ones who are dominating, then our enemies will be dominating, and our enemies are far more barbarian and far more ruthless than we are. Um, and the only way that you can uh, come to that conclusion is if you're completely oblivious to the barbarity that we cause on a daily basis, that you try and desperately avoid uh, uh, understanding, like, the top of the hour ad break, uh, which is here right now. I'm going to run it now. I forgot to run it earlier. Okay. It's basically, uh, you, you can only feel that way if you, if you feel uh, as though if you are, have been taught that all of our enemies are in the wrong and they're barbaric, that narrative has never changed. That narrative is how we justified uh, conquistadors. That narrative is how we justified pilgrims and, and the indigenous genocide though, that our founding fathers engaged in. It is always the same. We are 
we're not co colonizing uh, a, a population that was vibrant. We are simply civilizing them with our colonial uh, uh, objectives. Okay? We, we are taming them. We're taming the, the barbarians. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's an ahistoric uh, narrative that still is, is uh, repeated uh, regularly. When, when people talk about uh, indigenous genocide, they say, well, they were cannibals. You know, they were fucking horrifying monsters and we had to kill them. Same with the indigenous population in Latin America. They had to be colonized. They were doing, uh, you know, incredibly, incredibly barbaric acts. Not considering how barbaric our acts were in, in making them our colonial subjects, enslaving them. Oh. So, yeah. That's what a lot of, of American liberals finally arrive at when they are, are met with the scary imposition where is it going to be the evil that I know is evil and bad, but it's like being conducted by people who look like me, who sound like me, who I believe have my best interest at heart, or the other side who I don't know, can't understand, look different than me, and also I've been conditioned into thinking is like barbaric. Well, in that situation, I'm always going to side with America, is the perspective of many people when they are honest about it, they're, when they're honest about their assessment. And that's why they say, you know, it's the, it's the lesser of two evils. It's, it's the more moral force here that is engaging in uh, the... the uh, extraction of natural resources from the third world and and the death and destruction that it has facilitated for years and years. I said. Passage. And in the midst of all of this, Israel has also enforced a siege on Gazans, cutting off access to food, water, and electricity. It has killed several dozen Palestinians and arrested hundreds in the West Bank where the Israeli state has distributed thousands of weapons to settlers, planning on arming thousands more. What Israel is doing in Gaza is by every objective and humane measure an atrocity. It is carrying out war crime after war crime, compounded by more war crimes, lending themselves to what many are calling an impending genocide of the Palestinian people, if not one already. In U.S. news media, lockstep with the Israeli state and the American political establishment is giving them permission, a carte blanche, to do it. That Israel has a right to defend itself and that Israel is right to defend itself, however it chooses. Welcome to a special episode of Backspace, where we look at how this story right now is being told in the headlines and how everyone's lost their goddamn mind. In the pilot episode of this series, published during the 2021 Israeli assault on Gaza, we specifically looked at the type of language that is used in U.S. news media coverage that purposely obfuscates Israeli transgressions and the reality of the so-called conflict. That it is not a conflict, but rather an occupation where there is an occupier and an occupied. It's not really an eviction. It's forced ethnic di displacement, to be accurate, because an eviction implies legal authority. While the Israeli occupation has no legitimate jurisdiction over the eastern parts of occupied Jerusalem under international law. The language hasn't changed. There are still equivocations made between the Palestinians and Israelis as though there are equal parties to a conflict. And there is still the complete removal of the context of decades of an occupation that is the source of all violence. But what I yeah. want to focus on is how at the core of U.S. news media coverage right now is a premise that is both loudly and silently agreed upon. That, as I mentioned earlier, Israel has a right to do what it's doing, and it is right to do what it's doing. It is that premise, that permission, that has for decades, and not just during the past 11 days, dehumanized Palestinians to the point where their lives are at best collateral damage, and at worst, necessary. And it is that premise, that permission, that protects Israel 
from any and all criticism. Well, the fact of the matter is that Hamas uses civilians as human shields. Yes. Uh, unlike Israel, we use our weapons to defend our population. They use the population uh, to hide their weapons behind them. So first we have to note that there are currently no American newsroom correspondents in Gaza because Israel closes access as soon as it launches an offensive. The correspondents we do have there, who are all Palestinians, are struggling to survive as much as all other Palestinians, risking their lives while struggling with access to food, water, and electricity. We took very little stuff, bro. We took whatever we could. Yumna, are you okay? I'm okay, but the situation is extremely terrible. Instead, we find dozens of U.S. reporters reporting from Tel Aviv. And that vantage point is reflected in the news. Reports from Gaza are limited, while the human stories from Israel are overwhelming the coverage despite the level of crisis and devastation in Gaza. We need everyone to help us, please. Bro, I've been live for six hours and 30 minutes. I walked away for 30 seconds on a video that is basically repeating every single thing I've said about American media. This guy waited for hours so we could say top tier reaction. Take it up with Al Jazeera. They're pretty fucking, uh, I'm sure the, the journalists that were involved in making this fucking footage are probably perfectly happy with me playing this, even if I don't uh, react to it wall to wall, you know? I mean, dude, loser behavior to the fucking maximum, dog. Really, think about that. Think about that, dude. Last time he was in here was during drama, by the way. Goes to show you what this guy's opinion is. Maybe you can... Listen, I'm not going to ban you. Swag dog 420 no scope. I want you to, to sit here and watch this and maybe learn a thing or two. I promise you, okay? If you come in here with charitability, your perspective will most likely change, okay? I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. So they took to social media asking for 10 people to come to the funeral. That's the number required for Jewish religious ceremonies. It's called a minion. But this is what they got. 10,000 Israelis responded to share in the family's grief. What we find in U.S. news coverage is the humanization of Israelis, which was never in question anyway, through the further dehumanization of Palestinians, which depends on the premise and permission of Israel's right to violence. Can you explain the relate? Hamas is... is the elected government inside Gaza, what the relationship is in times like this between Hamas and the civilians, the people uh, in these residential buildings um, who may be wanting to move to somewhere else. And so we see celebrated journalists forego basic journalistic practices and ethics, like, for instance, giving full deference to Israeli officials and the Israeli military who are presented as sober and objective interlocutors to discuss their own policy. Yes, she is. She is a fan of mine. Like the person who is... Uh, uh, is, is policies of starvation, forcible displacement, and bombing. We have called on Gazan civilians to vacate the northern part of the Gaza Strip out of a concern for their I'm safety. i of hers as well. And according to the reports that I have, Many Gazans are indeed heeding that warning, despite the fact that Hamas is telling them not to. We see journalists present unsubstantiated incendiary claims coming from Israeli state and military sources as factual, without any disclaimers. Yep. Consider CNN's Sarah Sidner, who was among many journalists to push the unsubstantiated story about Hamas fighters beheading 40 Israeli babies and toddlers a claim that even Israel has refused to investigate. The Israeli prime minister spokesman just confirmed babies and toddlers were found with their heads decapitated. And it was a claim that was used to push the Israeli propaganda campaign calling Hamas ISIS, a framing that has been used to justify the bombardment of Gazans. Hamas is ISIS, and just as ISIS was crushed so too will Hamas be crushed. Because beheading babies, 
decapitated babies, spreads and catches on for a reason. It invokes ISIS, which encourages a specific justification and course of action. That needs to be seen in the context of the Israeli defense minister calling Gazans human animals. It needs to be seen in the context of decades of depictions of Arabs and Muslims as pathologically violent and barbaric. Even you, if you get rid of Osama bin Laden tomorrow, you're going to have dozens and hundreds of Osama bin Ladens uh, all over that part of the world. And that's why 40 beheaded Israeli babies resonates so much deeper in an American media and political landscape than just stating the fact that several Israeli children had been killed. And it resonates so much deeper than the over 1,000 Palestinian children killed by Israeli bombs. Dead children are dead children, but U.S. coverage over the last 11 days has made it clear that they're not. Another example of what is essentially stenography for the Israeli military was this. That's NBC correspondent Richard Engel tweeting that the Israeli military had claimed that Hamas was behind the October 13th bombing of a so-called safe passage for Palestinians in the north to evacuate to the south following Israeli evacuation orders. 70 Palestinians were killed in that bombing, and the evidence we do have does indicate that it was from an Israeli airstrike. And then there was the October 17th bombing of the Al-Ahli Arab Hospital in Gaza, which killed at least 500 Palestinians. While it was initially reported as an Israeli airstrike, Israeli officials and news channels started immediately pushing that the massacre had resulted from an Islamic Jihad rocket misfire. Immediately, most U.S. newsrooms began parroting this talking point without pushing back. You mentioned IDF said that they are looking into the incident, that it could potentially have been a, a, a Hamas misfire, if you like, of a rocket. So what's wrong with Engel's tweet or Ward's report? Well, it's emblematic of, again, what's at the core of coverage of Israel, not only in this moment, but always. The words of Israeli officials and military are presented as simply matter of fact. Und oh. This is what the this is why uh, I'm so frustrated about this, specifically the Al Ahli Hospital uh, bombing. It's the fact, it's the fact that there is, like, there is no conclusive evidence that verifies anything that Israel has said, and only evidence that has shown things that Israel has said to be wrong, including the inconsistent evidence that they pointed to on their own uh, uh, efforts to say this was, the pal this was the Islamic Jihad rocket that misfired. Not only is there no signature, no way to like map out the pattern of a rocket trajectory that misfired that you technically should see, okay? But also, on top of that, the only, the only evidence that has been presented so far has been presented by the IDF claiming that it was the Islamic Jihad rocket, which they originally said was Hamas and very quickly said was Islamic Jihad and, uh, instead and then showed a phone call that was also inconclusive. The audio they provided was laughed at by most people. It's not even featured in most of the coverage from mainstream media. The phone call itself is like avoided as though it was not a thing that IDF pointed out. If you were to look at the, the many different things that they brought up on the, on the side of the IDF, like the fact that they lied and said that there was no bombing campaign happening in that region at the time, which was just a lie. That was straight up a fucking lie. Like, we saw it with our own two eyes that that was a lie. It's just like, the same thing happened when they sniped the Al Jazeera Journo. Yes, Shireen Abu Akhlik. They did the exact same thing. But in that circumstance, it was so dead to rights that every single person very immediately was like, oh yeah, you say it was the Janine Brigade? You pointed to video footage showing that it was the Janine Brigade that actually did this, except they were literally... 
a mile and a half away in an entirely uh, different corridor of the fucking Janine refugee camp. And the only people in the vicinity were IDF snipers. Disputed and thus truthful, trustworthy. And the Israeli military knows this, using the same deny, distract, diminish playbook every single time. There is two sides. One side, the Israeli side, who wish and dream for peace, for optimism, for yeah, life, okay. for dignity. And there is one side that cherish death, that cherish destruction, that brings this destruction. Fundamentalism, extremist. You need to choose a side. It is worth noting that MSNBC's Ralph Sanchez offered a rare instance in all this coverage of what reporting on this type of situation actually should look like. There are instances in the past where the Israeli military has said things in the immediate aftermath of an incident that have turned out not to be true in the long This is the only time that there that mainstream media was like legitimately truthful about this. It's is true. Anyone that does not Anyone that does not fucking mention that. Anyone that does not mention that is, is so indecent. Like you're, they've done this so many fucking times. They've done, the IDF has done this so many times. So many fucking times. And for the record, the major problem here on the, the Hamas side is this, okay? This part is also true. A senior Hamas official says nothing is left of the munition that hit the Ahli Arab hospital in Gaza City last week. This part is literally, this part is literally inconsistent with uh, prior uh, bombings that have happened. Usually you can find a piece of the, uh, the, the bomb and, and provide it. Now, the other thing that I will say the other thing that I will say is they didn't even fucking go to the distance and like find uh, a, what I was speculating originally, what I thought Hamas might do if they don't actually have, uh, if they don't actually have the fucking bomb material, I thought they could very clearly provide uh, a different bomb that was dumped uh, in a different part uh, of Gaza and then say, hey, here, we found bomb material. Like we found a piece of the bomb. It's not that hard to find fucking bomb uh, material. Let's be real. But no, they haven't. They haven't brought it up. There, there needs to be evidence, and I'm, I, I'm certain that there must be evidence. Uh, any kind of artillery, any kind of shelling, any kind of bomb that they drop, there would still be evidence. Okay. Six days after Hamas accused Israel of bombing a hospital in Gaza and killing hundreds of people, the armed Palestinian group has yet to produce or describe any evidence linking Israel to the strike, says it cannot find the munition that hit the site and has declined to provide detail to support its count of the casualties. With an hour of the blast, the Hamas-run Gazan Health Ministry accused Israel of attacking the Ahli Arab Hospital, a medical center in Gaza City. The allegation was soon denied by Israel, but quickly accepted and amplified by Arab leaders across the Middle East, setting off unrest throughout the region. But in the days since, new evidence contradicting the Hamas claim has emerged. The Gazan authorities have changed their story about the blast. Spokespeople have released death tolls where varying from 500 to 833 before settling on 471. The Hamas-run health ministry has also declined to release further details about those 471 victims. All, and all traces of the munition have been seemingly vanished from the site of the blast, making it impossible to assess its provenance. Raising further questions about Hamas's claims, the impact site turned out to be a hospital parking lot and not the hospital itself. On Sunday, Hamas turned down requests from the Times to view any available evidence of the munition it said had struck the hospital, claiming it had disintegrated beyond recognition. The missile is dissolved like salt in the water, said Ghazi Hamad, a, serious, uh, a senior Hamas official in a phone interview. It's vaporized. Nothing is left. This part is a little ridiculous. This is the, this is, if it's a fragmentary bomb, there will be no shells. What do you mean? There will be fragments. There's no way that there is no, no, there's no way that a bomb fully disintegrates. Okay. That is, I mean, you have to be honest about it. That part is actually, um, that part is actually uh, very suspicious.
Salama Maruf, the head of the Hamas run government media office, said in a text message, who says we're obligated to present the remnants of every rocket that kills our people in general? You can come and research and confirm yourselves from the evidence we possess. See, that part is not mentioned in the fucking uh, silly ass uh, lead. He, I mean, in the in the title here. But the reality is that like they are open to third party investigators, whereas Israel is not. For Palestinians, the accusation of Israeli responsibility for the blast has cemented the perception that Israel's response to the Hamas-led terrorist attacks has been disproportionate and vengeful. The Hamas-run Gazan Health Ministry says the Israeli strikes have killed more than 4,300 Palestinians, 40% of them children, and the high reported death toll has undermined international support for Israel's counter-attack. Sorry to keep repeating this, but I think it's important for you to know. That's why the liquid fuel we use is used in really tiny quantities in the engine. Also, I worked in Navy on a five-inch gun operator. I absolutely believe that the damage to Al Ahly Hospital is consistent with high explosive airburst artillery fire. Credential six-year veteran in the Navy as a fire controlman on the MK-34 GWS. Anyway. All it takes is seeing Palestinians as humans for someone to understand the truth. My religiously far-right mother recognizes Israel is wrong only because she volunteered to help Palestinian refugees in Jordan in 2007 and saw even then how bad it was. Yeah, that's it. Like, anyone that fucking covers what's going on in Gaza, if they, if they actually did a birthright-style trip to Gaza, they would know. They would understand it so quickly. If you can't fucking empathize with these people, you should see the way that they live. You should see the conditions that they're forced into. And then you'll understand. Then you'll really understand. And then you'll never stop being angry for the rest of your fucking life. There are so many, there are so many fucking people. Okay, so many people that have that have gone into Gaza from Anthony Bourdain to Daniel Day Lewis to all these like random celebrities in Hollywood that have actually been to Gaza and their perspective is is forever different. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you this much. Amongst the American military there are a shit ton of veterans who served, who went to Afghanistan, who went to Iraq, who are, especially in this community, as a matter of fact, very conflicted about their service and actually are anti-war activists now. That is because they saw the gruesome shit on the ground. That is because they were, they, they, they were met with their own morals when push came to shove and they behaved as, as uh, violent weapons at the behest of the U.S. military, at the behest of the military-industrial complex. They saw that and recognized the unimaginable pain that they were causing to others. Those people, for the most part, especially a lot of active-duty combat veterans, for the most part, will have a different perspective on, on Palestinians than, than many others. Like, even if they are reactionary in other directions, even if they're reactionary in general... Uh, you don't have to be a left flank vet or a PSL guy like Mike Prisoner. I'm talking like straight up guy who's like middle of the ground, maybe a Republican even. But if you've fucking been down there and you saw it and you recognize the humanity of the people in Afghanistan, recognize the humanity of the people in Iraq and, and how horrifying the conditions were for those people, um, you will absolutely, you will absolutely have a different perspective on what Palestinians are going through right now. Is horrifying. Long run. And the one example I'll give you is that when the Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh was killed in the occupied West Bank, the Israeli military initially said. 
that she was killed by Palestinian gunmen, and it was only months and months later that they admitted that it was likely an Israeli soldier who fired the fatal shot. Now, while the number of Palestinians killed in Israeli bombardment continues to rise at a striking rate, U.S. newsrooms haven't really given space to those demanding a ceasefire, a parallel to the position the United States government itself has taken. Here's CNN's Jake Tapper speaking with Nikki Finish them Haley about concern for Palestinian civilian life. Do you think the U.S., Israel, Egypt needs to be doing more to help these innocent Palestinian civilians get out of harm's way? Although you just heard Jake Sullivan say one of the problems is Hamas is keeping uh, the civilians in Gaza. They don't want them to leave. Throughout the segment, there is no mention of a ceasefire, which would certainly take civilians out of harm's way. Citing Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, Tapper also places the onus on Hamas for what's happening in Gaza, not the country that controls Gaza and has been carpet bombing it. Because again, the premise is silently agreed upon. Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel is right to defend itself. But look, it goes well beyond this. Yeah, there's so much more. While people keep referencing, this is Israel's 9-11, this is Israel's 9-11, what keeps being missed is that, yeah, it is a lot like 9-11, specifically in the way the US news media and its political establishment, choking yep. on the fog of war, absolutely lost their minds, cultivated one of the worst periods of mass hysterical racism. It's wild to me that like, that, that is one of the craziest parts about it, but I guess it's just because it's white supremacy, you know, and it's, it's a comfortable, like Americans are far too comfortable in that, in that category. You know what I mean? They're, they're so good at, at, at playing this familiar field, right? Um, it is very frustrating to, to see how quickly they, they got into that skin that post 9-11 glow, how quickly they jumped to it. Kind of wild. ...and gallivanted into two of the bloodiest wars of the past century, leading to complete destabilization of entire regions and millions dead. We have editorials from leading papers calling to stand with Israel against war crimes as it carries out horrific war crimes. We have op-eds by professors calling their students anti-Semitic and imploring employers not to hire them because they stand against the Israeli occupation. Against and by the way, I just want you to know something. Like, it, it, at, that, at this point, it's not about like, oh, you're not engaging in proper condemnations, right? I need you to understand something. This guy got fucking replaced as the editor-in-chief of eLife, the journal, okay, the Funder Researcher Collaboration Open Access Journal for Research in the Life and Biomedical Sciences, for retweeting a The Onion piece that calls out the indifference of the pal lives of Palestinian civilians, okay? This was his tweet. Dying Gazans criticized for not, uh, not using last words to condemn Hamas. The Onion speaks with more courage, insight, and moral clarity than the leaders of every academic institution put together. I wish there was, I wish there were a The Onion University. Like, at that point, I, I need you to understand something. At that point, this is not about like, oh, you didn't, you know, deal with the situation with the proper uh, carefulness that it demands. Like, not only is he correct, he's morally in the right here, Okay. He didn't even he didn't even say anything that was like out of pocket. So why did this happen? He's also Jewish with family in Israel. See, I didn't even know that. Holy shit. That's crazy. Do we adopt fog of war from gaming lexicon? No. <laughs> what? No, gaming lexicon adopted fog of war from fog of war, from war. What the fuck? Oh my god, Twitch Twitch audiences are so brain broken. God damn, spell out my name. I'm proud of you for being the most gamer in here. 
Nobody has ever been as gamer. Anyway, I didn't know he was Jewish and had family in Israel, but ultimately, it is, it is ridiculous that this is what gets you possibly removed from your position. Okay? What the fuck is going on? Upstairs, someone... I think my mom is drilling something. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, Felix is right. Exactly. Nothing anyone ever says will ever be measured, qualified, or even hand enough for people making demands of you. There's no perfect set of words that will save anyone from this stuff because it's not about that. No one is offended. They just want you to be afraid. That's it. You shouldn't, you should never say anything about Israel unless it's like literally, uh, unless you're, you're basically, uh, you know, unless you're a, a fucking political commentator who doesn't even have any like advertisers or anything. You know what I mean? That's the point. Every sane person on earth is horrified and traumatized by what Hamas did and wants it to never happen again. All the more so as a Jew with Israeli family. But I'm also horrified by the collective punishment already being meted out on Gazans and the worst that is about to come. This is on the 14th. The Onion is not making light of the situation, nor am I. These articles are using satire to make a deadly serious point about this hor uh, horrific tragedy. Then you could have said that instead of mocking and ridiculing Israel's pain. Emptying empty words for seven days. You haven't tweeted a single time uh, words of support for Israeli researchers, some of which lost kids and friends. And now you dare give us military advice from your privileged position of safety. What a moral bankruptcy. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? What are we doing collectively in the Western world? What are we doing? It's so, the, the moral bankruptcy, the moral bankruptcy that we are facing as we clap like fucking seals for an active ethnic cleansing campaign. Disgusting to me. Absolutely disgusting. Here, look at this fucking baboon. They're digging their tunnels deeper. More arm shipments are coming in, and all Israel is doing is launching airstrikes, which then Hamas films, and then so-called civilians crawl out of the rubble, and they hand the tape to Al Jazeera, and the Arab world explodes. This is so funny, because what he's doing, no, that's like, what he's saying is literally, like, he thinks he's spitting right now. This was like Pallywood takes from, like, 2008. You know what I mean? He thinks he's him. This is not new. This is not clever. This is literally old propaganda that he's rehashing. And guess what? In 2008, many people were unfamiliar. And I think the situation uh, was, was heavily in favor of, of uh, Israel in general. We're not there anymore. Everybody's got a fucking phone camera. The whole, like, Pallywood narrative makes you look like a fucking asshole, okay? So bad. They're digging their tunnels deeper. More arm shipments are coming in, and all Israel is doing is launching airstrikes, which then Hamas films, and then so-called civilians crawl out of the rubble, and they hand the tape to Al Jazeera, and the Arab world explodes. Yeah, classic, dude. Fucking classic take. So gross.
I swear the bots are out on Reddit. I just refuse to believe so many bloodthirsty people are out there. I think what you should not lose sight of is how many people are taking it to the streets. That's important. Against apartheid. We have billionaire CEOs seeking to ruin the lives of students who wrote a letter akin to the Haaretz editorial blaming the Hamas attack on Benjamin Netanyahu. MSNBC removed its three Muslim anchors from the anchor chair. Reuters declines to even name Israel in its statements about the killing of one of its journalists, Issam Abdullah. The State Department has asked its diplomats to not use the terms ceasefire, de-escalation, and restoration of calm, an approach adopted by U.S. news media. President Joe Biden is taking talking points from Netanyahu and lying about confirming images of 40 decapitated Israeli babies. Marches in solidarity with Palestinians against the Israeli bombings and siege and occupation are being called pro-Hamas rallies. The FBI and ICE are visiting Muslims and Palestinians at their homes, at mosques. And before the Israeli government began pushing the Al Ahli Arab hospital bombing as a result of rocket misfire, the Pentagon supported and justified a hospital as a legitimate target. It should be very clear. Yeah, this is this is the funniest part about it is that like America was already on board, even if Israel did 100% without a shred of doubt bomb that fucking hospital. They said it. They said it the morning, just like uh, that that. Uh, that other guy, the, the fucking social media guy. That Hamas is the one putting Palestinians uh, or those in Gaza at great risk. I mean, they are putting their command and control um, units inside hospitals, inside areas where there are innocent civilians. And the United States isn't alone in this cravenous hysteria. Canada, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany have all joined in to give Israel a carte blanche while pushing their anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, and anti-Palestinian rhetoric and policies into overdrive. We spoke about several demonstrations across Britain during which people voiced their backing for Hamas. We accept that this was poorly phrased and was a misleading description of the pro-Palestinian demonstrations. But do you condone what Hamas has, has done over the past 24 hours? Listen, why is it the job of the Occupy to come and uh, uh, condone or condemn or protect the security of its occupier? And so when a six-year-old Palestinian-American Muslim boy, Wadi Al-Fayyum, is stabbed 26 times by his mother's landlord, who was concerned about the non-existent global day of jihad, as far as I understand, that man was not Jewish, by the way. Just a fucking dude who was radicalized, even if he was, by the way. Not because he was Jewish that he did this hate crime, but because he was radicalized by fucking far-right Fox News. That's what they fucking said. Just like I told you. I told you. Yeah, people said that he fucking lost his mind watching uh, fucking Fox News. How many times does this have to happen for people to go, yeah, you know what? The greatest danger, the, gr the biggest danger for American safety and security is literally far-right radio talk show hosts, okay? It's not fucking uh, Muslims against Jews or anything like that. It is the stochastic terrorism that comes from far-right Fox News and far-right uh, radio talk shows, okay? And I told you, I told you before it happened. I told you, Jews in America should never fear Muslims in America. They should fear white supremacist neo-Nazis. Same goes for Muslims. Muslims in America should never fear Jews in America. They should fear white supremacist neo-Nazis. Those are the motherfuckers that are contributing to damn near every single fucking uh, uh, domestic terrorism act here in the United States of America. That made headlines across the country. Who are we blaming? Are we blaming Hamas? Or are we blaming a media and political landscape that decided that the greatest lesson from the mass hysteria following 9-11 that led to some of the greatest civil and human rights violations? Actually, good take for once. Yeah, this is the first time I've had a good take. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
My man's are actually good take for once to a take that I have had in perpetuity, I think. First one. First good take, boys. We got it. Violations in recent history was to repeat it? U.S. news media, long a stenographer for U.S. foreign policy, is once again washing its hands in blood while giving permission and protection to unrestricted Israeli violence against Palestinians. The coverage of the occupation has to change. The coverage of this current devastation has to change. Not changing it is complicity complicity in what we have allowed and are allowing to happen to the Palestinians. You are genocide supporters. You are not welcome here. Genocide supporters. Yeah, that man spat. Like, he was 100% correct on that. Uh, distributing weapons to the illegal settlers. Yeah, we already covered that. Here, let's look at this. Real fuel. We've authorized medicine. We've author authorized water. We've authorized foodstuffs. We've not authorized anything else. And we're in a state of war with Hamas, and we have no interest whatsoever in helping them uh, uh, beef up their military machine on the country. Okay. We want to destroy their military machine. So just to be clear, even if they released all the hostages, that doesn't change your mind on fuel being allowed into Gaza. Is that right? The government... The government decision is that fuel doesn't go in because it'll be t stolen by Hamas and it'll be used by them to power rockets that are fired into Israel to kill our people. We've all been talking about when this ground invasion is going to occur. Of course, what's that, what that is going to look like. We've heard from the U.S. that they've urged it. They've urged the Israeli government to delay it. Do you believe that a ground invasion, if it goes forward, makes the release of more hostages less likely, sir? We, we don't take a ground uh, incursion uh, lightly. First of all, there's the fate of the hostages. And secondly, we know that our young uh, soldiers going into battle, uh, it's, it'll be dangerous. I mean, Hamas has, has dug in. They've got their underground network of tunnels. They've got their booby traps. They've got their bunkers. Uh, it'll be difficult fighting. And, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm realistic. I know that those young soldiers going into battle uh, will face life-threatening situations, and I'm, unfortunately, not all of them will come back uh, alive, and that's a sad reality. Though I was speaking to some young soldiers, and you know, they're committed to this. They know it needs to be done. They know that we cannot continue to live. I'm losing my mind. Ask okay. a question. What about fucking the hospitals? Brown, like, just you can't let them get away, Seriously, please. You know the risks involved, both for the hostages and for our fighting. He literally uh, said men. babies are going to die, and that's a risk I'm willing to take. Be done. Uh, let's be clear. Israel refuses to go back to the sort of reality of 6 a.m. on, on uh, October 7th, where we live next to this terrorist the difference is if there was a role reversal and Hezbollah or like fucking Hamas was in control of the entire area and they were doing this to Jews, I would be fucking screaming, okay? I would be screaming just as fucking ferociously as I'm screaming now. The difference is these guys would only be mad in that circumstance. That's what's very frustrating about the situation, okay? They do not have the same consistency for the humanity of, of civilians on either on both sides Still they just only care about one though, side about what happens to the palestinian civilians if israel is successful and no one has really articulated who, who would be in charge of gaza if that does happen but when you look at what happened and president biden being in tel aviv last week sitting in on that wartime cabinet meeting how much influence does the u.s have over when israel does move forward with that ground invasion look america is our best friend it's our strongest ally and in Israel, people are, 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 have appreciated greatly President Biden's forthright support, and not just in his words, but in his actions. Uh, he's giving us the tools we need. He's replenishing our armaments so we have the tools we need to defeat Hamas. And by moving those two carrier groups to the region, he's shown that, you know, he wants to deter others who might see the war in Gaza as an excuse to attack Israel on another front. I mean, we have nothing but praise for, for, for President Biden. And of course, when you have a good friend, you listen to what they have to say. But Israel is a sovereign country and will make our own decisions according to our own assessment of our national security. You are a senior advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu. When we hear from some 
some officials or some former military officers who say that they believe he should resign over how this was handled, over the government's role and lack of a response, a slow response on that day. When you speak to him, I mean, does he accept responsibility, any responsibility for what happened on October 7th in terms of how the government handled that? I mean, in Israel, there is no shortage of former uh, officers, and uh, they've all got their own opinions. And you'll have a whole range of sure. opinions uh, across the spectrum. Uh, Bro, they can't even get them to be like, yeah, these guys were in the wrong, like, which uh, is a fact that 85% of the country believes. But in America, you can't even get them to address conversation that. Conversation in Israel about lessons learned and, and mistakes made. I mean, first of all, we were surprised. I'm losing it. Didn't get in time. That I'm not even kidding. Look. I feel like Israeli media does a fucking better job of talking to these to these goons than American media does because at least like they got skin in the fucking game. You know what I mean? They got like family members and shit that are uh, trapped in fucking Gaza. Like, yes, I know that there are obviously a, a shit ton of reactionary. Uh, uh, there's a shit ton of reactionaries right now that are basically begging to wipe out Gaza, but. On this issue, at least, they press a little bit more than American media does. It's fucking crazy. Like, on this issue, I'm saying acknowledge for the responsibility that you have, okay? That is an issue that the, the Israeli media has covered better than American media. They can't even... Piers Morgan even uh, is, like, addressing this better than fucking CNN at this point. What the hell? Process of looking at lessons that need to be learned. Ambassador Mark Regev, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks for having me, Caitlin. Much appreciated. And I should note, as far as his comments there on fuel, what we here at CNN know is that no fuel has entered Gaza in these aid trucks since the war began. It's our understanding that the ambassador was referencing what we heard from an IDF spokesperson earlier, alleging that Hamas stole fuel that had already been in Gaza. Coming up on the rest of the source tonight, the kibbutz where Narit and Yohan... Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Oh my Lord. Holy fucking moly. I can't do this. I can't do this. It's so much. It's too much. It's too much. May I recommend this video on Israel propaganda and similarly Starship Troopers? No. But thank you. Um, there's a lot going on in the world that I just haven't touched yet. But here, I wanted to show this special rap, uh, report from uh, UN. Um, I also have Spider-Man 2 downloaded and I want to play it as well. But here, let's just in nations in let's New just York. talk about Kristen, this real quick. What mistakes are they referring to? Um, yeah, Spooderman, Spooderman two. A lot of you are excited for it. Um, you should be excited for the top of the hour ad break. Here's the three minute ad break now. Well, you may recall that after the attacks of September 11, 2001, which killed some nearly 3,000 Americans, the worst uh, attack on U.S. soil in history, uh, that led to the war on terrorism, the so-called war on terrorism, a war that was waged, according to Special Rapporteur Finola Ni Alan, uh, with violations of international law. Specifically, she talked about uh, the rounding up of Muslim men, uh, many of whom were tortured and sent to Guantanamo Bay prison facility without due process, a facility that continues to exist, she said, and continues to uh, meet standards for violating international law, specifically uh, for its degrading treatment, uh, cruel and inhuman treatment of the people who have been held there. But what was really interesting is that she said these actions didn't have the desired effect. If anything, uh, the attempt to crack down on terrorism just made it worse. Have a listen for yourself to what she said. What did we learn from 9-11? That the response was a, in deep and profound violation of international law. And the cost of that 
was the perpetuation of the cycle of conditions conducive to violence. It wasn't an end to violence. It provided the basis for further radicalization, further extremism conducive to terrorism. It provided um, a, a global nomenclature of a, quote, war on terror, which was not only profoundly ineffective in preventing terrorism, but actually spawned decades of serious and egregious violations of international law. And Crystal, what was her reaction to Israel's response to Hamas's attack? Well, she was unequivocal in condemning the attack itself by Hamas, which led to the deaths of 1,400 Israelis, many of them civilians. Um, but she also echoed what the UN has been saying all along, that any response has to be in line with international law, civilians must be protected, hospitals must be protected, aid must be allowed in. Otherwise, it will not end the cycle of violence that we've seen in the Middle East for so long now. All right, Kristen, thanks for that. Uh, Kristen Sulimi at the United Nations. So... Damn, she's spitting. Sounds like she read Hassan's article. Yeah, sounds like, sounds like she's saying, never forget, 9-11 was awful. What we did after was worse. Today, we must also remember how our leaders exploded 9-11 for political ends. Written by a particular contributor by the name of Hassan Piker on September 11, 2017. Huh. Interesting-ass article, dog. That's crazy. You know, Put that in the fucking leaderboard for another moment of, of moral clarity and consistency from the Hassan Hassanabi broadcast for the past fucking decade. Shit. Fuck. That was two years before I said what I said that went viral on Fox News, by the way. This guy's out of his fucking mind, okay? Richie Torres is just like, I, I think, not sane. I, I'm not even kidding. Like, he's been tweeting up a fucking storm, including this shit. A fringe figure wrote an op-ed attacking me for affirming Israel's right to defend itself in the wake of the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. She is part of an anti-Israel organization named Jews for Racial and Economic Justice. Don't be fooled by the names. He goes on to say, Jews for Racial and Economic Justice and Jewish Voices for Peace are anti-Israel organizations that exemplify deceptive advertising. That's crazy. He's like... Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, there's so many fucking Christians in the Western world that have, like, actually lost their minds and don't realize that they're literally doing anti-Semitism when they just, like, jump over the point and start saying, like, these are bad Jews. I put them on a list, these bad Jews. Not the good Jews, these bad Jews. It's like, listen, dog, when Ben Shapiro does that, that's anti-Semitism, okay? He's Jewish, and that's still anti-Semitism. You definitely can't do that. Okay? The fuck is wrong with you? What the absolute fuck is going on? You can't do that. What is happening? It's like German police arresting Jews that are protesting uh, the, the Palestinian occupation. It's like, I don't know, man. That's a little close to comfort for me. I feel like we've been there. You know? You can't do that. When did this happen? Like, how? Why do you feel comfortable doing this? Hello? Who the fuck are you? Kind of weird, dude. We're not that far removed from the fucking Holocaust, homie. You can't be doing shit like that. You can't be like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't understand. I love Israel, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> what, are you, what, are we, what are we doing? It's insane. A state commissioner against anti-Semitism, Michael Bloom, said to Jewish Voice for Peace that they are alleged Jews, a.k.a. fake. A state commissioner against anti-Semitism in Germany. Nice. Nice, dude. Barnaby Rain, a Jewish PhD student in history, breaks down the conflict and all of its brutality. Barnaby, um, the bombing of this hospital has had an incredible amount of impact, regardless of what caused it. But what's your, what's your take on this? Do you have an interpretation? Israel ordered 22 hospitals evacuated 
the World Health Organization called that a death sentence for patients in those hospitals who couldn't be moved and so were being left to die. One of the hospitals that Israel ordered evacuated was the hospital that has now been bombed. So Israel said it was going to bomb hospitals. Then a hospital got bombed. Israel's dropped more bombs on Gaza this week than America dropped on Afghanistan in the first year of their occupation of Afghanistan in 2001. Fadi Diab, a priest in Ramallah, said, we hold the occupying power responsible. If it's good enough for a priest, it's good enough for me. And we know that Israel continues to block electricity from baby incubators and dialysis patients. We know that Israel continues to block water from surgeons and elderly people. I mean, people in Gaza don't have access to clean water, food from survivors. And we know that Israel bombs roads after it tells people to flee along those roads. We also know that on October the 14th, Israel targeted ambulances. And we know that before this bombing, Israel had already killed 28 medical staff in Gaza. We know too, as you said, that part of the Israeli playbook is to lie about the attacks, the murders. It doesn't please me to say this. In 1996, Israel shelled a UN compound in Lebanon, blamed it on others. It wasn't true. In 2006, Israel murdered an entire family on a beach in Gaza. The IDF had a quick investigation that, uh, uh, that said the IDF wasn't responsible. It wasn't true. In 2014, Mark Regev, we've seen him again on our TV screens recently, claimed that UNRWA sites, that's UN Refugee and Works Agency sites, were used to launch missiles. The UN investigated, it wasn't true. Last year, Israeli forces murdered Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, blamed Palestinians, it wasn't true. Journalists can't really investigate what's going on in Gaza. You know what the craziest part is? This dude is obviously 100% right. And he just dropped a, a shit ton of like uh, moments where Israel has done this exact same thing. And it's not even half of it. Like, that's the craziest. Like, I, off the top of my mind, immediately I can think of the one time that they bombed a cemetery, for example, which I believe he didn't even bring up. Um, uh, and a couple of years uh, prior where they killed a bunch of kids and then immediately said it was Islamic Jihad. And then later... Uh, later turned around and we're like, oh, actually it wasn't, it was us. And also we're not actually investigating anybody and no one is going to jail. So there are so many examples of Israel doing this and then claiming that it's actually uh, the Islamic Jihad or Hamas that did it so many times over that like, even when you drop 10 in a row, it's not, it's nowhere near the entirety of the situation because even the Washington Post, which is not, I tell you, a friend of the Palestinian people, says it is, quote, becoming impossible to report from Gaza under the conditions of siege and bombardment that Israel has established. So part of what concerns me here, looking at the Western media, because this whole brutal siege and bombardment campaign by Israel has been an object lesson in the racism that structures everything in our media ecosystem. It has been quite, well, I want to say extraordinary, but uh, I haven't even been that surprised to watch Western journalists rush to report an old blood libel, to rush to report that 40 babies were beheaded by bloodthirsty, savage Palestinians, even though it later turned out there wasn't much evidence for it, completely ignore, by the way, Hamas's accounts of what happened in their attack and just report the Israeli accounts. But then when Israel says, despite this record of lying, when Israel says that they're not sure who bombed this hospital or blames Palestinians for killing their own children, uh, journalists rush to say, of course, we must be measured and take them seriously, including, I should say, some left-wing journalists. And that's concerning to people because it seems to be a kind of double standard that is uh, uh, reeks of racism. Uh, Raz Siegel, the uh, Israeli genocide expert, is calling what happens in Gaza a textbook case of genocide now. 800 legal scholars have written that they are, quote, compelled to sound the alarm about the possibility of genocide. 300 Holocaust survivors and their descendants uh, took out a full page ad in the New York Times saying that this is uh, a genocide, by the way. Not just the uh, scholars. This was back in uh, 2014. Wait, what? No, hold on. Yeah. New York Times runs an ad from Holocaust survivors condemning Israel attacking Eli Wiesel. The statement was signed by more than 300 people and issued a response to an ad by Eli Wiesel, 
Jewish survivors and descendants of survivors and victims of Nazi genocide unequivocally condemn the massacre of Palestinians in Gaza. Anyone that tries to fucking tell you, anyone that tries to tell you that one, anti-Semitism and, and anti-Zionism are alike is a fucking liar, okay? Anyone that tries to tell you that there isn't enough evidence is either completely fucking misinformed or a liar, okay? It's crazy. There is no, like, there, there are so many people out there, so many people out there who demonstrate the, the moral clarity that they have. So many uh, activists, so many fucking writers, so many PhDs, scholars, historians that tell you exactly what the fuck is going on, but you never hear from them in the media. Never. Those who survived the Holocaust, Holocaust scholars, Israeli scholars. The ANC also considers Israel's treatment of Palestinians to be apartheid. If there's anybody that knows about the apartheid, it's the ANC. Yes. The worst part is it takes like 15 minutes maximum of research and critical thinking to find out the truth about what's happening here. The writing is on the wall and it's written openly and plainly. No, but most people don't do that. Most people don't want to fucking look at the truth. They just want to be blinded. In Gaza, it is clear that Israel is targeting civilians. They've targeted residential buildings. They've targeted journalists. They've targeted medics and medical facilities. This isn't the first case. The question we, I think, should ask is why they're doing this. Why this brutal blanket campaign, cutting off water. If you didn't want to target civilians, you wouldn't cut off water and you wouldn't cut off fuel. Why are they doing it? They don't need to. They have an Iron Dome missile defense system that means that most missiles the Palestinians fire into Israel don't reach targets. They could negotiate the release of hostages. There are 6,000 uh, uh, Palestinian prisoners languishing in Israeli jails without receiving fair trials, serious allegations of torture, uh, which we rarely hear about on the news, though we hear much about Israeli hostages in Gaza. They could negotiate for the release of their hostages. Instead, they're bombing Gaza and killing, by some reports, some of their own hostages. This won't, of course, destroy Hamas. When you carpet bomb people who are living under a colonial siege and constant bombardment, the only effect it can have is to strengthen people's fury, anger, and resolve to resist the colonizing power. So of course it won't break resistance. Even if they were to destroy the Hamas infrastructure, something else would emerge in its place. So why? Why are they doing this? It's not, by the way, because Hamas caused the problem, because in the West Bank, where there is no Hamas regime, settlers have attacked funerals in the last week and launched attacks on Palestinian villages, killing parents and children, and the IDF has shot and killed 62 Palestinians in the last week, uh, when I last checked, uh, in the West Bank, which is a place that does not have a Hamas government. And before this latest massacre, 2023 was already the deadliest year on record for children in the West Bank, with one child murdered every week by Israeli forces. So it isn't because there's a resistance enclave that Israel's violent. It seems to have this lashing out violent impulse uh, regardless. The reason is that it's the logic of the colonizer. The reason is that Israelis know deep down, and I'm speaking here of some of my own families, family members, so it pains me to say it, but they know deep down that they are living in other people's stolen homes. They know that they are living in a state that was premised on an act of ethnic cleansing when 700,000 Palestinians were driven from their homes. That's why Gaza is so densely populated, because most of the Palestinians living in Gaza aren't from Gaza. They're refugees penned in there because they were chased out of other parts of Israel. And that's why the important thing to do now is not simply to call for peace, not simply to call for the end of this massacre, though that is crucial, but to understand that we want a world in which people don't live penned into an open air prison because they're chased from their homes to call not simply for peace but for freedom and to say when we see people partying at a rave and then being killed by Hamas operatives that they were partying five miles away from an open air prison if, if you move five miles from where those people were partying in Israel to Gaza life expectancy drops 10 years we don't just want peace and the return of a world in which that is the case we desperately want desperately want people all over the world in our millions for freedom for everyone to be able to live a life of freedom and dignity. Um, and, and that's why we want victory uh, for the Palestinian people. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with 
most God of that, damn. I suppose, on this question of verification, I mean, you've, you, you've sort of then given, given a political position, which I'm very sympathetic towards. Um, when it comes to, do you just say, okay. Didn't he also cook Owen Jones and shit on this too? I think. Uh, I, I didn't watch this entire interview, but I think he was like shitting on Owen Jones as well because uh, I think Owen Jones was like saying that, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry or something. It, Owen Jones is pro-Palestine too, but I think he was like shitting on uh, some members of the British left, which are very few of uh, out there anyway, who uh, were, were offering concessions overall to to some of the narrative that was uh that was being presented like it's not an it's not an easy position to maintain people try to make it as hard as fucking humanly possible uh towards you uh, when you when you say like i feel like i'm losing my fucking mind here but um of course until a third party independent verification comes through with like the united nations for example that tells me that this was not an israeli strike I'm going to maintain that it's like a part of the 6,000 fucking bombs that they had dropped prior. You know what I mean? Like, it blows my mind that everybody so quickly was like, oh, dude, we're so sorry. I can't believe you fucked up and didn't just believe the IDF immediately when there's not enough evidence to suggest that that uh, that it's, it's actually... Uh, it, you should have just, like, believed exactly what... Uh, you should uh, believe exactly what the IDF said in this situation. Like, why would I not assume that it's Israel? What the fuck? They were literally bombing that area. Anyway, um, I don't know if he... I, I don't know if he uh, is, is referring to that or I don't know what he's criticizing. Yeah, well, this was an Israeli airstrike. I will take you back. I mean, in, 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 in what you just said, you were saying there were many journalists who were willing to put on their front pages that 40 babies were beheaded with zero evidence. Nobody said that. People just wanted to wait for more information to come out. Brother, come on. Come on, brother, man. Like, please, please, that's not, that's not what's going on right now, okay? There is literally still not enough evidence to conclusively say that this was a Islamic Jihad rocket, and yet people are still, people have already moved on that it 100% was that, and have demanded the media offer retractions and apologies, which the media has given uh, retractions and re apologies on, and... And and now you're in here being like, nah, people just want it for more information to come out. Okay, more information came out. Do you think that it's it's de definitively an Islamic Jihad rocket? Quit stalling, play Rust. Okay, shut the fuck up, idiot. Um, and then, you know, we, we did a video sort of critiquing that, saying there's no verification for this. Um, I actually, I mean, we haven't really covered any of this stuff, which is being put out by people who have gone rec on record and sort of said, oh, we saw this and that brutality in the, in the kibbutzes. Because I think if it's just based on one or two um, sort of eyewitnesses who also probably have some political prejudices themselves, that's not good enough for, for us to report it. So then uh, there is a similar situation here now, whereby if there are doubts, then you should say, it appears to be this or it appears to be that. And to be honest, that shouldn't have that much impact on the politics of all of this, because we know that Israel is definitely doing enough bad stuff to not have to necessarily rule out the possibility that this could have been something else. I mean, I think we will see, you know, more forensic evidence from sort of people over the next days and, and weeks, because to me, I think both options are possible, right? I, I, I don't think my solidarity with Palestinian people is dependent on on which one of these is, is true, but both to me do yeah, exactly. seem possible. That's very important. That's also very important. It's like, what, what do you think? I'm just going to be like, oh, fuck, man. Well, I guess I really don't give a shit about Palestinian uh, emancipation now because, like, it, it turns out it was an Islamic Jihad rocket that killed, out of the 5,000 people that died, 500 of them were killed by an Islamic Jihad rocket. So I guess, like, you know, I, I don't care anymore, you know? Like, is that, like, what do people think is going to happen? Do you think that that's what's the perspective here? Like, <laughs> all of a sudden, like... Is my position on the matter it's bad when Palestinian children and Israeli children are, are murdered? Or is my position on the matter it's only bad if Palestinian uh, uh, Islamist groups are murdering people, whether it be Israeli children or Palestinian children? Like when Israel kills uh, children, it's fine. It's totally fine and it's totally valid. Like, is that the perspective that we have here? Is that is that what I should be saying? I, I'm I'm a little confused by it. It's like... Is, is Netanyahu upset that they didn't get to those Palestinians first then, if, they, if what they say is true? It's 
odd. And I do think that sort of as journalists, not just as political activists, you do have to sort of take account of the fact that verification does matter. Obviously, you need to, you know, uphold both sides um, to, to that standard. I mean, what do you make of that? I think you should think about the context of the last week and a half in which we have witnessed the insidious dehumanization of the Palestinian people. They beheaded 40 babies, they blew up their own hospital, and they have been compared, including by some commentators on the British left, to Nazis and pogromists. Um, who are you talking about kind here? Of, on the, well, who, who, well uh, if you want names, uh, Paul Mason uh, says that, that compares Palestinians... Okay, this one was a bad take because... Like, is Paul Mason a leftist dog? What the fuck? When is he? Is he even a leftist? Am I crazy? Like, that part I was like, when I heard that, I was like, what? Like, Owen Jones, I understand. Like, he's pro-Palestinian. Uh, maybe he went a little far. I don't know. I don't know what he said. I haven't really said anything. But, I, I like has is has Paul Mason been a leftist for a while? I feel like anyway. Palestinians uh, breaking out of a cage um, and and entering Israel uh, as part of a guerrilla war when they've been left with no negotiations process, no uh, precise weapons uh, guided missile technology. He compares them to carrying out pogroms, which is an insult both to Palestinians in a cage and to my ancestors who were genuine victims of pogroms and weren't colonial settlers who'd stolen people's land. Um, I saw Owen Jones saying, "If we really want to." He's a self-proclaimed social democrat. Yeah, but he's like one of those guys. Uh he's like he's like a fucking incredibly isn't he isn't he like a super pro NATO guy? I'm in this unique position where I am not in favor of the Russian government or its actions in any meaningful capacity, but also simultaneously I'm not going to sit here and be like the greatest anti-socialist militarized fascist backed movement that basically has created uh, and and made permanent the american military dominance globally is actually a good thing okay like i'm not i'm not i'm not pro russia by any means i think that there were plenty of of issues within the ussr as well but it's fucking wild to just be like yeah, I love NATO. I think NATO is fucking sick. It's insane. You do not know anything about the history of NATO, how it was developed, who was in positions of power uh, at, at key moments, including literal fucking Nazi, uh, like Nazi generals, straight up, okay? And what, what position NATO plays in the world. It's just, it blows my mind. It, it blows my fucking mind, dude. I mean, think about the ultranationalists in Turkey. You're stupid. I know. I'm the stupidest uh, idiot, dude. It's uh, You cannot get me to agree with NATO. I've seen what they've done in, in Libya. I've seen what it did in Afghanistan. I've seen, what, I've seen what NATO has done internally in the European countries that, uh, that was, was brought into NATO. Um, it's just impossible for me to look at all of that death and destruction and destabilization and and uh defense that uh defense that nato has 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 done for fascists and fascist movements like a re direct revitalization of like fascism under the auspices of neoliberalism i can't look at that and go man it's so sick it's so sick this organization that was propped up specifically to murder socialists in post-World War II uh, European nation states that were in the sphere of Western influence. Like, that's so fucking cool. I love that group. I'm a communist, by the way. I'm a socialist, by the way, but I fucking love NATO. It's just like, it doesn't make sense. name names i saw owen jones saying talking about the hamas attack as the most jews dying since the holocaust again deeply deeply insulting both to palestinians and to those who were murdered in the holocaust so that kind of dehumanization functions to legitimate the massacre of people because it makes these people palestinians um something disgusting and um and and bigoted and savage and violent and there's just a very long history of this that you should be aware of there's a very long history of when the colonized strike back and say very clearly that they're striking back for freedom and dignity 
They are discussed instead as bloodthirsty savages who have a lust for chaos and destruction, and that's why they're fighting. And that kind of language functions to legitimate the colonial violence that is then meted <coughs> out to them. So when a hospital is blown up and the Israeli state says it was the Palestinians, they killed their own children, you should be aware that it's not simply unbiased journalistic integrity to report that claim. There's a, there's a deep, very, very violent ideological pressure at work in that claim. And it troubles me. It troubles me because I am the descendant of people who for 2,000 years, white Christian Europe excluded and said eventually was subhuman Jews. Um, and so I see this language when Israelis talk about human animals, when Israelis talk about children of darkness, as Netanyahu did, when Israelis talk about the law of the jungle. This is the language that was developed to exclude and murder and persecute my people, Jews. It was then used across Africa and Asia and South America to exclude and murder and brutalize people. Israel is just the latest iteration of violent colonial Western power. It's no surprise that America and Britain support it. They developed that kind of racist language, <laughs> and they're still drowning thousands I mean, of people yeah. every year in the Mediterranean. So that's the kind of racist world order we live in, and that's the kind of racist world order that allows Israeli politicians to be blasé about the claim that Palestinians kill their own children. Uh, I, I just feel like you're conflating quite a lot of things there. So you're, you're conflating sort of the Palestinian government, call, sorry, not the, the Israeli government calling Palestinians children. And I mean, I, I wouldn't use this sort of Holocaust comparison, but I suppose what people were talking about there and what I assume Owen was talking about there is, is why people are upset about this, why, why people would be upset by a lot of... Listen, Michael Walker is very good. You guys, listen, listen. There are some things, stop, before, before getting mad at him, okay? People are yelling, you are bullshit the fuck up. I think you guys don't understand something. You're anonymous here. You're chatting up a fucking storm. There are certain things that you can't say, okay? There are certain things that Felix says, for example, or, or, or Noah says, that I will never say, okay? Barnaby can say certain things. I cannot. At the end of the day, like, I don't think Michael, Wa I don't think it's appropriate for Michael Walker to, to, uh, unconditionally agree with Barnaby in this circumstance, because I, I it will be used against them and it will be used against, uh, uh, the, the, uh, advocacy for Palestinians. Okay. You can't do that. You have to reel, you have to reel them in, in that situation. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, it doesn't matter if you're you're correct. Uh, you know, certain parts of of the optics uh, conversation have to be reeled in. I know, I know, it's a genocide. I say it unconditionally. Okay, but you know, of civilians getting killed in Israel, mm -hmm. you know, even though you say, you well, know, there, there, there was some well, unfairness to the fact that people can party next to the Gaza wall. But still, I think people should... What am I hearing from Hassan right now? What do you mean, dude? Are you Listen, uh, I, I am going to always be very careful about what I talk about, specifically because I do not want to... to I don't want anyone to ever, uh, one, assume that I'm anti-Semitic, which I'm not. But also on top of that, I don't want to ever have my words be used, not against me, because that happens all the fucking time, but my words be used against the advocacy that I make, the advocacy for Palestinians. Let's you see. Know, put forward some sympathy to people who are just going to a party and the parents of those people who are just going to a party. And I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you're almost disagreeing with that. Well, I don't think that anyone dying is ever a good thing. I think that anyone dying is a tragedy. I have never been deliberately starved by a colonial power that chased me from my land. So I try not to judge the actions of people who have been in that position. I live in Britain, where our government sends weapons to Israel. What we can do is not spend our time um, condemning and attacking the actions of the people killed with the bombs that our taxes fund, but instead try to ensure that our taxes no longer fund those bombs. We all celebrate Nelson Mandela. The majority of people killed by the ANC in their armed struggle campaign were, were civilians. The ANC felt that that armed struggle campaign was necessary to end a system of racist dehumanization in South Africa. Mandela was called a terrorist for it and attacked for it. There's a long history of this kind of thing. I'm concerned with stopping our money going to murdering Palestinian uh, men, women, and children. Um, and I think that time spent attacking Palestinians for the military strategies that they choose um, um, is frankly offensive and insulting, given that none of us have ever lived for decades under a, a, a occupation. He's blockade. right about that. I mean, so as far as I understand it, though, the ANC example was quite different. I, I, I think they they didn't kill that many. I think it was sort of in the in the low hundreds over the whole campaign. Then they ended up sort of renouncing it, and I suppose part of the anti-apartheid. Uh, 
Michael Walker is wrong about that. They did not. They literally only did it after uh, the apartheid had ended. Uh, and then the, the, the peaceful reconciliation campaign started uh, by Nelson Mandela. But Nelson Mandela was approached numerous times in prison under the condition that he will literally be able to have his freedom again as long as he fucking denounces the violence on the fucking streets. And he said no. They extended his prison sentence by five fucking years twice. So he stayed in prison for 10 extra fucking years because he refused to condemn the violence. This is a fact that many people forget. Many people forget this fact. It is revisionist. It's historically revisionist. Okay? They asked them to, to denounce the violence, to condemn the violence, and also to, to uh, 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 denounce socialism, communism, and Marxism. And he said, no. He said, how can you uh, negotiate with a man who you've shackled? You can't. You can't fucking, you can't fucking tell me to, 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 to make these kinds of takes. Like, I'm in prison. I'm in fucking prison. Apartheid struggle was in a way about sort of building links to, I mean, obviously it was, it was outside pressure. It was rebellion. It was uh, a, a, a huge um, boycott and sanctions from the outside, which is why I'm in favor of BDS. But I don't think they sort of... By the way, um, I, I don't know if people know this, but... Like, just, I maybe don't Google it, but there is a concept called necklacing, okay? So, I feel weird talking about this even, but I'm, I don't think a lot of white people are aware, or I, I guess, like, they forgot, okay? It's... The ANC didn't just bomb positions where civilians were they engaged in a practice called necklacing this is true a very brutal a horrifying a practice one of the many different uh methods fighting against uh, uh apartheid I will tell you what it is. It was also not just for uh, white men but all, who supported the apartheid system, but also even uh, for, for uh, those deemed as traitors of the black community as well, as far as I understand. They would wrap up people in a car tire, douse them with gasoline, and set them on fire. This is one of the practices that Nelson Mandela, uh, or Nelson Mandela's ANC engaged in in their anti-apartheid struggle. There's a reason why you don't think about that when you're talking about the apartheid. Because at the end of the fucking day, yes, it was mostly used in, in riots by mobs, but at the end of the fucking day, the reason why you don't think about that or don't even fucking know about that, okay, is because, yes, of course, the people that were under uh, an apartheid regime engaged in savagery, okay, in, in savage acts, of course they did. Of course, their entire existence was was uh, was was subjugation. Every moment that they lived, they lived under a violent, oppressive apartheid structure. It was gruesome. Okay. My point is, when all is said and done. You don't look back at the individual gruesome acts committed by the ANC. You look at the apartheid as the overarching system of violence. Okay? And it took years and years to get to that point. It's not like it started off like that. It started off with peaceful acts of civil disobedience. I've talked about this. I've talked about this. They, they thought before um, switching to more violent methods. That they tried, they tried protesting. They thought that they could do 
uh, civil disobedience and have uh, and and overwhelm the prison systems. They were wrong. It didn't work. You're finitely growing some brain cells. Says what? You're finitely growing some brain cells. Thanks, man. This is why when Pierce Morgan brought up Mandela as a figure to look to, it was hilarious. Exactly. Exactly. And the way to end that violence is not by, uh, is not by tightening the vice grip and, and tightening the, the conditions of oppression. That did not end the apartheid. The apartheid ended through, uh, through politics, through political change. And that is precisely the situation at hand here in the Israeli apartheid. Okay? You cannot end an apartheid regime by continuing to increase the violence that you subject the people under the apartheid regime to. You can only end it through a, a, a conciliatory political move in the right direction towards peace. necessarily went to things such as sort of music festivals and just killed lots of people like to me there's not only moral problems with that it seems a bit strategically odd i suppose strategically that makes sense if you're going for this sort of algeria model which is you're trying to scare people so much that they sort of leave your land and you can take it back um i mean potentially that's what people are going for i'm just not sure if that's particularly realistic in in this situation because i think you know the people of israel are somewhat different to the french algerians who are in in algeria yeah French people in Algeria could always go back to France. There's a lot of Israeli people in Israel that can't go back to, like, Germany. You know what I mean? Like, that is, that is technically true. French people were like, oh, fuck this. I'm going back to France. You know what I mean? But you can't really do that in Israel. These people live there. This is their land at this point. Uh, it was stolen. Uh, it was stolen through uh, violence. But... It's not the same. I just hope the chat with your mods worked. Uh, and they started banning people as freely as they do for people who disagree with you. And they start saying anti-semiotic things. First of all, it's anti-Semitic things. And secondly, we fucking ban people for anti-Semitism way before this conversation. And we will continue to ban people for anti-Semitism way after you're fucking dead and gone in this chat. Okay, Mr. Anti-Semiotic. The fuck? I really, really, really don't want people to be killed. Look at this guy, bro. Why are you going to the mental gymnastics trying to claim that the idea of on the hospital and the evidence points towards a Hamas rocket? I swear to God, dude. These people don't give a shit about anything. They're just like... I, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Brother... Brother, you're right, okay? You got me. Uh, yes, it definitely, I believe the IDF, I believe the IDF still did not uh, execute Shireen Abu Akhlek. I believe the IDF did not execute those children with a bomb, uh, with a strike on the cemetery. I I believe the IDF, whenever they tell me, I, I don't even believe the 6,000 uh, rockets that IDF dropped in uh, Gaza over the course of the past uh, week before I don't know how many rockets we're at now. I believe that those were all actually rocket misfires. You got it. Uh, how stupid of me to think that out of the 6,000 rockets that they dropped, uh, the 6,001st one was not the IDF. You, you fucking got me. You did it. Uh, all of those people, 5,000 people so far, 2,000 children, dead, actually not dead. Okay? Not dead. They're actually alive. They're very much alive, and you're right. You're right. It's all it's all one big phony show that they're playing over there. Dead babies. All of them are actually paid actors. They're all Hamas. It's all Pallywood. You fucking got it. I am in denial of everything. 
I'm in denial of everything that I've ever seen. I'm in denial of everything that I've ever read. I'm in denial of what Holocaust scholars are saying. I'm in denial of what what uh, you know Israeli scholars are saying about the situation on the ground. You got it. You you did it. Seven hundred thousand people dispelled or expelled from their homes in the Nakba. Not true. Didn't happen. Why? Hamas. Hamas actually did that. You got it. Huh. You did it. You did it. You're you're so right. You're so fucking right. Anyway, let's continue. You got it. You, you, you fucking, you did it. It's all fake. Look, look, let me show you how fake this is, dude. Dude, imagine, I guess the billions of dollars that uh, have gone to, to UNRWA has actually gone to uh, Palestinian CGI. Look at this. Al-Zahar area of central Gaza totally wiped out in the aftermath of an Israeli bombing. What a lie. What a disgusting lie told by Times of Gaza. Once again, I mean, it's all CGI. Everybody knows it. There's actually, contrary to what you uh, believe is happening here, there's actually a, a row of, of hotels there, okay? High-class hotels and casinos. People are actually having so much fun uh, in, in Gaza. You should go there. Um, you should try and fly into the, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, you know, there's an airport there. Or you're going to fucking hell for saying Pallywood? Yeah, I mean, anyone who says it unironically should actually, I mean, should go to hell 100%. Yeah. Um, Hamas cut the water. Hamas cut the, the food. Hamas cut the electricity. The honor certificate confirming my family's 1948 displacement is Photoshop. Lol, what the fuck? Yeah, sorry. This guy's, uh, this Redditor, this one Redditor actually nailed it. The truth of the matter. Every single formative Holocaust historian, genocide scholar, academics, historians across the board, they all are wrong. <coughs> yeah. Look. Oh, look at that. Another, another fake Unreal Engine uh, footage, you know? It's just... It's crazy. The guy that took this is dead, by the way. Okay? He's dead. The guy that took this photo is fucking dead. He was murdered. He was murdered. But go ahead. That, that's fake too, right? That's probably fake, right? You people are genocide deniers. Okay? You are. You're a piece of shit. You're no different than the fucking Nazi scumbags that engage in this exact same bullshit, okay? You're no different. Your target is Arabs and Palestinians and Muslims, so they're, they're not human. They're subhuman, right? So they, it must be fake. Insane. I don't know how you can live with yourselves, man. I, I, I don't. I guess it's more comfortable to, like, not know the truth. That's what it world is. Music well. festivals. I want a world in which, frankly, I really, really like music festivals. I want a world in which we can all dance at music festivals and be free. Um, I don't want a world in which people dance at music festivals five miles away from an open air prison camp in which more than half the population is food insecure, in which in this ter territory, Gaza, which is, was partly dependent on fishing, 85% of its fishing waters are controlled by Israel. And every single aspect of the movement of people in the territory is so controlled by Israel that they can cut off 
off food and water and fuel at will. I don't think that's a normal situation that should be allowed to continue. I want there to be strikes and nonviolent resistance and no one to be harmed in the march to freedom. Of course I want that. Everyone wants that. But in a situation in which for decades the Israeli state has occupied and oppressed and besieged and bombarded Palestinians, for people in the West who have not been in that position to spend their time condemning the things that Palestinians do when our governments fund the Israeli war machine, I just think it's the wrong uh, choice of our attention. I think that's wrong. And I think that to compare Palestinians Palestinians, and you said you wouldn't do this, but to compare Palestinians to anti-Semitic persecutors of Jews who rounded us up just for living in Europe and put us eventually in gas chambers, to compare, to, to, to tar Europe's shame at its failure to prevent centuries of anti-Semitism and to accuse Palestinians who did not carry out the Holocaust, Europeans did, to accuse Palestinians of that because they just want to live in peace and freedom, I think is, it's just frankly sickening. It genuinely, genuinely sickens me. It's an insult to generations of my family members who were butchered by the same kind of brutality and exclusion that said some people are human animals that now we see carried out by the state of Israel. Yes, those people, those people in the state of Israel are Jews, but they've just taken on, they've taken on the European Gentiles way of thinking about the world. They've taken on all the violence that they call Western civilization, which says some people have rights and other people don't. And so just as we had to break the back of czarism, and just we had to break the back of, of, of every anti-Semitic regime, and just we had to break the back of European colonialism everywhere, we have to break the back of the Zionist state so that everyone can be free. Everyone can live in peace and freedom. But, you know, yeah, I mean, like Palestinians, uh, what are, I don't know what Palestinians are supposed to do. You know, Israel was about to normalize relations with Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, the, Israel has completely divided the Palestinian liberation movement so that in the West Bank, they have a kind of puppet regime in the Palestinian Authority, which has guns that it doesn't turn on the Israeli state, but on Palestinian protesters sympathizing with Gaza. Uh, the Palestinian movement is divided. It doesn't have uh, regional uh, allies, very few regional allies. Um, the situation is pretty brutal and Palestinians are trying to find a way to, 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 to march for freedom. And when they march peacefully, when they marched peacefully a few years ago up to the wall that Israel has constructed to keep them from their homes, Israel shot and killed them. When they tried to be Gandhi, and Israel shot and killed them. Well, I mean, they also shot and killed a bunch of Gandhi's people, and he still kept on being Gandhi. But I'm not saying we should judge them for that. I suppose, I think where we differ is I agree the absolute focus should be on the crimes of Israel because they are the occupying power. That's what we do on this show. We spend 95% of our time talking about that. I do think on the left, there is a sort of reluctance to say, well, if you then spend 5% of your time saying, I also think that massacring people at a music festival is wrong, you are somehow undermining the Palestinian cause. I think we disagree on that, but we should move on. I'm sure we will come back to similar issues. He's not a piece of shit. Uh, I, dude, no. I, I stop yelling at uh, Michael Walker, okay? He's not. He's a good dude. Um, Navarre Media is good. They're good dudes. open. A bald take. Uh, he's not even bald, dude. He's got hair. Look at him. We gaming today? Just curious? Don't be. Curious no more, okay? I know what? What do you want? I opened the door. No, I will not be playing Rust. I'll be playing Spooderman. Here. Rebels? You did something go very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So and were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. So it was a very anti-authoritarian, very kind of 60s, against the man kind of thing, yeah. nested or, deep inside a, or, a, a fantasy. Or a colonial, you know, 
we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And we're just a bunch of hayseeds in coonskin hats that don't know right. nothing. That's right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in in both of those, the little the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical em, the, empire. The English Empire. Right? English the English Empire, empire, the American Empire, yep. lost. Yeah. That was the whole point. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I... Yeah, it fucking looped. What of it, bitch? Shut up. How about you fucking chill out, okay? Look at that. What's that? Spooter, man, that's what. It's finally time, dude. Been a long time coming, chat. All right, let me see. If I... Oops. Fuck. Fuck. It still says you're just chatting. Wait, no way, is it? Oh my god, we haven't changed it fast enough. <laughs> Dude, what will happen? <coughs> <coughs> we didn't... I hear a bunch of white noise too. I don't know where it's coming from. Where's the fucking white noise coming from? Wait, let me deactivate. And then reactivate. Maybe it'll go away. Nope, it's not going away. Why is there so much? Let's see. Charlie had trouble streaming this because his capture card audio was fucked. He made a video about it. It started when your PS5 turned on. It might not be the game. This game can be buggy as fuck. Let me see if I can fix it. You can mute the capture card and run an aux cable from your monitor head port for... I don't think I can do that. I think you're wrong about that, my friend. Let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, it went away. Oh, fuck. I spoke too soon. Oh, wait. Let me see. Oh, what the fuck? Hey, Pete. What the? I'm working on a college application, and it says I gotta tell them about myself. More like sell yourself. That's the worst. You got any advice? Well, take me. Hi. And I'm in love with the greatest woman ever. <laughs> Humble brag. Who is the best journalist in this city? Are you guys hearing that? Word. Go, MJ. I try to live up to the example Did set by it? the other greatest woman ever, my Aunt May. Humble brag again. Damn. And a while back, I was bitten by a radioactive spider and got superpowers. I, I can't put that in my essay. Hey, I'm laying the track as I drive the train. <clears throat> I've. Let's see. Mentor, Dr. Otto Octavius. Oh, it's still fucking hissing, goddammit. shut down by an old colleague, Norman Osborne. 
Otto retaliated by releasing a bioweapon. In the end, I managed to stop Otto. But not without great cost. That was pretty good. But I'm no Peter Parker. Exactly. You're Miles Morales. You're 17 years old and a student at Brooklyn Visions Academy. What else? I guess I... <clears throat> How about with my mom's work in Harlem every now and then? Uh, she's Councilwoman Rio Morales. And there is a girl I like who's spectacular and inspiring. And I think is one of the best artists in the city. And I also got bitten by a radioactive spider that gave me superpowers. Damn, dude. Spiders Spider everywhere. The OG. But I learned how to be a hero from my dad. He was killed by Martin Lee in the City Hall bombing. The good I try to do every day is the good my dad planted in me. But it's been hard. Even with superpowers, sometimes we can't save the people we love, no matter how hard we try. A hero is someone who doesn't give up, though. And I don't plan to. I'm going to fix the audio. I don't know, book. man. I can't talk about me without talking about Spider-Man. Sure you can. You just have to... Uh... Yeah, why don't you just start another draft? There's a lot of audio bugs, I think. In this game, it seems. It's not my microphone. You're wrong. Be ready. Are you good? Promise me something. Anything. If this doesn't work, take me out. The fuck? It'll work. I don't have a lot of time left. I want a chance to say goodbye. I'm not going to lose you. I will never let you go. Uh oh. That's weird as hell, dude. Yo, that's a that's a weird ass thing to do, man. That is I mean, can I say it? I can say it, right? That's odd. That's odd that he did that to him. We have a bell for a reason. I condemn that. Take your seats. I'm here! Good morning, class. We have a new teacher joining us today. Hi. My name's Pete. My, 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 Mr. Mr. Parker. Lame ass. Uh, and we are all very lucky today. Because this is physics class, and physics is awesome. <coughs> Ever wonder how some insects and uh, birds, reptiles, can just run right across a pond? Two words. Surface tension. Bathroom! Okay. Now, surface tension is all about cohesion. Hmm? Okay. Now, in equation form... Sandstorm, Derude. Gamma ...can be calculated as the force exerted parallel to the surface of a liquid. F divided by the length Who L the fuck goes that quickly the which the force into the class? Anybody? Uh, I, I... I need your help. <laughs> uh, Mr. Morales, is it? Uh, are you sure this isn't something you can handle yourself? I'm sure. 
<laughs> okay, class. Uh, read chapter four or five. Or Yo, this whatever. school is woke Miles, as fuck. I need this job. If the principal comes back and sees I'm gone, I'm gonna get fired. I know, but you gotta see this. Damn, they're fucking webbing all over this school. Mark this school is woke as fuck. There's a sign language person in the classroom. I'm so getting fired. God, this music is so fucking corny, but I love it. Oh my god, I love this fucking game so much. I'm so silly with it. already hates me for being late this morning. Bro, I told you to be on time. It's fine. We'll be back before we know it. Good. Because I have my college application review with the school counselor. Oh, you finished your essay? I haven't started. Oh, well, let's get to the city and take care of Marco quick then. Come on, Scooter Man. I love web slinging, dude. I am a web slinger, dude. Downtown fast. Swing it through Brooklyn. Jameson have you on the ground for the bugle? Still can't believe old Triple J is your new boss. <laughs> really loving the new regime. You'll whip him into shape in no time. So, what's up with Marco? It's been years since our last showdown. According to witnesses, he was running down Broadway yelling nonsense. They say he seemed angry and, and paranoid Woo! and delusional. He just exploded. Man. Hopefully we can calm him down. I've seen people lose control like this. Be careful. Good thing there too, Spider-Man now. Good luck. Thanks, MJ. Might need the new tech we've been cooking up too. No way. They're untested. Barely prototypes. But you oh. brought them, right? No comment. Oh my god. Oh, this looks so fucking cool. Find Sandman! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look out! You okay? Yeah, but I think we found him! Marco! MJ wasn't kidding. Fight him? We gotta help him before he hurts ah! someone or himself. Maybe he's hungry. We should toss the big guy a snack. Huh. Oh my god. What's the plan? Keep him busy. I got an idea. What is that? I got your nose. Oh, crap. Do you condemn Sandman? I do. I condemn Sandman. Years, Marco? You should try yoga. God damn it. Whoop my fucking ass. That was your idea? Never said it was a good one. Why is it working? Have awkward conversations in the teacher's lounge. Everything's gonna be okay. Save his life. Spider-Man, think you can sign for this delivery? It's coming in hot. I'm there. I got him. Bro, he just punched me in the fucking mouth. Mini Marcos? I wish I could do that. How do we fight again? I totally forgot. Set Mr. Air stick down. But not before he barks on my suit. Oh shit. He's not the only one. Sandman just puked out some new friends. What the? He can do that? Apparently. Need ah. you now. Mr. Parker? I'm sorry, who's this? Principal Evans. 
Of course! Principal All F! students have evacuated their classroom. Where are you? Uh, Mr. Parker! I just... I forgot! Something in my car! What was that? Nothing! I'm just... Oh! Oh, I'm shoot. just running back right now. Get back here and supervise your students, or else. That does not sound good. What the fuck is that? We're almost there. Oh, this spider bra is sick. Miles? Principal Evans called. Man, am I getting expelled? Hey. You're just cutting class. I abandoned students during a citywide emergency. Yeah, you're screwed. Huh. Bro, that's this is so sick. I mean, it, it just dropped you immediately into the fucking. Man, I always hated that name. I know you're angry at me. This has nothing to do with you. Leave me alone! They turn Sam you. into a freaking God of War villain, and it's awesome. But there should be more God first. of War villains. Oh no! He hates water. He's an anarchist. A shower? No thanks, he said. <laughs> Sandman, more like Mudman. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, water. My worst nightmare. I guess he wasn't happy to reconnect. Yeah, he's not really the nostalgic type. Let me go, or I'll kill you. He's not listening. We gotta turn it up a notch. How? He hates water. His shoulder's already wet. Bet he's not a big fan of electricity then, either. Read my mind. Oh, what the fuck? Wait. Wait. Dude, I have crazy powers. What is happening? I just put a fucking right. hole in his entire chest. Water, I'll hit him with webs while I get sparky. I'll keep the water flowing in the meantime. Ah! He's done. Take your shot. Oh. I'm jizzing on him. I'm jizzing on him. Somebody order some water. Oh, hit him with that. Hit him with that. Zap him. Oh. Oh. God damn. Is he going to eat me? What the fuck? Oh, never mind. He just tossed me into a fucking skyscraper. Holy moly. Oh, slingshot. What the fuck? This game is so stupid. This game is so sick. Oh my there. god. Anyone that says this that game easy. is shitty is coping. Yankee to work his magic. Yankee, you there? Dude, nuts. Yes, I know, man. But listen, we need a big water source by Wall Street. Well, let me check the grid. Stay safe, dude. You too, Mr. Parker. Will do. Wait, what? He knows? Yankee knows all. Plus, we were super weird in class earlier. I knew I never should have taught at a gifted school. Uh, 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 fuck his ass up, bitch. Oh, God. Bitch. Uh, 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 jizzing on him. Jizzing on him. Jizzing on him. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, zapping him through his head? Are you fucking kidding me? Guys, the water tank on the Matheson building should do the trick. We're talking 10,000 gallons here. Got it. Thanks, Genki. <laughs> Sandman has a right to defend himself? No, it doesn't. You still think we got him right where we want him? I admit I may have spoken too soon. 
Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh! I already condemned Sandman. I condemned Sandman again. Wait, what the fuck? Spider-Man? I just wanted to live normal. Like everyone else. This isn't the way, Marco. For a guy like me, there is no other way. Getting out of hand. Pete, what happened? I ended up outside. Just keep going up and I'll meet you at the roof. That water tank's our only shot. Oh shit. Only way is up. Oh. Oh, these guys are cooler, Sandman, now. What the fuck? Venom Punch? Where are you, Pete? Get back here. Stay inside! Oh, fuck! Where'd I go? Busy. It's gonna be a long day if we don't get that water tank. Where am I supposed to go? Where am I supposed to go? Am I supposed to get out of here? No. I'm trying to go up, chat. It's not letting me. I'm so stupid. Aim with L2 and then R2 to point the zip. I'm trying. It's not letting me. I am. I am doing that. It's not letting me. I'm not even kidding. I, I, it's not letting me do that. I, I don't know if I, like, fucked it up or something. Oh. Okay. Well, that's weird. That, that, what the fuck? Keep it moving, Mouse. I just wanted a regular life. You can still have one! Dude, it's too late now. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's just light. Oh, man! Finishers are devastating attacks. Why couldn't Marco just make fan castles instead? Ma, everything okay? I'm with Pete. I know. You're on every channel. I'm heading downtown to help coordinate resources and supplies. He's ganky copper for you at school. He is. But I got this meeting with my counselor later, and the principal thinks Listen, that I'm- I can talk to your principal, but New York needs you right now. Coolest mom ever. And please, be careful. Get away from Like Ma said, you can't let New York down. Oh god, oh god. Oh god. I can't let New York down. What's up, dude? Oh god! What the fuck? Wish I could just write about this for my essay. I get into any college I wanted. Or Spider-Man would. Right. Brainstorm later, Mouse. Focus. How's it going, Spider-Man? Almost there. The water takes ours! Hey, sorry, what I miss? He's trying to He's 
thirsty. He's thirsty. Hit him with that Wawa. He's a thirsty boy. Give it to him. Oh, oh no. Did we do it? wasn't stable but oh shit here wait goes nothing oh fuck <laughs> oh shit the wings they're flying but we're not out of this yet marco's in pier 4 beach what happens if he gets all that oh, sand shit I think he just did I'm gonna need you asap miles yeah i see him all right i'm right behind you miles miles What the fuck? What did I just get myself into? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. You gotta calm down, Marco. Innocent people are in danger. I don't think he gives a fuck, dog. But not me. They wouldn't listen to Marco. They can't ignore Sandman. Let's hit him with one big punch, Spidey. That's how we get him. Oh shit! What the hell was that? This is New York's 9/11. <laughs> Miles, wanna know? That's racist, dog. Any ideas? Class is back in session. Class? Marco's storm is generating a lot of electricity! <laughs> what happens to the surface tension of sand if you turn up the voltage? Move your right. Like when I shot the mini. A plus! You absorb enough energy. I'll shoot it right at him. You want me to get hit by lightning? Can you handle it? There's only one way to find out. Dude, I love the double combos. It's sick. Like you said, gotta break out the toys. What's up, bitch? That's what I thought. Uh, 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 uh. Spider Men's all look the same to me. Is that racist? That's fucked up. It is racist. It's it's arachnophobic. Now we're never Spider Man. Time to move. Why won't you just give up? Because we promise to protect this city. Surface tension time. Oh, I'm splooging on his eyes, dude. Oh my god. I'm fucking... I'm splooging on him. I'm webbing so hard. Oh, one big splooge. Thickest of ropes, dude. That's how you deal with a fucking haboob. Right? Isn't that what it's called? A haboob? I have sand. <laughs> how are you, Everywhere. Gooner, man? Listen, homies that splooge together win together, okay? He's got the wackest style, Marco, bro. Gonna be okay. I haven't been okay for a long time. 
He's just mad he's help. Italian. All you have to do is ask. You're the ones who are gonna need help when they come for you. Marco feels the weight of being a divorced dad in America, okay? He just wanted to take out the family court, and then things got a little out of hand. This is very normal. A lot of people don't... Ooh, Craven. Ooh. Craven is fucking yoked. One of the best villains, I think. You grow slow in your old age, Sergei. A fate you will not share. Oh! That's not even Craven. This is Craven. It ain't even him. I have been in your shadow for hours, but you sense nothing. Double Craven. Bro, he fucking one-handed him. I asked Craven, do that to my throat. And this is what you find. Sir, perhaps a new hunting ground. My horny ass could not be Spider-Man. Light the fires. The great hunt begins. Okay, I have to be. I have to be craving for Halloween. <laughs> Title card! Title card! Craven is an anarcho primitivist? Not really. It, especially this Craven has like hella tech. So I don't know if I consider him to be an anarcho primitivist. How did motherfuckers 100% these goddamn games, dude? They're, it's like it just came out like yesterday. The app is busted. Pete, you seeing this? I got it. You're gonna be safe. It's got the Adidas, uh, the, the NMT, is that what yeah, it's called? Same here. Hey, Genki? I know, I know. The whole city's telecom network is down. What's happening to the requests that are coming in? They'll all get queued, but. NMDs. Wait. Uh, I'm gonna try a workaround. Work fast. <laughs> Right before the app went down, I saw a request for help at Liberty and Broadway. Headed there now. What a mess! Marco, what got into you? Polo. Why is he talking like... Gonna pull his fucking shoulder out of its okay. socket. I am now. Thank you. Spider-Man, Chief needs your help. We'll be seeking the maximum sentence as we get to the bottom of this. Spider-Man, got a minute? Where's he at? He's stuck in the sand. What's happening? Got a call with the precinct up ahead, and the line cut out. We gotta get through to set up triage. On it, Chief. Not now, Chief. I'm in the fucking zone. Wait, what does this do? 
Can I do L1, R1 on this? That did it. Uh, Mr. Parker, I need your help to get the app back online. What do you need? Get to the roof of the building on Worth and Lafayette. What's the plan? It's gonna be hours before the telecom network's back up, so we're gonna create our own network. That's a big job. How long have you been planning this? Well, dreaming about it since seventh grade, but planning, uh, for the last two minutes or so. Oh, Genki, you're so fucking cool and nerdy. There should be a launcher around there. What is all this stuff? Environmental study by a new startup. The launchers for high altitude weather sensors. And this startup gave us permission? Yes. I checked with the head guy. Super nice. Seemed excited about helping out Spider Man. Fucking woke ass motherfuckers, dude. Global warming is fake, obviously. And caused okay. by sand. Tell me what to do. You've still got that 3D printer built into your web shooters, right? I need you to build something real quick. Just sent you the blueprints. You, someone in the chat said, I just like this uh, swing around. And yes, that's like 90% of this game. This is 90% like of drone. the fun comes from just like swinging you around. Don't spy on people, Genki. Oh, no, no, no. It's all opt in. Just New Yorkers sending messages to the app, which gets routed through these drones, which I call focused relay neighborhood data spots. <laughs> F R N D. <laughs> I'm Did not just... watching this to learn shit, said the chatter. Okay, Let's dude. Make a friend. You did. <laughs> Seventh grade me was so wholesome. Okay, now, how do we get this thing airborne? There's a lot of competing signal traffic, so try to follow the path I marked on your visor. It'll give us a clearer signal. What is happening? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's hard. It's hard to control this fucking thing. Oh, God. Okay. Local network should be online. Let me notify the app user. Reports should start coming in any minute now. We did it! <laughs> this, the neighborhood app. Dude, dude, we just recreated the neighborhood app. We took an environmental activist and their weather reporting app and turned it into the fucking neighborhood app where you can Uber Eats Spider-Man to come beat the shit out of your neighbors, okay? Hey, I saw a homeless guy. Yeah, next door app ass motherfuckers, dude. I saw a homeless guy sucking on his own penis. Get over here, Spider-Man. Beat his ass. <laughs> Deliver him some Spidey justice right now. You've leveled up and earned a skill point. This is the shared skill tree. Each hero has a unique skill tree. Navigate the Peters. Spider Whiplash, an attack that lives multiple enemies in an aerial combat. You have acquired Spidey Whiplash. Earn XP. Slingshot launch. The Kia boys are the final villain of the game. Spoiler alert. Chill. Oh. While diving, continue holding R2 to form a super kinetic loop maneuver and generate a boost of speed. Damn, I got hella skill points still. Press L1 to propel yourself forward. Yeah, I'm trying to increase my gooning ability. All right. 
there. Crime report just came in. <laughs> oh, thank God. There's a crime report. Let's go. Let's go deal with that crime report. Back it up. Let's go. Come on. These guys are like opportunity strikes. You know, they're looting. We got plenty of time. Cops are busy with all this sand stuff. They're going Let's to the city the gun out. club. Come on, load them up. It's called our it's called our Second Amendment rights, uh, Spidey. I don't know if you know that, but stealing weapons? Not on my watch. This is a plan. Spider-Man. Whose idea was it to have a gun club in the city? I think I'm gonna start a petition. Replace all the gun clubs with something better. Gotta take them down. Like a compliment club. Compliments don't hurt anyone. Oh god, that was so whack. For example, you take a punch really well. Good job. Hey, I think I'm onto something. Less guns, more compliments. I need to fucking. I'm gonna shoot him. That was a big crew. Taking advantage while the city's covered in sand. Wish I knew what got into Marco. More of them coming. Does this game make Let's you really feel like Spider-Man? Every Spider-Man game style. makes you feel like Spider-Man, in my opinion. I think they do a pretty good job. I, I think most I think most Spooderman games do a really good job of making you feel like Spooderman. It is one of the most consistently good uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe video games out there. If not the, the most consistently good comic video game out there. I would say more than even... Okay, IGN. Come on, dude. I've played all the fucking Spooderman games on stream. And they're always fucking fire. It's just so much... It's just so much fun. You know what I mean? More than Batman and Arkham? That's high praise. Yeah, I think... I think, like... It's it's Batman with better kinetics. Honestly, I I I feel like it's like Batman is more like gritty, dark, scary, spooky. Ooh, Spider Man is like fun, lighthearted, and also very fun to play. And the combat, the combat is really. Uh, like, the, the movement is really good in Spider-Man. <coughs> and also, every moment, there's not a dull moment. You know what I mean? You don't want to miss out on a, a single moment. That's why at the top of the hour, when a three-minute ad break comes, you want to fucking avoid that ad by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Or by getting gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. It gets corny, for sure. I think the writing is cheesy as fuck, which I don't really have an issue with. Does it feel like Miles has the exaggerated swagger of a black teen? Yeah, always. Gurgery, no. Thank you for the tank of the subs. No. What does this do? Suspend multiple enemies in the air, making them vulnerable to air combos and yank down. Yeah, I mean, look. Oh. <laughs> You're in our way. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of my superpowers. That's funny as fuck to be like Hey guys, my app is still down. Uh, I know. Trying to innovate here. Give me a minute. I'll call you back. Yeah. You think he's mad at me? Stress masquerades his anger sometimes. Just keep looking for people to help. Now you sound like you're angry. 
I'm not angry, Miles. Just focus. That's what my mom always says when she's angry. Come on. You've known me for a long time. When have you ever seen me angry? Uh, I'm thinking. It was a rhetorical question. Got it. That one time we were playing a board game at your place and you kept losing. I wasn't angry at you. I was angry at the universe. This isn't going to be good. Didn't I get the dodge, the parry? Look how, how many turn to crime. What does that say about Spooderman's presence in New York? Okay. Yeah. The new app is compiling. I figured as long as we're at it, we might as well give it an upgrade. We don't need anything fancy. We just need to see citizen reports. Totally. While the patch is updating, we should widen the net. Let's check in with Miles. Over there. She was having trouble breathing. Miles, you busy? What do you need? Get to the roof of that building nearby. <laughs> Yo, you sounded stressed earlier. You doing okay? Yeah. There's just a lot going on, and I'm hungry, and the vending machine only has those plain low sodium table crackers. Oh man, that sucks. I'll manage. Hey, so I'm finally doing that app upgrade I've been talking about, with a little help from my friends. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant pun that doesn't make sense to you yet, but it will in a minute. God damn, you pick up a lot of speed doing that. Okay, I'm here. There should be a launcher somewhere around there. I don't see anything that looks like a launcher. Maybe it's under the sand? How do I clear the sand? Oh. Easy. Okay, I see the launcher. Now what? You're gonna 3D print a friend. Get it now. F R N D. Let me guess. Friendly relay network drone. Close, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it uses spatial and temporal correlated signals. Many many Over chatters would wish they could three D print a friend. You're a genius, Genki. Oh, you. I marked a path for optimal network stability. If you stay in the path, we'll get a stronger signal. Bro, this shit is hard, dude. I didn't realize how hard it was to be a drone operator, Obama style. Okay, local network is connected. Don't worry, Chad, you got me. You don't need a friend. It's a new crime report. I see it. On my way. Oh, shit. I always said Spider-Man was at the gun club. We gotta move before he gets here. Dude, these guys are quick, man. Hey, need a hand? Lost your keys? There's a locksmith up the street. Bring it, Spider! 
All of you guys are for one armor car. Wait, you said Seems L1 like is parry? What if instead of stealing you, I don't know, tried to help rescue people? Perfect dodge, turns red, dodge automatically, shoot a web. Uh-oh, I hear a car. I hear them Kia boys are here. Miho, are you okay? Yeah, Ma. You okay? See, I'm downtown helping Gloria at Feast. Oh, have you met with Mr. Sumita? Uh, no. Spider-Man isn't going to get you into coffee. I'll make it, Ma. I promise. Gotta run. Oh my god, that's sick. They come in there. Oh shit, this guy put a lot of effort in the gym. Big boy. Parry just before melee impact the stagger an enemy, and early parry will be less effective. That's Perry, right? I could be a physics class right now. Memorizing abstract equations for Oh my god, he just ate weight. it on his fucking face. I think I like this kind of physics better. Oh shit, he just shot his own guy. Shoot the spider. That's bad advice. Why try when you've already lost? Bitch. Dude, the fucking the the electric beams is crazy. Okay, the app's finally updated. Check it out. All the goons are peeled. Yes, every single one. Ooh, They're shredded, nice dog. New requests just came in. Genki, nice work on the app. This will help a lot of people. Thanks. Miles, let's hit these last requests and get back to school. If Craven asked you to be in his muscle gang, would you join? Fuck yeah. What a question. What a silly question that is. Yes. Spider-Man! Save us! Half of the problems can be solved by a crystal. I'll check it out. By using water. By pulling, pulling. Uh. The city is a nightmare. Yeah. What the hell? It's because the police are defunded. Whoop you! You still here, Marco? Miles, it's MJ. Just checking in. I think I'm finding Sandman again. Did he escape already? No, I'm at the raft. He's right in front of me. But I have a hunch. Sit tight. Let me talk to his doctors. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? Oh, they're beating my ass, dude. Okay, now you pissed me off. Okay, I talked to the doctor. Is there a sand crystal thingy near you? Yes! Okay, the doctors say Marco's mind is broken. Literally shattered in pieces. Freaky! So why are these sand dudes attacking me? Probably bits of his subconscious trying to protect whatever's in that crystal. But listen, if you can find all the pieces, they say you might be able to make him whole again. Being a sand person sounds complicated. Okay, Marco. 
What was your subconscious protecting? One minute I was with you, and the next, you were gone. A talking crystal? Okay. Seems like it holds a part of Marco's memory. MJ said that there were more if you were miles to you go to Palestine and help out, Guys I'd end the conflict. Out. Hey, you want to grab that last request? Looks like some VIP stuck in a limo. On it. Fuck do I care about VIPs, bro? What the hell? I'm Spider-Man. That's crazy. Yankee, is Mr. Sumita still there? Yeah, he's with Haley right now. She's trying to stall him for you. Nice. Hopefully he's going to tell me how to write my college essay. You're not done with that yet? You know, since I already got into ESU, I could help you. Nah, you do too much already. Plus, if you help me get into college, you never shut up about it. Yeah, that's true. Oh my god. Go 3D print some bitches, Genki. <laughs> hey, stay away from that limo. It's the spider. Get him. Oh, he's they're so mad. Paparazzi's bad enough. But paparazzi with guns? Got a gift for you, Spidey. Spider-Man's spell of the worst. You know that? Why can't we all just let people be people? Yeah, good, good take. Let's check on that person in the limo. Hello? going on it's J. Jonah Jameson hospital J. Jonah Jameson I gotta tell spider-man all right mr. Jameson let's get you to the hospital spider-man you gotta come see who the VIP is. Yo, check this shit out. I shudder in anticipation. Sealing a hydrant, then I'm on my way. Medical aid. Mr. Jameson. And supporting a Spider Man. Damage you with me? And stores. What's up? Look at this. See that? Look at this. Look at his lifeless ass body. Hello, news media. You wanna see the real face of Spider Man? This is what we do. You understand? It don't matter. It don't matter if it's Jay Jonah or Dick Cheney. Actually, fuck that. I would probably leave Dick Cheney in the limo. Just saying. Hey, Spider-Man. Look who it is. What? Uh, where am I? Spider-Man! Jonah, my sunshine. You okay? Uh, help! I've been abducted! What? No! I, I, I'm helping you, man! Someone get a photo with us! Mass criminals kidnap beloved newsman! Some things never change. Just be nice to the doctors. I've been abducted! <laughs> I love his... His dumbass body flinging around. It's so funny. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. All right, take me back. Just kidding. No, oh, they kidnapped me. I did not consent. I, I, oh. uh, menaces. I'm surrounded by menaces. But J. Jonah Jameson is not going anywhere. You hear me? I'm not going anywhere. Wait, where am I going? Where am I going? 
It's kind of fucked up because that's a big ass bill <laughs> that we just dropped Mr. on Parker, Jay Jonah. Where are you? Uh, Principal Evans. Hi. Yes, this is me, Peter Parker. I, I'm sorry. There was an emergency, and I, I'll, I'll be there soon. I promise. I better see you in ten seconds. Or oh no. Um, are, you're uh, breaking up. I will soon. I can't believe I just did that. Where's Mr. Sumita? Oh, he just left. Something about going on vacation? What? That's this game is woke! Really. Also, while you were gone, I found out that I got the Rand Scholarship. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Bro, that's like a full ride. Well, there's Big deaf people in this game. It's fucking woke. I'm really missing out. <laughs> oh, man. I can't watch this. But I also can't look away. Hmm. Principal Evans. Yeah. Guess who decided to show up today? I, I know this looks terrible. Looks? And I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's more than looks. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. This and is this is the last ridiculous. thing that I wanted to happen. And it'll never happen Fucking again. Fucking D-E-R no, initiatives. Your job is to protect these students, not to abandon them. I mean, it's true. You're you fired. did fuck up. They fired him because he's white, dude. This is a woke school. They said no more white men. <laughs> Being Spider-Man must be so hard keeping a job. Uh, but I'm sure that you're going to figure it out. They're like, you're fired and you will now be replaced by a black woman. Ha <laughs> ha! That's what we do at Woke University. Yeah, I can't wait to do white genocide later. That's what she said. <laughs> Jesus, man, be normal. I love the, um, I love the, I love the one random chatter who comes in here and he's just like, I just want to watch a video game be played, man. Like, what's up with these, what's up with these fucking political jokes, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. Just play the fucking Spooderman game. <laughs> you weren't the worst teacher we've ever had, if that helps. Think I can put that on my resume? Well, listen. There's an open photo claw at the New York Bulletin. I just sent a shot in yesterday. It's not much money, but... It's I just don't understand why Spooderman is trying to get a fucking job and trying to like go to college like i get it it's supposed to be like oh yeah he's just like you you know what i mean he's like a kid but also like if i'm spooder man i do not give a fuck about going to college i'm swinging i'm slinging dick and i'm slinging fucking ropes okay i'm slinging ropes all around town i do not give a fuck i'm just beating the shit out of bad guys first of all the city is constantly in a state of bedlam okay it's not like like, like, who, who, what are you worried about? You know what I mean? What the fuck are you worried about? The city is already always busted. Money? That's Robbie Robertson's paper. We used to work together at the Bugle. I think I know just what he'd like. Thanks, Miles. No problem. I might send him a few more shots, too, if I have time. Robbie always said, don't show me the city, show me New York. This fucking new gliding shit is crazy, honestly. User, everyone's gal pal reporting an armed confrontation. Hold square and move analog while swinging.
Ain't that something? <laughs> there. Now to submit and... Peter! How you doing, son? Robbie, hi! I know this is out of the blue, but I wanted to let you know I just sent in a photo for your open call. Wonderful. We can definitely run this. I gotta duck into a meeting, but if you find the beating heart of New York anywhere else, send him my way. The beating it's heart of New York. You too, Robbie. <laughs> Thanks. What is that blue shit? Is there a little Odessa in New York? Or is that new? Like... I feel like, is that like a, like a post Ukraine thing? Yes. Oh, it's in Brooklyn. I've never heard that. They call it Ukrainian village now. Dude, dude, listen, <laughs> listen, if that was Richie Torres, he'd be like, uh, listen, Peter, uh, it's cool. This photo is cool and all, but it doesn't seem like you've condemned Hamas sufficiently <laughs> while taking this photo. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to submit this until I fully know that you hate the DSA. Okay. That's what I care about. Scroll over district, track your progress. Oh. Peter, you better be condemning Hamas sufficiently, dog. Fuck you doing over here? Oh, what the fuck? Wait, what? That couple's being attacked. Better hurry. Wait, on top of that, how can I see it? Being attacked by what, a helicopter? Who's in the neighborhood? Yo, I was just gonna say the same about you. Wait, what the fuck? Bro, why are they beating this couple's... Wait, where's the couple? It's just one guy. We should take this on the road sometime. Sounds like a good excuse to finally build that spider mobile. You took down like 15 of them. The guys aren't gonna believe this. Say, can I get a selfie? Bro, how did you get up here? Why were they beating your ass on this rooftop? What? I, I feel like I want to take him off the... Hey, my man. What the fuck did he do? How did you guys get up here to beat his ass? What's going on? Here, let me take it off. Let me take this. Dude, I what is what? Is, look at this guy. This guy's striking up a po He's dead. I killed this man. If 15 guys brought your bitch ass to a rooftop to beat it, then you probably did something wrong. And we didn't even ask that question, you know what I mean? Like, we don't even know what he fucking did. My suit is sandy in all the wrong places. Might be time for a change. Wait, isn't this like, like, what is this? The Ukrainian vegetable festival? What the fuck? This is the shittiest fucking Perfect. photo. My grandma always talked about going here. She'd walk across the bridge every Sunday to get the freshest vegetables in the city. But one time, she was late and the guy in front of her bought all the tomatoes. And that's how she met my grandpa.
Oh. This up there. She stole her tomatoes, then she sucked and fucked them? Yeah. Don't ask questions, dude. You guys don't understand the meaning of love, okay? Hey, what's happening over here? Hello. Damn, she's unfazed, dude. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of, you know what I'm saying? Just unfazed. Hello. What's happening? Style. Suits with styles have three alternative styles in addition to the original. I think I unlocked a bunch because I bought them. What the? <coughs> That's crazy. All right, Peter Pooper. What else you got? The Scarlet Three suit, the Advanced suit, the Arachnite suit. Okay, this is like you want to be fucking. That's when you want to be Cardi. You know what I mean? This is when you want to be Batman, but you're actually Spooderman. <gasps> the Orontia suit, the Apocalypt. Uh, <laughs> ew. 25th century suit. That's kind of busted. Stone monkey suit. Tactical suit and the 25th century suit. God, I'm such a slut for cosmetics. It's so stupid. What the fuck? I feel like that's just like giving me whiplash. Like the colors on it. You know what I mean? Scroll down to see the Miles Unlocked suits. Oh shit. That's pretty fire. Biomechanical suit. Okay, the Miles suits are better. Red Spectre. Oh, that sucks. Aggie Mat suit. That's like looking like Blue Beetle. Tokusatsu. Tokusatsu. They really made the Miles suits better. Straight up. I'll say it. I'm not afraid to say it. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna go with that. Hey, MJ. Hey, I'm headed to your place to drop something off. Is the back door unlocked? I don't know. Left in a hurry this morning. I'll just meet you there. Okay, cool. You and Miles get back to school, okay? Yep. Yep. What are these Quite a air first turns? day for you. Hopefully tomorrow will be quieter. I am sure it will be. See you oh, in a bit. shit. What the fuck? Ugh, it's worse than getting fired. Telling your girlfriend that you got fired. Why are you flying? Because it's sick? What do you mean? Traffic was awful. 
Tan man really made him. Bro, how the fuck does this dookie boy over here who can't even hold a fucking job able to get a fucking goddamn entire ass house? I get it. It's like Queens real estate, but it's still fucking unimaginable. It's unacceptable, dude. Is him? What the fuck? Yes. Seems like you're getting the hang of that thing. <laughs> well, it is convenient in the city, but how's he paying the property tax? Like person, you convinced me. Damn, dude. MJ knows. <laughs> MJ locked it down, okay? She was like, this is the only broke boy in a fucking 50-mile radius with a dead aunt who had real estate that he inherited. Okay? I am locking his no-job-having ass down, son. I got fired. <laughs> you were so excited about this job. I know. I had the whole semester planned out. Next week, we were going to make a potato-powered helicopter. I'm so sorry. I might be joining you in the unemployment line. Jonah already cleaning house? Sort of. He's instituting a radical meritocracy. Yikes, what does that even mean? It means oh that whoever doesn't write a front-page story in the next week is fired. Oh my god. Capitalism. Oh, well, this game is so woke. You're the best reporter they have. What you got in there? Spider-Man 3, Peter Unsold travels to the West Bank books. to get a house for free? Come on, dude. Running out of storage at my place. <laughs> she got great up. reviews. Peter would never do I settler <laughs> colonial violence. Nobody wanted to read about Simcaria. The Bugle is the biggest outlet in the city. I can make a difference there. But if I get fired, I don't know what I'll do. Do you even need the Bugle to do what you want to do? I tried making an impact from the outside and 14 copies. Peter is big time anti-Zionist. I need to change things from the inside. 100%. I know it in my heart. He's like, he's a big time anti-Zionist. I haven't had time to clean. <laughs> Back room? Yeah. Like she gives a fuck is a whole ass house in New I'm York, just Peter. just gonna tidy up a bit. Peter said free Philistine. Palestine. Oh my god, we have fucking Oh no. Oh no. God damn. Four grand on that mortgage though? You are so cooked, my boy. May mortgage the house to keep beast afloat. And now I'm sinking. Oh man, I've been wanting to play this. Just need to find the time. Speed Nonagon. Bro, th this is actually unironically current daying us, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I know people go, stop current daying us with pronouns and whatever, but like that actually does break the immersion a little bit when you just are reminded of the grim reality. I don't know. To be honest, I'd like to take some time off, but I can't really afford to. What about selling the house? I can't. I mean, I could, but I can't. If you need time, I can cover the mortgage. No, no, I can't let you do that. Plus, you said Jonah might clean house. I won't let him fire me. I know how much this house means to you. We'll figure it out. Bro, that's crazy. I deserve you. Yeah, you don't sell a hey, fucking so house. Like, what? Have you thought any more about moving in? We talked about this. I need to be in the city, close to where the action is. But think of all the romantic dinners we could have here. When was the last time you were home for dinner? I hate to break it to you, but Spider-Man routinely seems of a superhero named Sabra, who is an Israeli Zionist hero. I've heard of this character... And, you know, I, I just, I, I removed it from my headcanon. So, 
maybe maybe they set aside their differences and then Peter actually gets Sabra to to assume the one state solution. You know what I mean? Like you don't know that. You don't know where that story is going to go. The idea of shoots at Sabra. Wait, what? Fair point. Hey, what's this? Is all this maze stuff? Yeah, I need to donate it, but not just yet. What are you looking at? Some pretty cute old photos of you. The idea of shot at Sabra, what? What did they think she was press? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was in my bedroom. Why did she take a picture of that? Balance. What does that mean? Wonder if this is still there. They thought she was a baby. Take a look. Let me know what you find. I'm gonna keep looking at these photos you've never shown me. Ugh, adorable. Don't worry, me. I'll keep your wheat cake recipe alive and well. Sabra is literally a Mossad operative. Is she bad or is she good? People are giving me conflicting reports saying that she's actually a villain. Oh my god, cop and Mossad? Pick a fucking struggle, dog. Ruth was the first superhuman agent to serve the Mossad Israeli Secret Service. She became a police officer in addition to serving as a government agent. Jesus Christ, dude. This place could use some candles. What was she doing? She People was picking put candles in bathrooms, right? Picking Palestinian babies, dude. That was her job. That's Israel from Hamas. Oh my god. Still smells like May. No, the hiss is not your tinnitus. Oh man. It's you like a rogue wave sometimes. Uncle Ben definitely said Free Palestine. For the record. Where was that hole again? He would tell Bibi Netanyahu with great power comes great responsibility. And you have the responsibility not to maintain an apartheid. That's what he would say. Oh, May. The size of those glasses. Uncle Ben, looking good. <laughs> <laughs> a thing that just says math thick <laughs> Spider-Man is he a threat or a menace our phone lines are open menace definitely a big bad menace let me tell you something about this <laughs> so superhero he's neither super nor a hero so what that's a very that? Kyle moment from him was that? What was uh, what? Peter. Oh, that's a I, real uh, that's a real Kyle moment. I, th from I him. thought I I heard a, a rat in the wall. Hey, what's what's wrong? It's nothing. I was just Can we all agree that like the sexiest Aunt May is the is the last one? That like Tony Stark is trying to fuck what's her face? I think that is, like, probably the best Aunt May. Marissa Tomei Aunt May? God damn, dude. A wooga. I mean, don't worry. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'll clap her cheeks, too. Okay? When I was your age, I was head of the debate club. Captain she of the soccer team and second violin in orchestra. Every year... I wanted a new feather in my cap. 
But when There's I tried to perp. add honor roll student on top, I fell apart. Instead of being good at a few things, I wasn't good at anything. So, I scaled back. Balance is a process, not a destination. I'm still working on that. Now oh, come on. Come on. How is Peter so smart and still broke? Because it's not a meritocracy, brother. Meritocracy is a lie. Damn, they're so good. Maybe May had a point. I can't take too much on. Something's got to give. I should go check on MJ. If I put a hole in a wall, I'd probably get my ass beat by my mom. What is this shit? He's white, chatter. White American kids call their mothers by their first name and shit. got a tip. Ref's moving a couple of inmates to Ravencroft tomorrow for evaluation. They say who? No, but I'm gonna find out. <laughs> MJ! The fuck? <laughs> Whoa. Doctors haven't cleared me for MJ hugs yet. Sorry. <laughs> Harry. I missed you. Yo, chill, dude. You hey, too. hey, back the fuck up, Harry. What about May? I'm so sorry. Fucking so chill out, dude. By the way, Europe. By the way, every single white dude looks the same in this game. I'll say it. Sorry about all that. I was being treated in isolation here in the city, and I, I didn't want you guys to worry about me. Is it the same thing your mom had? It was. Says the guy who calls his mom Anne. You know Anne is mom in Turkish, remission. right? Harry, this is... That's not her name. I can't believe it. You look great. I feel great. Oh, you have to Don't get to work. Chatter. Dinner tomorrow. Coney Island? <laughs> World time's sake? It's a date. <laughs> oh, whoa! Fuck you mean it's a date? <laughs> Yo, MJ, chill. Dude, I would That's I would scary. kneecap him right now. That's yeah, a little skill she picked up when we were in Sakaria. Sorry for coming by unannounced and all. What? No, are you kidding? You want to come inside? Actually, I was hoping you might have time to go for a ride with me. Sure. Damn, he's a GTI I'm driver, dude. The frugal flyer is still on the road. Fucking unacceptable. I was thinking we might roll like we used to. Ooh. Is that my old bike? Nah, I, I found it on the internet. It's a close match though, right? Wow. Yeah. It's even got the same stickers and everything. You sure this isn't my bike? You ready? Yeah. Where are we going? You'll see. Okay, this is kind of lame. I'm gonna keep going. up. The fuck is going on? You sure you're up for this? Oh yeah, I'm feeling good. I was using the cane just for insurance, but I don't even need it. I think you have more energy than I do. So, tell me everything. What's been keeping you busy? Just substitute teaching in between getting fired. I've also been tutoring a high school kid. He's special. Reminds me a little of me, actually. <laughs> Lucky kid. I never would have passed honors calc without your help. Hey, I read about your old boss, Dr. Octavius. That must have been crazy. That's one way to put it, yeah. I wish you'd been around. Harry, why didn't you tell me you were sick? I'd have been there in a shot. You wouldn't have liked what you'd seen. The treatment was horrible. I was floating in a tank with a healing agent. It gave me awful nightmares. A tank? Wow. Experimental stuff. That's intense. I'm really sorry, Harry. Wait, we're at Midtown High. Is that actually where we're going? Can neither confirm nor deny. Uh, 
<laughs> this is gayer than most gay sex. <laughs> It's true. What is happening in this sequence right now? We went on a fucking bike ride. What, is, what the fuck's going on, dude? I just beat God of War Colossus style ass Sandman. Only to fucking get on a bike. And bike through the most walkable part of fucking New York. Exactly the same as it did ten years ago. Oh, thanks. Uh, listening to reunion penis music. Come on. <laughs> Why'd you bring us here? We both hated high school. Remember that time Flash and his buddies cornered me and broke my laptop? We lost that presentation. For the Young Entrepreneurs Competition, we worked for months on that thing. And the state meet was the next morning. I had a backup on a USB. But it was Yo, in check locker. yourself. This is a he healthy male relationship. Begging to let us in. But they said no. It was after hours. We were so desperate. We walked around the entire school, <laughs> trying every door. <laughs> Until how are they not locking the bikes up? We got to this one. Wait, what? Are you... I remember we had to jimmy it. You and Austin should ride bikes like this. I'd rather have gay sex with Austin than ride bikes like him, uh, like that with him. Okay. I feel like that would be a, a significantly more straight action. The coast is clear. Come on. You sure the drive is upstairs in your locker? I'm pretty sure. What? You said you were sure. I was. I mean, I am. I mean, why are you asking now? I don't know. I'm nervous. Don't worry, it's there. What's he doing here on Friday night? Listening to the game? RBI. Show us that rookie of the month stuff, kid. You're gonna be on this team forever. Let's make a run for it. No, wait. He'll see us. This guy is the real deal, folks. We're gonna see him around for a lot of years. Who the fuck sneaks into school after hours, dude? Nah, I'm trying to stay out of school during school hours, let alone. Hey <laughs> that was a nice Ash, get ready to be tackled. Yeah. A one time error? No, we need to win. It's not Nice. Come on. This is what criminals do. This guy didn't even Am I a hear it. Now? Hey. I forgot to tell you I showed our presentation to my mom. She thought it was really great. She had one critique, though. The name. She said we should rename it Heal the World. Holy cow, that's perfect. Right? Once we get to the top of the stairs, your locker's right there, right? Get down. Did he see us? I don't think so. Split up. We're meeting back at the gym. Hey, who's that? We're in trouble. We're in trouble, Mayday. He just splooged all over the door. Where are you, you little punk? Someone in here playing tricks, huh? Those those roof tiles would never hold his weight. Wait, I think I have extra white fluid stuff in the photo lab. This is all still kind of new. I gotta get better at fluid management. Jim, Jim to locker. Easy. Path is clear. Time to move. What was that? Crap! Hey! 
Hey! Oh, I really wish I had backed this project up online. It was definitely a kid. No such thing as the ghost of Midtown. Eating vents. A spider's best friend. There's okay. no such thing Where as the ghost of my Midtown. Web fluid stuff? I'll admit to a little bit of hero worship here. Fluid management, semen retention, true. Ran into MJ right after this. Couldn't decide between hey or hi, so I said hey. -yay. Ugh. Harry and I climbed up a rusty hundred-year-old fire escape to get this shot. Totally worth it. I know I put these under here somewhere. Ah, gotcha. Oh, Bro, for a fucking minimum wage security guy, this guy is really getting his money's worth. It's kind of crazy how much work he's putting in. I've never... If I was a security guard at a fucking school this late, I would never in a million years investigate anything. Okay? I would be like, ah, whatever. Who gives a shit? Fuck it. Hello, friend. They do it for the hate of the kids. I really should figure out how to increase the capacity of these things so I don't run out. Now to meet Harry at the gym. Oh, the gym is on the other side of that fan. Gotta get past it. Old backpack. Forgot I put that here. Gotta start keeping track of these things. He's hoarding his modicum of power. No, he just cares about his job. I man. can't get away from this guy. I gotta distract him so I can get out of here. Uh, what's that? This is me making a break for it. PTSD. <laughs> What do you mean, dog? I'm not even here. Shut up. I bet Harry's already at the gym. Gotta hurry. Why does he think I'm here? Why does he know that there's a fucking kid here? You know what I mean? to ruin these man's minds permanently back. yeah that was crazy well, this place looks the same just fucking no developed schizophrenia which gives us a minute for some hoops are you sure you're up for this i love Question hooping is, in my chelsea you? boots <gasps> let's see it big talker this guy went from rusty, having a big. busted knee to balling faster than fucking your are rage you? gaming dude Oh, I love gimmicky ass shit like this. Good one. I am so happy you're feeling better. Seriously. Thanks. Hey, I didn't get a chance to see what you did with May's house. Nothing yet. I've been busy and I don't know. It feels weird to change it. I get it. That must have been really tough, Pete. No rush. This music is so okay. fucking lame. <laughs> Well, when MJ moves in, maybe she'll help with the house. I don't know. You don't think she'll help? I don't know if she'll move in. Uh, uh, oh. uh, nah, 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 nah. Huh. Well, 
Well, I mean, it seemed like you guys were doing good. She was at your house? We'll figure it out. You always do, eventually. Nice one. Well, what's the score? I have no idea. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me here. What score? I needed this. They're just shooting. Me too. Dude, what is it? Dude, this is like a very nitpicky thing, but I get so annoyed when they do this in movies when when they like don't know how to play basketball. If an actor doesn't know how to play basketball appropriately, I get so mad. And they used to do this in like the 90s so much. If you ever watch a 90s movie where like people are playing basketball, not as like the major point of the movie but like in a as a side thing right and they're just so ass at it i'm like why would you do that like why would you even incorporate that into the fucking thing and it, it was like such a pet peeve of mine and it's and it's kind of similar here as well where they're like oh what's the score bitch what do you mean we're not balling like we're just fucking shooting around there ha doesn't need to be a score here okay there is no score no one is keeping score but we're not done yet. <laughs> I know that look. What are you up to? Still think you can find your old locker? Hates Airbug. Uh, Airbug can't. Dog can't even ball. Where do you think that security guard is? Probably still in the East Wing. Then let's get that thumb drive out of your locker and get out of here. This is the nerdiest I shit. Pay for breaking your laptop. There's nothing fucking nerdier than two goddamn nerds breaking into school to do more homework. I'm losing my mind. You can't just let him get away with it. He's captain of the football team, and I'm a backup singer in Glee Club. He's got to get away with it. Our best revenge is to win that competition tomorrow. Oh, finally. Quick, get under there. God, yeah. get him back in that elevator. He'll never see. I checked this floor three times already. This is a damn goose chase. How do I pop that? in there what's going on bro's acting like he's protecting the fucking constitution or something he's dude got lucky with that one. Oh, jesus yeah. christ quick get the drive let's go <laughs> night at the museum ass motherfucker dude what holy shit how did you go on take it Oh crap. Who's that? Nice touch. Is uh, this guy part of all this too? Nope. <laughs> Run. Hey! Dude, we're gonna get arrested! Not if he doesn't catch us. <laughs> That's insane. <sighs> this is not the kind of nostalgia I like. Bro, you are literally Spider-Man. You still got that thumb drive? Yeah. I just gotta make it to those doors. Almost there. Open up, it's the police. I told the cops, you're in trouble now! No! But hold them off for just a minute. I got an idea. What should I do? Don't get caught. Wait, I keep forgetting. Okay, this guy's the most attentive security guard on the planet. Hey, you the one who called us? Yeah, they're in here somewhere. All right, you two spread out well. We get this guy's statement. Now to get the guard alone so I can get the thumb drive back. They're in here somewhere. The guys are looking. We need your statement. Tell me what you saw. 
Well, uh, right field Rick. Five fucking I mean, cops. This is before they defunded the police chat. Uh, you know, he can be a little funny about this stuff. Funny. Like haha -ha, or uh... Well, he jumps to conclusions. He has some crazy idea the school has a ghost. But it's not a ghost. It's just some fool kids. Kids? More than one? Well, I don't know for sure, but I PTSD it. time. What have you actually seen? Check it out. <laughs> Sometimes these things pop for no reason. They're gonna fucking. Whoa! Nice. Now I just have to distract this last guy. Don't move. I'll be right back. He's alone. Now for something I like to call the upside down pickpocket. How? These kids playing tricks. I got time for this nonsense. <laughs> nice. Waiting up for that should put me right some above him. Popcorn, that tea I like. But no, I gotta chase some hormonal trouble me. He's around in circles. Got it. Huh? What was that? Uh, now how am I supposed to get out of here? That's so dumb. That's so that's as dumb as having a top of the hour ad break right here in this moment. You know what I mean? What? It's not the cops. <laughs> I was about to say, there's no it's fucking way they brought a helicopter. God damn, son. Dad, I told you I'd call you when I got home. It's your mother. What happened? Uh, Peter, would you excuse us for a moment? Yeah, notice how the cops immediately stopped dead in their tracks in the presence of a rich person. They just did not. They're done. They're done with their... They've ceased their investigations because a guy just rolled up with a fucking helicopter. Harry, what is this? You know, I still think we would have won state if we'd presented. <laughs> Lots happened in the last 10 years. It's a miracle I'm even sitting here now. I got a second chance. I'm going to take advantage of that. But I need you with me, Pete. Wow, this is uh, a lot to process. Why don't you come by the lab tomorrow? Check it out. You have a lab already? I'll show you some of my ideas. Nepotism higher. about it some more. Classic. Deal? Sure. We're gonna heal the world. for tomorrow and do not fail again I aim 
Eyes, mouths, oh, dude, you are so cooked. That's the shittiest essay intro. I'm bored already. Hey, Miles, you busy? I need whatever it is. I'm down. Need some help with a babysitting mission at the rack. Sounds fun. Fill me in on the way. <sighs> Don't give me that look, Pops. I'm only taking a break. Hola, mijo. How's the essay going? It's it's going. I'm gonna head out though. Pete, call for some backup. We're just. It's better if I don't know the details. I'll be fine, ma. Espera un momento. Um, you know how there have been a few nights recently where you've been working late, and so I also worked late. Well, I wasn't working. Don't give me that look. I'm not in any trouble. It's just, um, I've been going on some dates. Dating, actually. Oh, right. And there's this one guy. I've seen him a few times, and it's, well, it's going well. Ma, what are you asking me? Dude, I look so good. I'd like to have him over. For Bratelon. I'm sure there's some spider stuff I can be doing. I can give you some privacy? No, I'd like him to meet you. And I'd like you to meet him. Yeah, I'm going on the date chat. It's also kind of funny that I'm just like in that insane suit while talking to talking to mom here. But if you're not comfortable, I totally understand. Ma. Look, you had me a pate long. <laughs> She's dating me, chat. I see you. Okay. I'm Maybe. fucking your mom, chat. And Miles Morales' mom. Better head to the raft. Maybe these wind tunnels can give me a boost. There's another one! I should catch that updraft! This is sick. Whoa! I'm getting the hang of this! Dude, flying is pretty cool. It, like, it's a, it's a pretty cool way to... Like, it was already sick to sling around everywhere. But, like, they, they basically made it even more fun. Another updraft! I should check the view! A windy day. Hey Miles, I'm just getting to the raft. You on your way? Would have missed it. Who are babysitting? MJ got a tip yesterday that Scorpion's being moved to Ravencroft. Not enough resources for him since Sandman became his roommate. Scorpion can definitely throw a tantrum. I'll be there. Hey, it's another one of Marco's memory crystals. Should take care of that. Something tells me that's not a legit business transaction. What happens if I fall in the water? Can I fall in the water? Like I'm just in time. Keep it moving, Gargan. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that little ass gun, dude? 
Ready for the next one. Next one? Thought we were just babysitting Scorpion today. Wait, who the fuck is this? Martin Lee. What is that? Like, he's just... Mr. Negative? What is I don't know what that is. They're like, here, this is Scorpion, and then a Chinese man. <laughs> what the fuck? Miles. Oh, he killed Miles' dad? Wait, did I? Did I not play the fucking last game or something? What, like, did, didn't I play this game? Didn't I play the first game, chat? I don't remember it. You did? You're just dumb? Yeah, I, I am dumb. It's fine. I'll be okay. A little early for fireworks. We gotta go. Make sure the prisoners are secure! I'll take left. Protect the ship! Form up on me! Yo! I mean, there's no reason to blast a jetpack like that. I mean, a, a jet ski like that. Oh, fuck. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Whoa, those blades are sharp. You must be new in town. Hi, I'm Spider-Man. In case you didn't know, these guys are bad news. Definitely want to keep him in prison. Get out of our way. This does not concern you. All right. Guess we can skip the welcome wagon. Oh. Uh. Keep pressing. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I'm dead. I just died, but that's a good place to end it for today. Your head will make. All right, that's ten hours that I've been going. Ended on a cliffhanger. Um, we'll continue this tomorrow. That was that was sick. That was pretty sweet, Chad. Right little half day action for all of you and the metal gear collection is coming out as well you know hold on um i realized i did not respond to gabor mate who reached out to me five days ago because i was not home so I have to figure that out. A little annoyed with that. But in any case, love you all, and I will see you tomorrow, okay? Peace, everybody. Bye-bye. All the shadows trickling in Her so people hate Sunny Los Angeles, California, says her song.
The star lock to the star lock to the top it just begun Sweet. 